Okay, I think maybe that works. Maybe that'll do it. Hey, I can hear myself on my phone. Where we go? Hello, everybody. I'm gonna wait till uh, nine to actually get started, but I want to get on and do sound checks. I um, just came back from a little trip and had taken my computer with me because I am addicted to all things PC. Uh, just worked it back up, and I was worried I screwed something up. Uh, let's see here. Long save times. Yeah, the long save time is a mystery. Um, I started doing some deep research on it because I can now trigger it on my save reliably and um it's, it's i've learned a lot of interesting things but there's like just some mysteries of the engine that i don't know yet so i've got some feelers out to some people who do more advanced stuff so mark df the guy who created the resaver program for fall room tools i've reached out to some of the guys who do uh f4se i'm um, hoping that uh, somebody has some more information that can help me along i do have a new theory about the long save um, that would tie into when the issue started occurring and who it's occurring for because it seems to be it's not actually chapter 2 it's the 2.0 patch of S SS2 that started the issue um, and there is something new and it also seems to have nothing to do with settlements because I was able to get it to trigger in a save yesterday or the day before with zero plots built. I just had SS2 installed and I was just screwing around for some uh, for some bug fixing and found a way to trigger it without any plots built. So I don't think it has anything to do with settlements at all. I think it has to do with something in the ESM file. And there is one oddity in the ESM file I found that we only added after chapter two that I can change. It's just, um, so uh, Fallout 4 has trouble with string lengths. So, that, so if you guys who are coders know what that means, but basically like, if there's um, the name of some object and you make the name too long, you can crash the CK. And the game also struggles with really long strings of characters. And we have some script names that are like 150 characters long for some reason. It was just, we were trying to be organized and I think we may have triggered some issues. So I'm gonna try renaming all those scripts that are long and see if that fixes it. But renaming scripts is actually a real pain in the butt. Uh, it takes a long time, so I haven't tried it yet, but that is a current theory I have that might be something dumb like that, where it's nothing to do with our with anything we've actually done that has to do with gameplay, no script lag, nothing to do with plots. It might be something so simple as that. That's my hope. But I also had another theory about actor values I tried that I put out on the forums. That didn't pan out, so it's hard to say. We're just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall right now, but the, the long save thing is so mysterious because we have little to no control. Like, it's not anything mod authors ever think about there's no like even if you go read through all of the posts bethesda's done about creation kit work and everything there's nothing about having to think about save files for even a second this is like some this is totally new territory for us so if uh if this if there was even an inkling that this was going to be an, an issue would not have released with it but testers had come across it apparently at some point during alpha and then they never thought about it again um, and I had never ever seen it, so it was it's a weird it's a weird bug to have floating out there. But it's definitely on uh, on my mind every day because there are I, I haven't I can't post anything without somebody commenting on that, whether it be on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook or the forums or our Discord. Everybody is talking about this long save, so I'm I'm very very aware of it. It's not gonna we're not gonna stop till it's fixed. But there are it's just we don't know enough, so it's hard to make any moves right now. Um, so I think you guys would rather have me spending some of my time actually fixing bugs I know how to fix because I can get you guys at least advancing through your quests and everything. <clears throat> but uh, I did figure out in the latest patch why the um, if I had a hammer quest was stuck and it got stuck for me and that was because we had done a patch some time ago, I don't remember what patch it was introduced, to fix a bug, another bug in that same quest where something was going wrong with Lily, the character that shows up after you complete the first objective. And in that fix, Lily was getting added to the settlement too soon. So she is technically, let me get, I should put control of the game again, here we go. Uh, so technically when we go into workshop mode and it says we have five settlers, one of those is Lily, but because she's not actually available yet, she doesn't count toward the objectives and she can't be assigned to anything because she's not, doesn't exist in the game world yet. So it's like this weird quirk. So technically I only have four people, which is why the objectives won't update. So I'm just gonna force spawn it. I'm gonna cheat. I'll just do that now. We're waiting for nine o'clock to hit. So we'll do, I've got a little cheat built in. NPC, recruitment manager, settlers. I think settlers plural, one. That should do it. There we go, people six. So now I should be able to, it should complete the objective now. And I'm gonna keep it paused so we can walk through that again at nine o'clock. All right, let me read through some of these messages, guys. 
Uh, uh, uh. Any idea limits on how many settlements you can have? Uh, you can have 128 settlements in a game. So there's only 35 across the base game in DLC, but I think there's over 128 settlements available in across different mods. I think somebody has, I think XV has talked about finding enough to hit that. Uh, not, yep, no lots to talk about slow saves. Mm hmm. Okay, yep, just lots of talk. Uh, Brannigan's bounty mission and the guy being held by raiders is glitching. So I tried to do a bunch of fixes for that quest, but I didn't have any saves with it handy. So I just kind of like, just looked for like things that were, could potentially be wrong in the code where it was like, and I just tried to loosen the conditions up. So a lot of times when we first start coding out a quest, we, we do it very linearly and we like hard lock everything to stages. So it'll be like, first you have to do exact, kill exactly these raiders and then, you know, exactly pick up this key. And if you try and do it any out of order, it can break things. So I tried to loosen up some of those restrictions. And um, and I, so I know I fixed probably some bugs for people, but I know there's somebody immediately posted on the hotfix uh, reply on the forums that their issue wasn't fixed. So uh, clearly more work to do on Brannigan's Bounty. I have no idea if it's John Wayne reference. I'd have to ask the uh, the original creator. So the, the Concord characters went through an interesting dev cycle. So um, when we first started planning SS2, which was in... 2017 um right after so ss2 launched in 20 or ss1 launched in 2017 in march and it blew up real fast and so i just i got all excited and i decided just like well let's just start recruiting people to help let's see what we can do with this um and one of the team of people we recruited we recruited like 12 different writers um because i had no idea what i was doing at the time and i just thought well the more the merrier not realizing how stupid that was uh for anybody who knows team management understands why it was really dumb to try and blow up to 100 100 people overnight um, but anyway, so we got all the writers designing characters and the plan was we were going to have what ended up being the SS2 settler recruitment system. That was going to be an expansion, uh, part of the Rise of the Commonwealth expansion. And, uh, it was also going to include Jake's story. His name was something else at the time. I can't remember what his name used to be before it was Jake. Uh, but, uh, we were going to have, um, this like a story tutorial and all these recruitable settlers and that was going to be its own little expansion. And it kind of blew up out of out of control. But during that early part when I recruited all those writers, their first project was dream up 10 settlers each. So we had like this, and I think 10 of the writers pulled it off. So we had a catalog of 100 different characters with backstories laid out, um, names, all this stuff to pull from. And then we were going to basically approve the characters we loved and have those developed into a quest line and everything. Um, and you, we pulled it off about half of them. So there's about, there's around 50 recruitable settlers now. Um, and then, so there were a lot left over that were cool concepts that didn't make it into the settler program. So we plucked from those to make the Concord cast of characters. So interesting little, little tidbit of the development cycle. Uh, the crazy thing is how long SS2 has actually been in development because it started out as just an expansion and uh, my naive butt thought we could pull it off in a few months and, and year, here we are years, years later, uh, finally playing SS2. All right, we're about to hit nine o'clock and then I'll uh, do a, a uh, proper introduction and uh, kick off this playthrough for the day. Thank you for those who came on early to uh, let me know my sound was working and everything. <clears throat> yeah, too many cooks is, is part of the problem. Yeah, you'd be surprised uh, how much of modding um, is there's not a lot of technical knowledge involved with it like there's just like writing and and the art I, I the vast majority of our team actually has no idea about the technical aspects of this all right it's nine o'clock and i'm having weird sound problems i have a i think i gotta get a new cable for my headphones um welcome everybody uh this is day two of the live stream where i am playing through ss2 and then eventually chapter two so i'm gonna start out the stream talking about a couple of things um one is I'm really bad at multitasking with like paying attention to chat and actually engaging in the game at the same time and going off on my rambling ways. If you're if you're new to my streams, I am a rambler. I love to just go off on tangents and just let my brain chase rabbits all over the place. Uh, so if that drives you nuts, you might want to wait until uh, later. We're going to try and post edited versions of these live streams where it's mostly just the gameplay. There'll be some of my rambles will be in there just because I'm talking while I'm playing. Uh, but the goal will be to try and get the gameplay cut up. Um, now, my my video editor, Luke, is on vacation right now, so last week's hasn't been done yet, but he'll I'm sure he'll get both of them done after the new year. Uh, same with a lot of, the same reason that a lot of the bugs that you guys have been reporting haven't been fixed is a lot of the team has basically took the rest of December off after we released 
to relax because they almost burn themselves out building chapter two. So um, I am going to take periodic breaks, like maybe in between quests or when we, if I get stuck because of a bug like we did last time, uh, to go through and try and backlog through through all your guys' chat and answer it. And if I happen to see a super chat uh, pop up but in while I'm playing, I will pause and respond to those. Those really help out with development. Um, same with, and if you're looking for other ways to support, obviously we've got uh, Patreon, that's our primary the primary source of funding all this this stuff because we've got uh, servers to pay for and we've started to buy a lot of equipment and, and stuff for the team to enhance things. If you guys have managed to play through Chapter 2, you'll have seen some of the motion cap work we did on behalf of uh, the patrons. Uh, and then we've also got uh, t-shirts available. If you head to... Uh, I don't even know where to send you guys for that. Uh, simsettlements.threadless.com if you guys are interested in any of that. Uh, but obviously Super Chats help out a lot. Appreciate it. But we don't need any of the funding. It's just if you want to help the mod grow. Like nobody's living off this. This isn't making me do my thing. Like I have a full-time job. I'm good. Um, so if you guys want to support the mod and help uh, it get bigger and crazier... That's what that's where any of that funding goes. And some of these streams I'll probably do uh, for charity or something. Uh, but mostly the point of this stream is to talk about the backstory of SS2, let you guys see a full playthrough of it, and hopefully run into some bugs like we did last time. So we ran into two bugs last time. I am in my save right now. The first bug we ran into was a very common one that was reported on the forums that I was struggling to replicate. Finally got it to hit. Um, and I know why I wasn't hitting it in testing now. And that was the bug in if I had a hammer, where the objectives seem to fail to update. And it doesn't seem to matter how many people you have or how many plots you build. It doesn't seem to update correctly, and I have got that happening now. Um, and the reason I found out that was, and it's been patched as of uh, the hotfix that was put out yesterday, and that is uh, there's a character named Lily that was being added to the settlement too soon. So when it said you had five people, you actually only had four. So it couldn't complete the objective until you got another person. So I just cheat commanded before uh, the stream started. Cheat command, or I guess it was when the stream started, but before nine o'clock, I uh, cheat commanded in another settler so that I would have enough to actually complete this objective. Now I've got to find an empty house and make sure we've got one. Let's see, let's count them out. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, another thing to know about if I had a hammer is it force update, updates the objective when you ever exit workshop mode. So uh, that is a way you can try and get it to trigger. Let's see here. And hopefully I actually have the uh, patch installed on this. So I have two, I run with two installs of Fallout 4. I've got one for developing, one for actually playing, and I don't know if I installed the patch on this. But we're gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and build this guy. Some new stuff, because it, maybe it's Lily did get assigned, but she's not being counted toward the totals, because it's still saying this guy's unassigned, even though all these things are assigned. So let's go ahead and build, we got 13 food, okay. Um, let's go ahead and build ourselves another industrial plot here. Congratulations, buddy, you are gonna be a building, uh, actually, did we get organic unlocked last time? I don't remember. Well, let's find out. Plot finishing operation. No, 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 uh, you're, not, you're not new anymore. You're already, hey, there we go. We got an objective update, choose building plan. Okay, yeah, we still only have that. All right, we're just gonna go, we're going hard on building material sheds because I want to have a nice pile of resources built up so that when we eventually get to HQ, I don't have to cheat. <laughs> Which I will, when we eventually get to HQ, I will show you guys how to cheat. And you can, there's even a way to do it on Xbox. Because I've I've seen some posts saying, some, some people are like, you know what, HQ's got way too much going on for me. I just want to finish the story. Tell me, can I skip it? And uh, I'll show you guys how to do that in game. Because that, um, I know it's not going to be for everybody. It's, uh, it's actually, I, I think once... I find a better way to present it, like in graphics and, and whatnot. I think uh, those of you who thought it was too complicated will be like, oh, this is really like stupidly easy. King Gath's tutorial messages are just way too wordy, is what it'll turn out to be. Um, so I'm hoping I can I can come up with better ways to explain it. I've got some ideas, and I've worked briefly with uh, one of our graphic artists on, on how we could do it, but uh, it was, it's been difficult uh, uh, lining up time with him because he's got a lot of stuff going on in real life right now. Um, but we will... Uh, We'll get there eventually. And I also think uh, HQ um, uh, has a long way to go as far as features, too. So it'll be more inspiring for people to uh, to deal with the the overload of information to start once they start to see some playthroughs showing them, like, all the stuff you're going to be able to do in HQ in the long run. Um, all right, so we're going to stick a resident, an interior right here for this dude. I love I love using these outdoor garage ports as, uh, as interior spots. Interior spots. Let's see, where's our walls? I haven't built in ages. 
Uh, let's see, that's actually one thing I miss about the Let's Play series I was doing for a while, is actually just getting to build it. Because, like, I, I started out, you know, before uh, before some settlements existed, I just liked playing in settlement mode all the time. And then realized that it was gonna I was going to get tired of doing it every playthrough, because I like to start play, new playthroughs constantly. Um, so some settlements was born. Uh, there we go. That's what you get for a wall. It's not even touching the ceiling, but that's that's not my problem. That's your problem, buddy. All right, let's exit workshop mode. Let's see if those objectives update. I know they're still in. I, I noticed that even after I was testing this fix, they're still like weirdly inaccurate. See, like now it says residential plots are done, even though another one's going. Agricultural, industrial saying it's not done. All right, and here's our long autosave. So we do have the long autosave in here. Fortunately, I'm on a high speed SSD, so. You know, a long autosave shouldn't be more than 30 seconds for me. So there we go. Um, but I know on so for some of you guys, it's like 20 minutes, which is unacceptable. Definitely looking into it for those of you guys who didn't catch the very beginning of the stream, excuse me, where I talked about the long save issue. We are we are uh, researching that fervently because I know it's it's making some of it. It's unplayable for a lot of you guys. We will get that sorted. I will say, uh, for those of you guys running a long save who want like a short-term semi-solution. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Um, looking for some way to like ease your pain. The best thing you can do is turn off as many auto saves as possible. So save on rest, save on wait, save on travel. Turn all those off. At least you'll have less auto saves triggering up. That's the best I can recommend for now. Uh, but if uh, well, the goal will be to uh, get it so that that just goes away. I'm sure we can because obviously it didn't exist prior to the 2.0 patch of SS2. So it's clearly like it's something fixable. I just don't know what it is yet. Uh, let's see. Shetty 2. Why haven't you been hired bought by Bethesda yet? This is 2. It's like a full DLC nobody knows about. Well, I hope I hope a lot of people know about it. We got quite a few downloads now, which is awesome. Um, uh, I have, we'll just say I have a relationship, with, a positive relationship with Bethesda, but um, I am currently not looking for work. So, um, because the game industry criminally underpays its developers, um, and I'm not, I'm not interested in that right now. Um, though it's, and it's really fun to work on this stuff now. Um, I hope Bethesda hires some of our team. That would be awesome to see. Um, I would like to see some of our, our, especially our younger folk on the team who uh, don't have their career started. Like, they don't know um, that they could go do a boring code monkey job to make more money. But they, uh, but doing this for a living could be quite awesome, regardless of paychecks. And the, the again, the paychecks aren't bad. I just like I got into to corporate software development. So um, anybody who's in that knows that that pays much better than game development. Um, okay, let's uh, figure out what's going on here with that. So I got the, I got some of it to fix. I got the, the objective to update about that. Now, why is a residential not working? Because we need to get past it. And if this won't work, if I can't get this fixed, I'm gonna just make a save here uh, to do re more research on this. Why this isn't working? Because I, I tested this in this save and it worked fine the other day. Um, but if I can't get this working, um, I'll just quest skip so we can keep going because I don't want to get stuck on this that's stupid um, so basically what will happen after this for those of you guys who haven't played through this when this is working um, basically the as soon as you get five of each you know building uh, residential plots and working plots uh, another character will appear named Lily she'll have a little argument with old Paul and they'll ask you to go talk to Jake so yeah I'm gonna just quest skip I don't have patience to wait for this anymore um, and I'm going to let's make a save here and any of you guys who don't know how to quest skip I can show you how that works so we're gonna go save LP day two um, uh, MQ03 that's if I had a hammer still broken fun times um, so I will look into that off stream all right so Let's see. We're going to go ahead and go into the city manager hollow tape, which normally in the playthrough you wouldn't have this yet. Uh, but I did show in the last stream how you can get it. It's sitting inside in, in um, actually maybe, or does Jake hand it to you right away? I don't remember when he hands it to you. Um, but if you didn't have it yet, you can spawn it uh, via MCM, which is what I did. There's also one inside the hardware store, which you can reach easily. So we're going to go to tools. We're going to go to cheats because we're going to be a dirty cheater here. We're going to quest skip. You can do force complete current main quest, but for some reason, I have, sometimes that doesn't work correctly for me, and I've never figured out why because it uses the exact same code as this, but I always like to use skip ahead to specific main quest, and we're going to just skip to the next one. So we're going to close this out, and this will just force Lily to spawn and start us up on the next one. So we're going to pass. We're going to go past if I had ammo, which is the one we're on right now. We're going to go right to casting a line, and this should force the necessary objectives. So there we go. It's completing that. And then Lily should appear in a second here, and then we should get a uh, quest completion notice. There we go, quest completed. If I had a hammer, so that and the reason the reason we started we actually built that in is because when we first launched SS2, there were just you guys were put. We it was way buggier launched in Chapter Two. Chapter Two, 
uh, has been a really smooth launch. I've watched people play on Let's Plays and make it through most of the quest line already, on, you know, like in the first week, which was awesome, whereas Chapter 1 was a little rockier because uh, we had more people working on quests. It wasn't just me, which was really, really nice. And um, so we were able to get more looks. I know there's a lot more quests, so there's a lot more uh, more bugs to, to suss out. And it's some of them, as I mentioned grateful, at the beginning of the stream. Really like it if wow, Lily, your volume seems really loud. Um, nicer homes. All right, so we're going to go. Did we get the next quest to start? Yeah, Kesslein. Go speak with the ASAM stranger. Um, so I know that uh, some of you guys are running into uh, little quirks and stuff that are stuck. And as I mentioned earlier in the stream, it, a lot of it has to do with the order you do stuff in. Like, we, we, we t tend to test very linearly and so we code our a lot of our quests very tightly um and so we've got to loosen up a lot of those restrictions to make it handle all the interesting ways you guys come up with to do our quests and the order of things some of them are really innocuous uh, innocuous like you just things like you you know if you talk to an NPC out in the wrong order it can break the quest and that's just silly stuff that uh we just hadn't assumed people would walk up and talk to certain NPCs and trigger conversations too soon or stuff like that or sometimes even like killing an NPC before looting a key can cause a problem it's it's all stuff that will get sorted over time um and so my apologies for those of you who have run into it but i know it's possible to get through the quest line right now you just have to like be very literal with following objectives and doing them exactly in the order uh that they're presented to you uh, all right let's get moving here i'm gonna have to stop and i still never did perk points after last stream because we ended up talking till like midnight on here oh that's the other part of the stream i forgot to mention uh, after, for those of you guys who just want to do Q&A, just want to engage, uh, I will at some point s uh, stop Let's Play for the night, and I'll just hang out and just BS with whoever's hanging out and chat and answer guys' questions and whatnot. Um, all right, I think the raiders are all dead. Oh, we got to kill that radio to avoid. Where are you, radio? Okay, let's avoid copyright strikes. My name is Jake. Oh, the, the exiting animations to talk <clears throat> drives me nuts. Oh, hey there. Yeah, come Didn't on. expect to be seeing you again. Is something up? It's not the A-Sams, is it? Um, That's why I'm here. Uh, so it is the sensors that bring you here. How's the volume? Everybody, yeah, look, uh, is, a, is the, the mix of volume in the, the game others. and my voice decent? I, I, didn't, I forgot confusing. to do a sound check on that. But trust me, just stick with it. Keep building with them and provide your people with proper supervision. Eventually, it'll all make sense. I want more. Mm, what else do you have? What else? Are you saying the sensors aren't enough for you? <laughs> well, that's a first. Most people complain ASAMs are too complicated. No one's ever asked for more. I'm starting to get the feeling you're not exactly like most people, are you? All right, Slick. Consider me curious. What's your story? Like for starters, that pit boy in your wrist. I bet there's a tale behind that. By the way, I'm not, if you didn't watch the first stream, I'm not always going to let the characters talk all the way through. I feel like, especially this chapter one, you guys have had plenty of time to play it. It's been out for a while. Chapter two, I might be a little more quiet. The, now it's just if I have nothing to say about a scene, I'm going to, I'll probably just sit here and let them talk. Um, let's see here. Why are you asking about my pit boy? It's not every day someone trips over a pit boy. Heck, it took me years to find mine. Yeah, the, bo so the boxes of ASAMs were one of those things where I was kind of being a stickler about it when we first launched. I'm like, no, no, we can't get let them have all those at first. But um, and I remembered like back in with SS1, it's we, we used to give everybody just a mountain of ASAMs. And it's fine. Like the costs, a lot of the costs that we put in the mod aren't about taxing the player or balance or anything um, for, for things like crafting. It's just immersion. Like if you look at all the, the uh, costs for any of our crafting, usually you can tell we like looked at the items model and we're like, all right, well, it's got a little glass in it. Uh, it's probably got a circuit board behind that screen. And like that was kind of our, our influence as opposed to thinking of like, all right, we need X rare materials and X this. Because when it comes to the crafting costs of things, like you get so rich in this game so fast collecting junk that it's not it's not super relevant though i know with asam sensors they're really high costed so giving you guys just a boatload for most players we give you enough if you look around concord hardware store there's enough there to cover your needs for for all the main quests unless you're being a hardcore builder uh let's see here yeah we'll go ahead and i tell got them. it in vault 111 111 that's the vault just down how'd you even get Oops, in there i mean to skip that that place is sealed up tighter than a brotherhood bunker Oh, and I remember I remembered after last stream me? because I got derailed by all the by the uh, fault, if I had a hammer bug. Uh, I was going to show you guys our alternate Preston encounter, and then I totally forgot to. I kept talking about it, and I never did it. So hopefully now I'll remember to do it after we're done with this conversation. Uh, Vault one eleven. 
it, it was some kind of you can see how distracted I get. As soon as I start talking, I, I can't push buttons anymore. Point. This is why I can't engage some in in chat and uh, play games. And I would be a terrible actual like professional streamer. Trying to find, I would him. fail horribly at it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know what that's. Well, I know something like that ain't easy. You might be surprised how common that kind of thing is out here. I mean, not the frozen and the vault part, but... I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I don't mean to pick at fresh wounds. But what you said about being frozen, are you telling me you're pre-war? Before the bombs? Yeah. Before the war. Before everything was ruined. Whoa. That's... Well, that's amazing. You really aren't like most people. Then, if you don't mind my asking, why is a vault dweller from the past bothering with settlements and ASAMs? Um, what we're gonna do... I just want my son back. I'll, I'll embrace I suppose the Sean storyline for this. Will provide you with the resources for, that. for those of you guys who, well, I'm sure there's always somebody who mentions others can help uh, whenever need, we right? talk about vaults well, and pre-war and Sean, so uh, people bring up like, stuff. oh, I hate that you guys tied into the vanilla story. And the reason we did that is because for the vast majority of, of some settlements players, Raiders! oh, here comes Paul, Hurry! we found that the vast majority of some settlements players, uh, are actually started out this is like their first mod um and so a lot of people come in they've they're just playing this and so we just want it to seamlessly integrate with the main game and then for a lot of other people when they come back and play it's you know having not played fallout 4 at all for a year and again we want that same seamless experience um but i think a lot of you guys who hang out a lot play the game over and over again so you're looking to rp so you but you guys are the minority actually of the people who play all the time are actually a smaller part of the audience um, and I think that's the same th logic Bethesda has with a lot of their decisions with Fallout 4 that people who play hardcore tend to hate, like the voice protagonist stuff. I actually love the voice protagonist uh, because I am a type of person uh, uh, who will play Bethesda games that I'm not modding actively and playing obsessively like this. Uh, I will come back and play them like once a year. So like something like Skyrim, I want it to be as quick and simple as possible. Like I love, uh, what's it called? What's that? Uh, Wabajack. Like I love Wabajack for Skyrim because I don't have time to build out the 200 mod load orders anymore. So it's nice to be able to just grab somebody else's. Take it easy. It'll be all right. Just tell me what happened. But anyway, Back the reason we tie in so much to the whole story is to make sure please. it feels you gotta hurry. like part of the base game. Damn raiders are like rad roaches. You crush one and five more crawl out. Well, don't you worry, Slick. I got your back. You helped me with my raider problem. Only right I help you with yours. Yeah, all right, all let's right, go. Let's go. Right you are. Come on, get the lid out and move before somebody gets killed. Oh, foreshadowing. Um, all right, so now I don't think we're going to... I don't want to... I'm not going to follow old Paul just because I know if I do it now, I'm going to forget. He'll run off and wait for us. I'm going to forget about this. So I'm going to show you guys this little scene. So if you didn't watch the first stream, what we did is when we were told to kill the museum raiders, we killed them all and we ran back out the front door instead of going through Preston's room like the vanilla game forces you to. Um, and that allows things to continue. And then when you come back in later, you'll find that Preston and everybody are still playing this scene correctly, even though you didn't go introduce yourself. So we added a new introduction here. Preston Garver, where he introduces himself as if you just met him here. So this was something our lead writer did, Sir Rick, which was just awesome. Um, and I'm glad we implemented it. There were a couple of things he did that he set up that we didn't end up implementing for this sort of thing. Uh, but this one I'm glad we did. It's a nice way for people who want to do things a little out of order, or maybe just want to do the SS quest, are not ready to engage Minutemen. But you do have the option to come back, and it still feels natural. It still uses all real voice files that we didn't have to fake anything. Didn't take a head wound, did you? Uh, who are these people? Just folks looking for a new home. A fresh start. I've been with them since Quincy. Listen, and we owe you our lives. So here, it ain't much, but it's the best way I can say thank you. Before you leave, kid, a word about the journey you're about to start on. Cause I seen your destiny. And I know your pain. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. This old lady, she's out of her mind. But it's the cats. Oh man, so they there's some Mama seriously Murphy messed up lip sync here. Sight. No, Mama Murphy, we talked about this. 
that junk. It's gonna kill you. Ah, shush, Preston. We're all gonna die Man, Fallout 4, like all of Bethesda's We're games, are always a little bit dated. Safe. I know they always seem to be a little bit behind the curve here? on their uh, their stuff. Too. But after well, playing going. Um, Cyberpunk right. last year, all right, folks. like, man, this stuff, some of this st stuff it's feels so dated with the animations and conversations and stuff. It's not far. She knows about it? You mean she had one of her visions while she was stoned out of her gourd? And now you want us to just I don't think I actually have to sit through this. I don't remember. I think this is enough no to get them to start Mama going Murphy to Cargo so that we could do it. I'm just waiting to see if I get a... Yeah, so now I can leave. So anyway, so there, I just want to show you guys that, that if you decided to run back out the front and you're like, you know what, now I'm ready to go do Miniman, they will be sitting there waiting for you so that you can go do that quest line anytime. So it's a way you can kind of still do our main quest and put a pin in the Minutemen until you're ready to do it. Because I know that, that was that's something important to a lot of you guys who are RPing hard. You want to you wanna be able to play the game in the order you want to play it in. Um, or for people who are just like, I'm just in it for this is two story. You want to skip all that stuff. Now, one of the things I can't really fix without tweaking vanilla stuff, which I hate doing, uh, is the quest objectives. So if you uh, are a stickler for having a undone objectives or objectives you're not ready to complete in your, in your uh, bit boy, unfortunately... There's not anything I can do about that without breaking one of my golden rules of modding. Um, but it's something somebody could patch in if people were going crazy with it. You could script it, script a, uh, a hiding of that objective easily enough. All right, let's head over the corner here, catch up with old Paul. Sorry, old Paul, we made you wait after all that, uh, all that excitement and fear. <laughs> we just delayed things a little bit longer. I think I read, so up here, for, um, spoilers of what's about to happen in two seconds. Uh, ooh, some goodies. Um, that uh, I think I read a recent post. Oh, some more 10 milliliter. I think I read a recent post on the forums because I've been trolling them a lot lately, trying to keep up with all the bugs and chips. Which I know for those of you guys who follow the forums a lot, uh, you'll probably notice I, I have not been as nearly uh, post happy in the last week as I was prior, pre Christmas. Um, that's just, just I've been traveling, a lot of holiday stuff going on. I'll probably try and get back into that soon. Although I'm going to have to limit myself to a few hours. Uh, a week or I'm never gonna get anything done because I was going hard with it I was doing multiple hours a day for a little bit there. Whoa old Paul just like disappeared on me. Where did he go? I think he just broke what the? Oh, he's engaged in a, a fight. Okay, so I think so. Oh, no, there he is. There he is. That was not old Paul That was a raider <laughs> um, I think uh, somebody posted a bug about I think if you like shoot the lead raider from maker before you engage It can break things or something. I haven't tried it. Out. I'm not gonna try it right now I just want to just do this <coughs> you can see. Yeah what can this old pile of bones do for you? Ah, we need to Nothing. disable that. Never. So, there, so okay, then. Uh, I've See talked about this around. a lot. It's not, it doesn't hurt to talk about it again. But we like to do backfilling of content when we do uh, expansions, where we go back and like flesh out some stuff that we added in to in the previous chapters. Uh, we did this a lot with Conqueror. We'd add a patch in with a new quest line, and we'd go add previous quests that happened earlier. We did the same with this, and like old Paul, we added some more conversation to him. But sometimes they show up at inappropriate times. Like he should not be willing to talk about his past while staring down some raiders over here. But we are a high charisma character, so we're gonna go try and talk Hold about it. out of this. Take one step closer and I shoot. Uh, let's see here. Take Easy. Me. I just want to talk. Talk? Talk! I'm here to do more than talk! But yeah, that you should be able to, in my opinion, you should be able to not have to have this conversation. If you want to just guns ablaze, it's supposed to work that way, but I'm going to, let me put that on my notes since you guys are saying it to, the, to make sure I look at this. So MQ04, oh, come on, get out of here. This pen's terrible. Give me a good pen. Uh, MQ04 shooting raider breaks quest. So I saw I happened to catch a. It's probably one of those things that a lot of you guys have posted about many times, and it just never made it onto my plate for whatever reason. Because uh, you guys all have a workaround here. Um, MQ04 shooting raider breaks quest. I'll just write it like that. That way I'll test in thoroughly. Okay, let's work this. Look, out. I'm sure we can work this out. No one has to die. You wasted a whole bunch of us at Concord. So now you're going to watch some of your people die. Um, I guess I can just bribe him. I don't remember if there's a way to do it without bribe. I'll just bribe him. I think I got enough caps. I Could a hundred caps change your mind? Uh, it's not much, but it'll do. All right, boys. I think they learned their lesson. Hey, cool. That'll work. Um, I think there's a way to talk about it without uh, caps. I don't remember. I don't care about caps right now. Are you going to just stay there forever? Is that one of the bugs too? I'll screenshot this so I remember it. This, this is like a little sort of thing where it doesn't break. Like the quest is still playable. So like it's fine. And I think this is another thing people have reported of immersion issue of like 
some of them end up walking next to the Raiders like they're all happy family. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, hey guys, thanks for playing. We'll see you later. And they all walk together nicely. And old Paul just sitting over there. Yeah, some uh, some quirks that could be worked out here. I'm gonna just write uh, C L P for awkwardness. Remind myself. This is one of those things where like we dream of one day having all of this stuff polished out and getting all of these like rough edges and making sure it just plays so it feels natural and realistic and a lot of the stuff just ends up falling by the wayside because there are unlimited things to do, especially because we're constantly working on the new features. Like we are going to immediately start into chapter three development after uh, everybody's off of the break and we get some time to plan it all out uh, of our development cycle. So it's going to, it can be hard, but this time we have, uh, we have other quest designers, not just me. So we'll probably see a lot more smoothness and bug fixes than we have in uh, in the prior chapters and with Conqueror. All right, let's talk to Straight. Excuse me. Not the way I would have done it, but at least it's open now. Say, uh, before we came here, I wanted to ask you something. This maybe isn't the most appropriate time or venue for a chit-chat, but have you got a minute? Why? What's this all about? Well, this may seem abrupt, but the Commonwealth. By now, I'm sure you've experienced enough to form an opinion about it, so... I do want to say, just like I cheated to get past the stuck quest, I'm also not opposed to cheating for other things. Like, if I need to uh, cheat past an encounter because my character's too weak, or uh, uh, force the daytime because I want you guys to be able to see. This is more about, uh, I'm trying to find bugs and uh, hopefully show you guys a full playthrough. Not really worried about balance or, uh, or anything like that. Let's see. Uh... It seems like people are finally rebuilding and recovering from the nuclear war. <laughs> Ever the optimist, huh? Keep in mind, it's been over 200 years since that war, and folks are still rebuilding and recovering. Not exactly stellar progress. It's a real mess out here. People living in dirt, barely enough food or clean water, random attacks from raiders, pharaohs, or God forbid, synths. But here's the thing. It doesn't have to be that way. It just might be possible to bring back a measure of the civilization to the wastes, like what you used to have. All right. Oh, and I see uh, a bunch of messages coming up for, I'm not reading the chat, but I just like, whenever there's a graphic, I catch it, and I see a lot of these show hide things. For whatever reason, YouTube's default chat settings have a uh, a curse filter on them. So if you drop a four letter word, you're probably, your your uh, text is probably, your message is not gonna get seen by the majority, unfortunately. I'm, there's probably a way to turn it off, but I'm just not gonna mess with it. So come up with a uh, more creative language, folks, and it'll, your stuff will show up. Uh, let's see here, since. Wait, what was that about since? If you've never seen one, count yourself lucky. They're kind of like robots built by the Institute, but more human. Well, some of them. If you ever come across any, be ready for a hell of a fight. What's, a what's of fun run. about this for me Preferably is in the uh, direction. I've never ever about played through SS2 right now, concerned about rebuilding the digging waste. through all the dialogue options. Like I usually just am focused on, do. let's make sure the quest and fires correctly. Usually other people on the team, uh, we usually have the writers handle the dialogue trees we since they know it better. Surface. So when I test, usually maybe, it's just to make sure, will, you know, if you shoot this guy, does the state quest change change correctly? Or do you get your reward? Like I focus on the scripting stuff. So this is kind of fun to ask all the alternate questions occasionally. And, uh, I'm not going to do it all the time just for speed, but so, uh, it is fun I to propose, ask these games. Like, I've never seen, uh -huh. I've never heard a lot of that dialogue. Oops, I accidentally. I've got a, um, what are these controllers called? The fancy Xbox controllers with the extra paddle buttons, and I just accidentally hit one when I was holding, when I was uh, leaning over to grab my coffee. Uh, so I just accidentally, I've got extra four paddle buttons I, I don't even use. I just bought it because I, I really like the heavy weight of it. It reminds me of uh, the old brick X, original Xbox controller. Uh, let's see here. Um, what's my what role? exactly do I have to do? I need someone I can trust. Someone who'd be willing to go to bat for me. But mostly, I just need you to keep on doing what you've already been doing. Building up settlements and kicking ass. From what I've seen so far, you more than fit the bill on the kind of partner I need. All right. I'm in. <laughs> Hell yeah! You are not gonna regret this. Oh, you know what? I gotta check. I suppose a proper introduction. Is I think in our last stream, I messed with the time scale. Let's see here. Help, time scale. Because if I did, I could break my save real bad. Nope, it's still that twenty. Good. Uh, sometimes I like to set the time scale to point zero zero point one, which makes it so basically no daytime passes, so I can keep the daytime on, which is fine for settlement building. But you play your game a long time with low time scale like that. Anything below six will mess things up real bad. Uh, I so don't know. what now? All right. 
With the formalities out of the way, let me answer a query of yours. Earlier, you showed an interest in getting more out of ASAMs. Now, if that's something you really are serious about, then I know where to find the equipment we need. However, there is a small problem. All right. Plus four done. Minimal issues. We just got one <laughs> struggling settler in the background there who's really afraid of getting shot. Uh, what's the problem? Same old issue that plagues the entire Commonwealth. Raiders. The place with the ASAM equipment has been claimed by a raider gang. Really dug their heels in. And they're not open to doing trade. But I reckon together we could break into the little base and grab what we need. However, we would be in for a tough fight. So, you think you'd be up for that? Wait, did he just stand up? Taking on Has a he just... No, nope, he stood down. He sat down again. <laughs> he got up, stretched his legs, sat back down. I hope he's back down with his arms up in the air again when we get out of this conversation. Um, Hold on. I have some questions first. I really want to hear some more Jake lines. I love the voice know? actor for Jake. Uh, Tom is amazing. His, he just blew, just blew away our expectations with this character. What exactly are we looking for? Well, I'm... Not entirely certain. <laughs> That's not exactly there a reassuring answer. There he is again. Answer, He's up. Let's see what's he going to do next. For a while now, I've been looking for this particular piece of tech. I don't know what it's called, but I think I know what it's meant to do. And if we get it, it should help us do more with the yep. ASAMs. Now, now he's now he's doing a different animation. Look, now he's instead of hands up, he's like hands behind his back. I bet he's sandboxing right there, and there's all those animation <laughs> markers for the settlers. And he's just jumping between them. Oh, that's so awkward. Uh, Tell me about my role in this. Well, I hate to be cliche, but you'd be the extra muscle. I wish we could just waltz in there and ask for what we want, but that's not really an option. Any idea how many raiders we're talking about? Um, I'm not too sure of exact numbers. A handful at least. Ten, maybe twenty. So, best we be prepared. Tell me more. All right. Um, uh, how do I explain this? Okay, so right now, we got ASAMs, right? And for the most part, they work just fine. I don't remember what old However, Paul does them during to this. Like, even better, does he? They need to be connected I think that's to him. Machine. No, who was that wandering Some off there? Kind Maybe of that was just a wandering computer, NPC. I, think. I don't know what that and was. And without this the computer, there. I don't remember what old Paul does. I feel like he should have joined in this conversation. There's some so moments that come up during the quest line where thing. when we were planning them out, we were just focused on you know a couple characters and then... And when I actually play through them, I'm like, oh, it's, we should have had this person say anything because it's awkward that, you know, you, you activate them and they're silent. Um, and a lot of that's just just during the planning. We didn't anticipate it. And do it, the way our de development cycle works is we're simult. Usually it's um, myself. I'm working on all the code for the new systems and we have it all planned out of what we're going to add. And then we give uh, the art team various tasks and then the writers are writing up all the details of the story. We'll have the rough outline done and then they're working on it. Um, and then as soon as they're done with the writing, they start implementation and get voice actors going immediately before we implement, which is not standard. Like the way Bethesda does it is they will, uh, they will right, fully then. implement the whole so, quest line and use placeholder voices, either robo voice, or they'll use their quest designers voices as placeholders to make sure it all sm flows smoothly. But if we did that, then every chapter would take us two years. So we have opted for... Uh, the voice or voice actors start working at the same time as the quest designers and the benefit is speed the, the the downside is occasionally we have some like weird awkwardness that we just didn't anticipate and we don't want to have to keep bugging the voice actors more than we already do don't all worry right. that's I'll enough help you there's enough side chatter we've well, been talking right. to Jake for 10 minutes now this equipment Though I am really enjoying watching this idiot sandbox in the background satellite station uh, to different kneeling Lydia. stations so that's where we'll be heading but before we go there might want to make a pit stop or two I understand a nearby farm has had recent dealings with this particular group of raiders. It might be worthwhile asking them about it. See if we can't get more up-to-date intel. Also, I've got a small cache of gear hidden nearby, Olivia. It's probably still there. Would be useful for our little venture. I'll mark your pit board with our points of interest, but it's up to you what we do. I'm handing over the reins. All right, well, let's go... I think he's talking about Abernathy. We'll go do that because we can get the the locket quest on Santa. Look at the raiders are still just chilling out. They came all. They all came back. Hey guys. Oops. I probably didn't give them a, a far enough destination to travel to. That's who was walking in the background. One of the raiders came back. All right. Lots of quirks to go on to deal with. <laughs> I've never stood long enough asking those conversations to notice the raiders come back. I'm sure. You, again, this is all stuff I'm sure you guys reported. And apologies that it's never been addressed to 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 this date. There's like I said, there's unlimited things to work on and. Uh, um, at some point, I have to give up on, uh, on following every forum lead and 
Um, I rely on uh, a small group of people and our testers and team to uh, relay specific details to me. Hey there. That's close enough, stranger. We're a peaceful farm. We don't want any trouble. It's okay. I'm friendly. Not looking to cause any trouble. If you say so, but be warned. We're armed here, so don't try anything. Let me tell you, farming ain't easy. Out in the yeah, field the, um, all day, I just happened to catch day, somebody pinged me in the chat there about how it follows the main quest. That was something... Um, so in the early development of uh, the storyline, before this was going to be SS2 and it was just going to be um, an expansion to SS1, we were actually like going to have still the the museum place where the sensors used to be, where you'd pick up the hull tape, that was all like built into the story and everything. And um, we had a lot of, we, a lot of our story Farming's hard was work. all designed well, around, you would have had to Blake play Avenue. through the main quest line Been simultaneously with ours. And at certain points you would have hit you knew barriers in our story where you couldn't continue until you progressed parts of the main story. And it was all tied in. I think we've loosened that a lot. I don't think there's any requirements anymore. Um, there might end up being a chapter three, but I don't think so anymore. I think we've gotten past that. I think there's stuff, it's going to be instead, there's extra content that you'll be able to experience if you've done certain parts of the main story, I think is now the design we've gone with. Not the um, most exciting is... subject, I know. <laughs> oh, sorry, um, got distracted there, yeah. Mr. Abernathy. You could say that. Um, Good to see a new face. But uh, yeah, you? originally, we, we follow a lot of the main quest because land? in our original design, we um, it was going to be sure a requirement. I'm sure I'll give it a try someday. someday. Well, good luck to you then. Maybe I'll see you at the Diamond City Market someday, and we'll do a swap. Word of advice, though. If you do start up a farm, be ready to deal with the Raiders. Why do all the hard work when you can just take what you want at gunpoint? Sounds like bad news to me. You really are new to these parts. Best armed bastards in the Commonwealth. You have something they want, they won't hesitate to take it. Last time those Raiders hit us, my daughter Mary tried to stand up to them. Now she's buried out back of the house. Only 21 years old, and they shot her down without a thought. I guess I don't That's need, I guess I'd be fast forwarding all this vanilla dialogue. You guys have all heard this a thousand times. Apologies, I'm not, uh, this is why I'm not a pro streamer. Never There's will nothing be. worse. All right, sorry, we're going to skip. Sorry, Blake. I, I just want your you quest, because if I can level up, I can get a few perks, and maybe I won't die so fast in combat encounters. Um, don't worry. Go get that locket back. All right. Connie Field. Cool. Okay, do that while we're going, oh, right. and then... All right, let's see here. Um, I can't remember if it's at this point, um, or if it's after this quest. I'm gonna go check, so... Uh, so Rick really loves to connect to vanilla encounters. Uh, yes, Rick is our lead writer, and uh, one of them I bet a lot of you have never experienced is the Drumlin Diner encounter with Jake and with Jake with you. Uh, so I'm gonna go do that. And I don't know that we continued this. I feel like this is, we did a lot of this, and you see Jake just commented on Abernathy's daughter. There's a, There used to be a lot more of this baked into the story. I don't think we've done it quite as much anymore. It was part of the early part of the story. And part of that is because development of chapter two took so long. There was just so much time where they were polishing up story before we started actually developing it. And now we're in more of kind of a rapid fire development cycle. So there's not as much time to spend on little tiny stuff, details like that, but I know they feel they feel really cool. Uh, we get a lot of positive comments on when we do things like have uh, uh, companions comment on stuff and then our NPCs commenting on what's going on in the world. Uh, and I, I love the feel. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, this is, this is all a hobby for us. So we're only doing it in our off hours, which means Limited time to do all this stuff, so it's uh, we have eventually have to cut down on some of this. But I think Jake has some we commentary had a deal, Trudy. on this encounter. Hand here. over the goods you owe us. I ain't giving you poison shilling chem pushers anything. Do you know what that junk has done to my boy? He bought them fair and square, Trudy. Ain't our fault if he's strung out. It now, might don't make be. Me come in there he suggests this later, but I don't remember. Posting. It might be I'm I'm screwing up the order of this. Maybe he suggests it after this. I don't know. We're gonna just yours. we're gonna just do it anyway and see what happens. All right. All right. Let's whoa, see. whoa! Easy there, Vault Boy. This doesn't involve you. You stop waving that gun in my face, or it's gonna involve me. Okay, okay. Just take <laughs> it easy. We'll lower our weapons. All right. Just don't do anything crazy. I love that you can flip it and rob him. Uh, yeah. Now hand over your money. All of it. Just keep calm, all right? Here. 
That's everything I have. Now get the hell out of here, both of you. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Fine. Good we'll old leave. high charisma. Just my goddamn luck. I can't believe you made that scumbag turn tail and run. Here, this is for you. Now you ever need to trade? My shop's open. Uh, you got things covered from- Yeah. Now let's get back to business. No, Not okay. now. Ah, uh, yeah, I probably screwed it up. I think Jake does ask you to come here at some point, and I probably just did it out of order, so he's not gonna ask me now. Um, it might be after this quest. I know there's a point where he has, he definitely has commentary on Drumlin though. I remember coding it in. Um, all right, let's head up this way. So some of it, uh, it's, yeah, I can't remember if it's he asks you to go there or he talks about it if you already did something. I just, I very remember, I very distinctly remember uh, doing a lot of uh, tinkering with some, some quest stuff that we had set up for that. Um, oh well, so maybe one of you guys have seen it before or know how to trigger or it could be that we broke it at some point too because there's uh, It's obviously not an important part So it wouldn't have been something that we spent a lot of time debugging on if it, uh, if it broke at some point point. And we also had there was another quest designer involved in the early few quests and then um, After they exited I ended up redoing most of the stuff they'd done and that I think that was one of the things that uh, she'd done and I, I probably uh, I probably never looked at it again afterwards, so I might have broken it unintentionally when I was redoing a lot of the other stuff, just because I have a process that I like to do for the quests, and some of them were a little finicky and buggy, and still are, as we just saw with uh, our man uh, doing the uh, up-down on, uh, on the kneeling animations. Alright, I'm taking the worst possible route. Alright, uh, I'm going to change the... Eh, I don't know, I like this encounter at night, but I also want you guys to be able to see. So I'm going to go ahead... I know it's really hard to see this at night, even when, or even when I'm not using uh, Darker Nights. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and advance time here. So we're going to do set game hour to, we'll do 10 a.m. Let's see if that, there we go. Nice and bright. I'm sure you guys can see what's going on. Let's go grab our cash and let Jake get his uh, Hold on. We're near his the baseball cash. helmet on. Just give me a second here. I hid this stuff a while back when I first checked out the area. Aha! Looks like it's all still here. How do you like the headwear? Pretty cunning, don't you think? <laughs> I think in our original design it was supposed to be a custom helmet, and then it was just we we have very limited. Uh, uh, art support. We just don't have a ton of 3D modelers on the team, and definitely uh, people who can match the quality of Bethesda stuff, because that's kind of one of the things we try and do. Um, just like we have limited resources for how much we can put in in each expansion, and then we also have the size issue with Xbox that I think we're just like, yeah, we can't really do a custom helmet, and then so we're like, oh, the baseball helmet would be pretty funny. Um, you look absolutely fabulous. It might well, have always been fun to do that, cut, the, the baseball helmet, but though, fabulous. Kind of I just know we, we, we made fun of this Here, a lot. This is <laughs> for you. Helmet. And then he gives you one too. I think he gives you the red one. Um, we'll wear it just because. We'll join him. We'll be Helmet Brothers. Oh yeah, red batting helmet. I'm right there with you, buddy. Helmet Brothers, let's bash heads. That would be a fun animation. Just like a macho headbutt for, for fun. Uh, Alright, let's go. Oh man, I got a garbage weapon here. What is my? Right I'm gonna hold back. Scout hey, the you area got plenty of time there. Great. I'll let you deal with the raiders directly outside Olivia. Once you're done taking out the trash, I'll meet you at station's entrance. Okay, you go do that. Oh, oh, I'm supposed to talk to you. This is one of those things where, uh, for the longest time, this was a required sequence in the quest line. So when I talked about earlier, we we tend to do things. You know, I gotta fix the weather too. And now the rain's driving me nuts. All right, force weather. To be, this is how much I play the game. I reckon, reckon I remember weather commands that are hex IDs. <laughs> um, that originally this conversation was required and it kept breaking the quest for people. So now this is totally optional. If you don't get this or you just run away from it, it's fine. Um, Those raiders are already yesterday's news. All right, just don't go too far away. And I see a lot of pings on my name. Uh, if you didn't catch it earlier and when I've talked about it, I am really, really bad at multitasking. Uh, is why I like stop moving or stop uh, answering NPCs when I'm talking because I just I just can't I can't focus on more than one thing at once. So uh, I am basically ignoring most of chat until 
we uh, take a break. So I'll take a break at some point. I'll catch up on chat. And then... Whoa. Oh, that, that mole rat is always awkward to me. Like, I feel... It's like, where the hell is a mole rat with a bomb coming from? Like, it feels like a story thing. Like, I know there's the one in that uh, subway tunnel, and that one makes sense to me. That's like... It's got a little story of some raider that's doing that. But just this random one over here feels really weird. Uh, anyway, so I'm uh, mostly ignoring chat just due to my inability to focus um, on more than one thing. And uh, then I'll, I'm going to engage hardcore in Q&A after we're done playing, which I'll play play for uh, maybe another 30 to 60 minutes. We're just getting, I'm trying to get through a couple of quests because I want my goal is to try and get through chapter one. Uh, as quickly as possible like I want to get because most of you guys have played this already um, but I wanted to play through it because there's a lot of chapter two content that is that shows up earlier in chapter one and I've never done a, uh, a SS2 playthrough proper period like I've done it uh, for testing and like we're all and I'll kind of skip around but I've never actually taken the time to kind of enjoy it and whatnot so this is a nice thing for me and uh, hope, hopefully a good chance for you guys to learn some of the background for those of you guys who are who enjoy hearing about all this stuff uh, but uh, my apologies for those really of you, like uh, raiders, do you who are poking me in chat and not getting a response. Uh, I'll try care. and scroll back through, but I would say hold your questions for when we go to Q&A mode. At least not right now. And so I'll do that for in. a long time. Like I'm a, I'm a late night guy, advice? so uh, I'll be up. I'll be on for online for at least two more hours, three if you guys are are uh, keeping me engaged with questions at the end. Um, but I will Q&A for minimum an hour at, at the end of this, and we can talk about whatever you guys want. Right. About what? This particular raider group packs a little more artillery than the usual riffraff. And that includes some nasty big miniguns. Just remember, miniguns need a few seconds to warm up before they start firing. So make sure you use that to your advantage. And make sure you get your ass behind some damn cover. You can't get hit by what can't see you. Thanks. I always appreciate good advice. Come on. Let's head on in. In we go. Oh, I just grabbed a leather chest piece. I meant to grab to equip because that is eh, it's better against energy, I guess. Uh, I guess I don't need that right now. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to spend a lot of time uh, thinking about gear. I'm basically like, if it's got a plus sign next to it, I'm probably going to equip it. I wonder. So there's a scene right here. I don't know if it works anymore. I know it, it did at some point, and I think it was one of the things I broke. Um, there's this uh, laser trip mine here, and at some point we had it working where Jake would comment on it. Yeah, and I think we broke it at some point. Uh, he'd say something like, watch your footing there, or whatever. And I screwed that up somewhere. I wonder. And again, not important enough to, to spend a lot of time risking breaking the rest of the quest to get that to work again. Uh, let's see, we got a super chat, Shady2, thank you for the donation. Um, this is great, it's like a director's commentary on track. Yeah, that was kind of part of, that was one of the goals of this. And you know, love it or hate it, if you Concord like, if you like hearing all this stuff, great. Um, for people who don't like it and just want to see Curtis interesting ways to get through these, you can hit mute and I watch the subtitles. Industrial-sized Robco Comhub unit. Comhub. That must be the ACM equipment we're here for. And I think it's stored behind that door up ahead, which is locked. Huh. Looks like it was recently tampered with. There's an extra level of security. Now, I reckon I could get through it, though. Just give me a few minutes. In the meantime, I'd appreciate if you take care of any raiders around. No I don't like the idea of someone sneaking up on us while I work on this. All right, let's go. Let's see how bad I am at solo combat. <laughs> Ooh. What the? I'm gonna grab that shotgun, actually, because... My pipe pistol is terrible, and I do not have much ammo here. Nothing there now. Who's that peekaboo? Uh oh. Oh. Uh oh. Mini gun. Yay! Hey, hey, hey. Get him, dog meat. I guess I'm not solo combat. I got dog. I got doggo. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, I leveled up right as I stim packed. All right, guys. Oh, yeah. Do I have any explosives? I don't know if I've been looting any yeah, Maltops or anything. Hey, heck, heck. So, funny thing about... So, any of you guys who have played Conqueror know that we use uh, Hack Hack in the quest. So, we actually had a 
in um, in our storyline, and I don't think obviously I didn't implement it, but uh, or may maybe I don't remember. It's been so long. Um, I guess in SS1 I probably was planning on doing it when this is going to be an expansion, but we have it written. We have an alternate replacement for Akak that's supposed to get planted in here if you're playing the Hunter quest line. So that way, if you do if you were doing both quest lines simultaneously, that uh, you would. Uh, you wouldn't accidentally kill somebody who ends up being part of our quest line um, in Conqueror. And uh, I don't think we did anything with that because Conqueror has not been ported over to... Has not been ported over to SS2. Oh, and the locket. There we go. I don't remember what's behind this door if we even need to pick this lock. Nice. I guess I shouldn't be wasting my 12 bullets on killing rad roaches. Thanks, doggo. Uh, let's see here. Just want... Oh, intel room key, sure. Oh, wait, isn't that the room? That's the door that Jake's unlocking. <laughs> uh, Alright. Um, I don't care about junk. I just want stim packs. I really, I should just cheat them in and not waste a bunch of time looting, because... I can get it hooked on the looting. Um, that is why Salvage Beacons was my first Fallout 4 mod, because I am addicted to to looting. And Fallout 4 made it way worse for me than it ever has been in any, any Bethesda game, just because of the... Uh, uh, we'll take that, though. Um, because of the yeah. need for junk for all sorts of stuff. That it really got me hooked on the collect-it-all mentality. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, there's a Molotov. Gotcha. I'm fucking seeing things. <laughs> oh, Jake ran over here. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Jake's supposed to be, like, pinned down over there. Hmm. Another little bug we've introduced along the way. Alright, where are you guys? I found him. Hey, guys. Oh. oh. Hell yeah. Oh. Good. It's over. Hi. Mighty impressive. Thanks for the help. I was not enjoying the show. Oh, I remember the there. difference. Okay, so if you don't get the helmet, so here's a little thing you probably, a lot, of, most of you probably have never seen because it's so easy to get that helmet for him. It's on the way. If you don't stop at that cache, uh, instead of Jake being in combat there and joining you, he will be shot and leaning up against the computer desk waiting for you to help him. So like, there's a little little side benefit. There's a lot of stuff like that. Um, in the mod, where uh, if you do all the optional objectives and stuff, the, the encounter will play out slightly different. And there's way more of that in Chapter 2. There's like some pretty big stuff that'll play out even into Chapter 3 based on your decisions, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's never anything like, we're, we're not going to even pretend that we're going to have, you know, a bunch of different endings. And I mean, maybe we will in some cases, but not anything major. We're not going to have like a uh, choose between Institute Brotherhood and uh, Railroad type of story going on. Um, but we do want to have some payoffs for some of the decisions you get to make. No problem. Glad to be of service. Even if it's just oh, small little it. stuff like this, Dented it's fine. It feels it feels good. Changes oh, your well, playthroughs. Better than a bullet to the brain box. All right, let's get down to business. Oh man, I'm ripping through the water today. I may have to stop for a uh, second coffee tonight. I'm always torn on what to do with uh, NPCs when you're supposed to follow them places. Is it feels really awkward for people to just run, to to run forward to do whatever they say they're gonna do. Can't talk to me. I'm trying to get some gear here. Um, and uh, but it also is really infuriating Raiders to walk behind somebody if they have to go too far. Just need to hit the last few keys on the it's terminal. And, and Bethesda has hey, a pseudo presto. solution. They call it <laughs> the uh, the jog Let's animation, inside, but it looks or not jog. It's uh, fast walk. That takes but it fence. looks so horrible. Only We've used it a few I'm times, and it always just looks like somebody's got a pipe right up their butt. Uh, so I try not to use it as often, as often as possible. It's uh, it looks real real bad. I'll take a mini nuke, why not? Also, nuke cola because huh, it looks delicious. Um, let's see here. We got a leather arm. That's a straight up upgrade. Get this out of here. Drop you. Uh, yeah, we'll go to leather. Sure. We're going to run into. We just look better in, in leather. The wedding ring grabbing off the. I just. I feel like that. There should have been something done with that. I feel like I, I can't resist in a playthrough leaving that. It feels just wrong. Wait, why have I. What button am I supposed to hit to leave the pit boy? Oh, that's the wrong button. 
Uh, so I recently picked up a Nintendo Switch, and their flip flopping of X, Y, and A, B from every other control from Xbox controllers drives me nuts. And it keep now I'm like, I was just playing uh, Hades yesterday on a Switch, and uh, so now I've got stuck in my brain. I've got my buttons flipped around between X, Y, and A, B. It's it's gonna drive me mad. Uh, Excuse me. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Huh. Would you look at that? Interesting. Very interesting. What is it? Hmm? Oh, right. Take a look. Shipping label reads from Concord Hardware. This is definitely the equipment we're here for. No mistake there. This is the ACM Com Hub. As best as I understand it, this thing connects to the sensors somehow, allowing them to do more stuff. But I wouldn't really know how it does that until I turn it on. Although looking at it, it doesn't look like time's been too kind to this old gal. I'm already seeing a fair number of damaged components. I wonder if it'll still be able to run. Can we fix this? I don't even know how bad the damage is yet. I'll have to take a closer look back at the hardware store. Ooh, and we're coming up to the first. Well, I'd uh, say we're done here. First new chapter two content no injected into around. the main quest. You were a big. Help. Although I think there's a, I don't remember the no 24 or 48 hour timer. So we tried to do uh, between quests. We tried to put a lot of breaks so people could, you know, go play with their settlements because it is Sim settlements, uh, or to go do main quest stuff or whatever. Can you explain um, how this thing is actually? I'm probably gonna, gonna do. Well, I don't want to like do said, a ton of building, but I do no want to like make sure off. we have at least one I'm high functioning settlement for the sense. sake of industrial production. This is a new piece of um, so that I can explain all the resource system and everything. Take a while so I'm probably gonna do a little bit of that, but I don't. But then we'll probably just cheat and fast forward time. Uh, it was a cakewalk, no problem at all. <laughs> I'd hate to see what you consider difficult. See, if you've not already done so, now might be a good time to get your bearings. Still can't imagine how overwhelming all this must be for you. Maybe check in on any settlements you've got going. Or if you think you might need more sensors... Oh yeah, we get to do the, the Super Mutant too encounter too. A I'm place called do that, West Everett Estates. But I should warn you, area is overrun with Super Mutants. Because I know a lot of people just see Super Mutants and immediately go killing. Even after um, this. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, see a Let's Play of, of, uh, of this next encounter with the Super Mutants, there is a, there is a talking option we can do. What's a super mutant? Well, they're big, they're green, and tend to be pretty mean. No one seems to know where they come from. Maybe you wouldn't want to know even if you did. Generally speaking, they're best steered clear of. I might be able to do that. Well, if you do decide to go, take care. I'll contact you once I've looked over the comm hub. Hopefully by then I should have some idea of how it works. Until then, stay safe out there, alright? Oh, and again, great work today. Okay. Um, let's see what I have for note. I didn't even know this was here. Somebody, I just saw a Yagi and said, don't forget the note back there. Um, one of the, the fun things about that's changed between when I was developing SS1 and SS2 is now that there's so many other people involved in mod and now a lot of the team, when we, so even with the beginning of SS2 development, I was literally the only person who knew how to use the creation kit um, until we started recruiting some of the add-on pack authors. Uh, and now we've started training a lot of the team to use the creation kit. So we've got multiple people who work on quests. The writers are all asked to learn the dialogue system at minimum and then some of them that's not enough for and they start to learn other stuff. So a lot of times there's just stuff that gets added to the mod I didn't know about and it's pretty fun to find. Um, all right, nice little little note about. Oh, and then there's the yes, the sneak. I really think no. that uh, Bethesda no, knows this I'm about sure their games I'm that they are really back. just uh, they're stealth immersive sims disguised as RPGs. Because the best gameplay in all of their games is to go stealth. Like, I think most of us do or have have done and enjoy it and felt very powerful in Skyrim doing stealth archer because it's just the straight up best build, not close. Um, especially like with minimal, with minimal investment, like as far as you don't need a ton of, uh, I'm going to call them perks now because it's been, it's been a minute since I played Skyrim. Uh, you don't need many, uh, little constellation things, constellation perks, whatever we call them, uh, to get super powered as a, as an archer, especially when you're stealthing around. Um, I, I'll pick perks eventually, probably gonna just do, wait, who the heck is that? Raiders chasing a settler. Oh, I think this is one of those random encounters. Hey buddy. 
Oh. Get him, doggo. You can't touch me. I got my helmet. Why don't you just die? Same to you, buddy. Oh, oh. oh god, is he gonna kill me? Oh, no, no. Doggo, get him. Are oh, you kidding me? Please tell me. I don't, and I doubt I have an auto save either because the auto save is never, I never felt anything slow. Let's find out. Uh, if that happened, if I just died, we got to replay all that. I'm going to just hyper skip through dialogue because I know we don't, you guys won't. Okay, cool. It did save when we came outside. Oh, uh, no, we didn't hit any slow saves, so that's interesting. All right, let's try this again. Let's try this and not be an idiot. What the? Talking smack with my red batting helmet. All right, how about that for you? And what about you, buddy? Where are you? Uh, for you. I see you. Oh, there's a fourth one. I didn't know there were four. Uh, give me some of that. No, that's not what I want. And there's the guy I got us for. Nope. Get out of here. Oh, my God, again. There we go. All right. What do you got for me, buddy? Thanks a lot. I'm never leaving Vault 81 again. Count on it. <laughs> there we go. New. Wait, was any of that any good? Leather right arm, sure. Let's get some gear. That's so weird being this uh, early game with such garbage gear. All right, we're gonna take those Nuka Colas since we need to save our stim packs due to being bad at shooting. Uh, let's see here. Yes, please. What about you, buddy? Just the knock. Oh, yeah, he had a Raider right arm, but we don't need that. Uh, inventory. Apparel. Oh, I still got that minigun? Get that out of here. I've got to wait for that. Actually, I do. 250. How much ammo do we have for this? Oh, hey there. Okay. We will keep that for now. I'm not doing anything else with all that weight. I think I put all my points in charisma and strength. <laughs> um, yeah, five points strength, nine points charisma, and then I just did average on everything else, because... I never feel right doing the putting ones in a stat. I think I have done in the past on my let's plays, but not today. Uh, what were we doing? Apparel. Get that leather on. Oh, we just didn't even have a right arm equipped at all, so that's why everything is glowing. All right, let's see. We're gonna go to. Uh, we're gonna run back to turn in some of these quests. Let's turn in this, and then we're gonna go build up in uh, sanctuary a little bit to get that thing built up, and then we will. Uh, go do the super mutant thing and then uh, let's see what time is it it's 10 yeah we'll keep going I want to get it would be nice to get through well 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 today that'd be nice show you guys the first little bit I've of got that locket content. back for you you serious that's great news uh, El Trulo oh, S thank you for the donation I'm sure she'll go lean on her prices after what you've done and feel free to use our workshop at least we can okay we got Abernathy now Okay, we don't need this right now. I don't feel like building it. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe we'll pop a city plan down here. Why not? Um, let's see here. These are, so these get introduced into our story later, but because I knew a lot of people use, um, oh, we don't need rubber screws. I might just cheat and not care about that. Um, because we know a lot of people use some settlements for automation, we're just like, eh, we'll just let them, let them be available for people who know it early on. Let's not make them jump through hoops like that. Let's see, how are we going to get... Screws are going to be a pain in the butt, aren't they? We're not going to find those accidentally. So I think I've kind of into either I got a TGM here, which is what I'm going to do, or we can uh, run around waiting for scrap, which I don't have time for. So city planner's desk it is. So you can actually build city plans immediately. You do not have to uh, wait for anything. Now, I don't have any city plans installed. I don't even have ROTC installed because I was trying to keep minimal mods. Like if you look at my load order, I think it's linked in the description. I don't remember if I copied the description of this live stream from the other one. But the uh, it's literally just like four mods, so um, I just have the default city plans, but that's fine, that's enough. All right, we are gonna we'll follow the leader restrictions. Let's see, can I control Blake now? I should be able to, we'll make him the city leader, he's a natural fit. All right, here we go. You are now in charge of Abernathy Farm, yes, tear it all down. Uh, yeah, and we got plenty of ASAM sensors because I raided. Jake's lab here. And now this should kick us into cinematic mode. Let's see if we get any crashes. Oh man, I wanna we're gonna save. Uh LP day two 
Cinematic, because I know it's crashed for some people. I've never had it, but I've also not experienced the, sl the slow save issue prior to this playthrough, so uh, who knows what could happen. I actually think some of you guys who have run into a bug with HQ, where it randomly resets the cell, where there's just like just stuff missing, and a lot of the numbers are all screwy. I I have a theory that that might be related to the same problem causing the long saves. Like it's some weird piece of data that the game is struggling to record in the saves, and so it's just causing all sorts of to havoc. So I'm sure I'm hoping that once we fix the long save issue, it'll fix the HQ reset bug. Although some people never experiencing it, so maybe that's wrong. I don't know. We haven't figured out what causes that, and it happened. In all of our testing pre-launch, and we had HQ testing for a long time, um, it happened one time, and we just, so we assumed it was a fluke because it couldn't, it didn't repeat on the same save after we played around with it. So we we're just like, all right, must have been a fluke, and now a bunch of people have had it, which is a bummer because that cell, the hope for HQ is, is that's the end game where you invest, put all your eggs, um, and uh, so uh, that we need to have that stable. Um, but there we go, nice simple, simple little city plan. The city plan also, the other thing it does is it bypasses a lot of the uh, the story stuff about the different plot types. Like now this has already got martial plots and stuff. And again, we're just like, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's that part's not immersive uh, and that's okay. We just want people to be able to do this, what I just did. It's just like, you know what? I would like to see Abernathy be different the next time I come through here and that's what I want and so I'm doing that and then you get so even though it kind of breaks some of our storyline it was a worthy sacrifice I think so this will be fun to come back to Abernathy uh, next time we wander through here uh, although I I don't or I fast travel everywhere I'm not I'm not playing survival so it's not uh, it's not going to be uh, likely that I come back there anytime soon unless it's for a quest um, but uh, for those of you guys who play survival and run around it's I think it's it's a lot of fun to come back to your settlements and see them all built up like that. All right, let's head back to Sanctuary. You can see we got a whole bunch of settlers because part of if I had a hammer is to force, uh, spawn a bunch of NPCs so you have enough to do the quest. So that way those of you guys who are just powering right through it don't have to sit around waiting. Um, so let's go ahead and build out enough stuff for all these guys. All right, so we need a bunch of stuff here. Uh, all right, let's get the weather, or let's get the time up again. So set game hour, like 10 a.m. That was a good time of day. There we go, nice and bright. Um, I don't know why I'm getting this bug right here. I'm sure you guys have seen this in your own games. This drives me nuts because I can't find, I cannot, if I like go to replicate it in a coding scenario where I'm just like, all right, let's, let's watch the debug log of this, of one plot and see when this occurs. It never, ever happens. Um, but then when I'm playing, it happens all the time. And then the debug log is so nasty from all the stuff. There's just so much stuff going on, right? We've got all these different plots printing out data um, that it's impossible to find what I'm looking for. Uh, but I cannot, I can't find anything wrong with the code that would create a situation where those icons should overlap. It's, it's maddening. Fortunately, refresh plot fixes it, but I'm just not interested in doing that for for those because refresh plot. Uh, it's, I know it's much faster in this, but I'm not going to run refreshing for that because it'll probably happen again uh, with those icons overlapping. I can still see the number. It's clear enough. It's fine by me. Um, okay, let's build some plots. I'm left talking. All right, we need... Let's see. Obviously, we need some residential, so we'll start with that. Let's get enough... Res I want to get enough residential going so we can trigger the multi because the multi is fun to build. Um, all right, that guy's got a nice little home. I should. I guess I should give him a, like a wall with a doorway. Um, I like build. I like zoning out here. Let's build ourselves a little residential area. But let's. Um, it's my. I bet my settlement's gonna end up looking very similar to the one I did in my uh, SS1. Uh, let's play where I built up sanctuary, because I just, just naturally have a way I like to build this place. Um, not not intentional. I just I don't get real creative with it. I just kind of like. I love the just the natural sprawl that occurs when you just kind of build over time with more as more sellers appear you just build it up I, li I like the the feel the ramshackle feel of it all it's really it feels nice to me which is why that's kind of the our design um our design goal for any of the building plans is they're just kind of meant to feel super ramshackle which is why we don't have any like clean buildings it's that's part of the design style i enjoy about fallout everything feels haphazard um okay let's see that is Seven beds, eight and nine for the ones I just queued up. Um, we'll do some interior plots this time. Usually I love to just flood the place with two by twos, but let's do a little interior. Come on, you guys haven't killed these blowflies yet? What are you doing? I didn't recruit you all. Just sit around. Am I still in? Yeah, I'm still in God mode. <laughs> oh my God, with the scrapping. Let's see why you guys like uh, 
scrap mods. Yes, my good karma's paying off. All right, do we got enough room in here? Oh, still more. Tried to get out of the way. Make some room here. All right, let's get an interior plot in here. What I want to know is how any Xbox player ever places an interior plot. Because these things, I know my name's on the mod, but I have hated interior plots since day one, but so many people requested them. Um, and uh, I know a lot of you players love them. There we go. That's how you get an Xbox. I hate these things. They are finicky to work with in-game. They cause a lot of like random issues that uh, people ask me to fix that are just not feasible to fix. Like we could, um, one of the things a lot of people ask is, can you make it so it chooses a building plan where it doesn't block the walls? And technically that could be possible. So I dreamt up a way we could we could spawn like a little invisible gun right here and shoot a bullet, a tracer bullet in all four directions and detect which one's connected and then make a determination based on that and be like, okay, there's probably a wall here, here. Uh, and then that could be get us somewhat logical, but the cost of that, the code cost of that is so high. Uh, not only in the work, but also just in how slow the code would be. I'm just like, this is this engine is not built for, for this kind of thing. Um, there's so there's their interior plots drive me insane. Um, they're they are so damn problematic in many ways, but they look pretty cool. And um, since I'm not gonna see them again, I'm not super worried about uh, like I'm not gonna go digging around these people's houses. Uh, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna bother me too much if furniture blocks their entrances and stuff. And let's see, where's the doorways? I feel like we have, oh, I bet it's in, it's in workshop reconstruction kit, which I don't have installed right now. Uh, I should, probably should have that installed, mostly because our people find a lot of like weird bugs that mod causes um, with its mesh replace. So work, workshop, wasteland reconstruction kit was designed with the idea that you never use it in an actual playthrough. It's for quest. It's, it was designed for people who are doing the city plan contest. It was like people who um, they're just focused on settlement building. They're not worried about playing the actual game um, because there it does a lot of mesh replacers, and the mesh replacers will add snap points to things. Now the problem we found is a lot of times doing those mesh replacers breaks random like bits in the game world. Like I think. Um, the uh the quarry at the quarries so there's a couple of them there's the one right outside over by olivia where we were at and then there's another one on the east side of the map and i think that the stairs on those get really wonky for the ai when workshop reconstruction wasteland reconstruction kit is installed all right there's 10 beds let's get a couple more we got 12 people running around here oh i know why we got to 12 people so if i had hammer didn't actually spawn the extra people that's the concord five we just recruited ah, i just remembered that um but wasteland or uh, if you play through if i had a hammer normally you don't do the quest skip you would end up with i think 11 people is uh, the number we ended up with all right let's no actually i don't even want to build there i like i'm gonna keep just slopping this stuff down all awkwardly you're gonna this guy wants to live by the tree really bad and that's that's okay by me um and then let's see another we'll do one more end here and what about this house and yeah, this looks like a great one all right let's get you an interior plot too we'll struggle bust it over here uh pretend we're an xbox player really wants it oh give me that green light up there we go the xbox players are troopers uh, all right, and then we'll start wiring this place up because to upgrade past level one You do need to have power even though at level one for most of our early game plots You don't actually need electricity to get them functioning Which is why they uh, continue to generate resources, but to get to level two you have to have everything has to be powered um, and uh, For some of the advanced plots like anything you don't start the classes you don't start out with locked I believe need power to function so if you find that your plot is not producing resources, it might be because it's unpowered. Uh, Alright. I don't think I... This is weird. I think this is the first time I'll have played this game in years without longer power lines installed. Um, so, lucky I got... I got lucky there with all the power being close enough. Although, I don't think I'm... I don't know if I'm going to rush to power everything. Kind of want to just wait for municipal plots just to show you guys the, the power gameplay. But... Um, I did do it on this one, so this guy can level up. So that, and I think level two building materials is what's required. Are you powered up? Uh, no, of course not. This one is, is one of these? Yeah, you are, okay, cool. Uh, I think level two building materials is required for uh, organic materials to unlock, which is the next tier industrial stuff. All right, so I think I have enough residential, because, uh, yep, the little meter on the left there. So 
Um, I almost forgot about that. If you aren't, you, if you don't see these meters on the left side of your screen, grab HUD framework. That's what allows those to exist. The, those meters are provided by by uh, SS2, but it requires HUD framework to pull off, and that is available on Xbox. Uh, all right, let's see. We need some water because that's making our people sad. So we are gonna have to do some vanilla water action here because. We got a ways to go before we get to municipal. We can go without power, but we're not going to go this long without water. Um, so let's go build. Uh, this, these things are most efficient, so we'll do these. And there's plenty of water over here to pump. Oh, I'm in god mode still. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> not worried. Not worried about balance right now. Um, all right, we'll probably two of them should probably do. We'll go ahead and. Build up some generators. Let's give you guys. Let's do a large one, sure. We are cheating our butts off, and that's okay. Oh, there we go. We unlocked Walter Residential. Didn't mean to click it away so quick. Alright, that hit our water needs. Water is required for agricultural to upgrade, so now those can upgrade when they need to. Um, defense is also a requirement for upgrading, and we will get, thanks to uh, uh, the 1.10 patch, we will get access to an early version of a defense plot next time we talk to uh, Jake. So we'll have uh, something we can do there. So that's another thing we introduced in the, the, the last pre-2.0 patch, so that a lot of you guys have already seen this thing. Um, so there we go. So we got this thing, this place on its way. Happiness is still going down. Is there anything we can do about that? Um, oh, I know what we can do about that. We are going to turn off the stupid shelter bug. Um, so this is something with Workshop Framework. Um, one of my goals was to make sure it's super framework like. So it doesn't, so it adds in a lot of capabilities, but it even though there are some options I would like to have turned on by default, I choose not to because I don't want the gameplay to alter from vanilla in any way with Workshop Framework installed. Um, and so I recommend everybody come in here and turn on a couple of things. So I'm actually going to turn on um, the power grid, auto repair and auto destroy. Um, now, a lot of people had problems with this, and so now that's why they're off now. Uh, but I'm going to turn this on because I don't want a power grid corruption to mess with my save file. Now, I've had people tell me that their whole grid gets destroyed. And uh, I hope to happen that to happen. Like, anytime I can get a bug you guys are talking about that I have previously been able to replicate, if I get it to happen in my own saves, it makes it way easier for me to make a fix. Um, so I'm going to turn those on. And then I also want to turn off shelter. Um, so we're going to go under settlement gameplay. So the shelter mechanic in Fallout 4 is just broken. It's just implicitly broken. Um, always has been. And the shelter mechanic basically says... If a bed does not have a roof tile over it, then uh, it's the bed doesn't count effectively. Um, it'll when it, it comes to calculating happiness, and so uh, the calculation to determine if something's under a roof only works while you're in the settlement. So if something causes an update to happen remotely, uh, and the the beds will all not detect their roofs, so they will start to not count. And then you just get massive happiness tanks for no apparent reason. So turning off the shelter mechanic basically says just skip the shelter check when doing uh, happiness calculations. So turning that off, you will find your happiness to be way more stable in your saves. All right, so we're going to do a save LP day two uh, turned on power grid uh, auto repair. Because with so many people having issues with that, I would really... I'm a little nervous about turning it on, but it's important that I hit these bugs in my own thing. And worst case scenario, I gotta wire up this one settlement again, and it's not the end of the world because this is uh, this is probably the only one I'm gonna build by hand. The rest of them I'm just gonna use city plans for. All right, so now let's head over and do some super mutant action. Um, let's see, where's my quest? Here we go. All right, now we're gonna fast travel as far as we can. Actually, let me see here. Kurt, I'm looking at what time it is because I want to save enough time for Q and A at the end. It's not that I'm not I might do the super mutant tomorrow. I think let me let me pass time here. We're gonna do pass time. Actually, no, we'll go set game hour to ten again and see if that's enough I'd to really trigger. I really like it if we could improve things around here. Nicer homes, more places. Wasn't enough, so we'll do pass time. Pass time is basically like a wait command you can do from console without having to sit on a chair. Um, I just want to get the next quest to trigger from Jake, so he should contact us. 
Because I would rather advance the main story than that side quest stuff right now. It's more important we get through the main quest. The so, But what I was saying earlier is the super mutant thing he sends you to do, once you get into the room where the quest objective is taken, you don't just guns blaze. Unless you really hate super mutants and you want to kill them. To go work. talk to them. It's, that a, kind of thing. it's a fun little kind of, You can still change your mind and gun them all down after the fact, but... The, uh, the voice actors were solid for that. It was really cool. To, to, it's always fun to get Super Mutant characters because they are really hard to voice for people. And so when we find people with the talent to do it, I'd love to uh, showcase that. Uh, where are we at with this? Did that trigger yet? It must be a 48-hour timer because this has been... All right, we'll just do another full 24. I don't think our plots are going to upgrade because our defense is uh, garbage right now. I'll also warn you guys... Uh, Aggressively using uh, pastime commands can can cause some issues with. Uh, there we go. Jake's private secret frequency time. found. Oh, speaking of Jake's private frequency, we reuse that a lot during our quest line, and I've had a, quite a few people report that the for a couple of quests, not either it's playing the wrong scene, like it's playing one from an older quest, or it's playing nothing. And so I changed a bunch of stuff to try and alleviate that in the latest patch. And it's, now it does it every time you start up if you have got that those quests running, even if um, even if you didn't have the problem, just because I'm so tired of it uh, breaking for everybody. Like I don't know what causes it because it's. Problem. Oh, I guess I should have done a Since city planet red rocket. Although I don't have any settlers there, I could send somebody from somewhere. But I guess we, let's not let's not tempt the fates with the triangle of death. If you guys haven't heard that phrase, um, when you're in red rocket in particular, the uh, red rocket Abernathy farm and sanctuary are all loaded into memory simultaneously, and it can wreak havoc on the engine. So building up all three is uh, is risky. This has been a pre-recorded message. There we go. Well, well, well. Message repeats. So well, well, well got a whole bunch of edits um, between the 1.10 patch and Chapter 2. It got like a ton of changes to it, um, which was uh, interesting to do. It was like, uh, fortunately, it was one of our quests that tended to work fairly well, unlike uh, Hub of the Problem, which is the quest after this, which still to this day, people find ways to break it. Um, but uh, yeah, going back and like messing with a quest like this was, uh, was frightening, but... Um, was kind of cool because I like a lot of the improvements we made. So here's the first one. The there Another is a new character. Like but are you certain about the church? The sure, Blessed why not? Father teaches I mean, us about like anyone else's unit. Like it. Oh, may the Lord bless <laughs> He started you doing guys. an idol line in the middle of that scene. This <laughs> okay, is the, some then. of the Bethesda's well, just, uh, let me know if you need anything. automatic stuff that you have to like that you are forced to set up. It's so <laughs> stupid. With the like the, like, like all, all idle dialogue and hello lines. Should just automatically be disabled if a character is in a scene talking to somebody. That should be on, like, why do we have to manually rig with that, mess with that? Why do I have to bug report that now? Uh, all right, who was that? Who was that again? Huh? Oh, you mean the fellow I was talking to? That's Edmund. Met him on the road from Olivia. Some kind of traveling preacher, I think. Nice guy. Help me move the crate back. So if you hadn't play, or if you'd played yes, SS2 Chapter so 1 before this came out, we didn't really explain how the hell Jake got that now. massive thing here by himself. Um, so that was a, a little bit of a retcon. I'm never afraid of retconning when we're doing this because until we get to the full story complete, like the full, the whole quest line's done and everything, we, we consider this all kind of an alpha state. We're just, uh, or, uh, we'll say it's a, uh, it's like an early access is, uh, we're, we're fleshing it out, trying to get it there. And, and the, the definitive story will, will be there when we are done patching this mod in however many years that takes to get everything done. Um, let's see here. Uh, how are, how are things? things going? Not bad, not bad. As you can see by the crate, I managed to get the comm hub back. And if you had oh, completed easy, chapter you. one before you installed chapter you two, like you you would not have seen um, Edmund. He, but he will when you load up chapter two. I think he automatically spawns like immediately if it detected that your save is already that far. Um, and then like there's there'll be a couple of moments in quest dialogue where it's like doesn't make any sense to you because you have no idea who Edmund is but we were we figured it, it was for most people they would just be like oh I don't remember who that is and they just move on because it wasn't really important who it was it was more just like a, a reference for people who play through all the content to catch and for people who played over again always thinking about in the long term many of us who play Bethesda games tend to we'll take long breaks come back play through a whole playthrough and so we'll re-experiencing it all from the beginning anyway so it was kind of a a, uh, a sacrifice to that of just making sure that those new playthroughs are smooth and it all feels interconnected. I'll take a look. Sure. All right, follow me. 
I thought he was just gonna bug out there and just stare at me. Sometimes the responsiveness on these AI scenes is there it is. is uh, Ain't she a beaut? It's tough Although to swallow not as, as the developer. We, we just, no matter what we do, we can't in get fact, it to go any more realistic looking. But I think that that's also but become part of the charm the of Bethesda over. games. Got a rough understanding um, of the heart, that little man. that little bit of wonk in there in the delay time in animations or people just kind of staring off in the wrong direction when they're talking to you, stuff like that has become kind of the charm of it. Like it's, it's one of the identifying features where I could identify a Bethesda game a mile away just from watching an NPC interaction. <laughs> I'm hoping it, I, I bet we still get some of that in Starfield too. Like it'll be this beautiful, like the graphics look incredible from what they've shown us in the previews. And then it'll still be some of the same wonky, like NPCs talking to you backwards and stuff. Uh, all right. Go ahead. I'm listening. Well, judging by the internals, this thing mostly appears to be a giant processor. My guess is that it operates as a kind of ASAM switchboard, connecting and communicating with the sensors. Which makes sense, really. I mean, it is called the comm hub. Now, if we could get sensors connected and communicating, that really would open up our options. Let us do some cool things. All right, I'm seeing a lot more King Gath pings. Um, for those guys who missed it, just because of my my uh, ten tendency to fail at multitasking, I'm just largely ignoring chat. I glance at it occasionally to see if there's super chats. Um, but I'm going to do full Q&A uh, in about probably 20, 30 minutes, um, where all I'm going to do is just engage with you guys. And if it gets to a lull where I'm not seeing a lot of questions in, I will scroll back through all of our chat for tonight and look for at King Gath pings. So you have two options. Uh, you can, if you have a question, I would highly recommend you at King Gath in, in there so that I see it because it highlights it in my chat in orange so I can see it really clearly. Uh, or just wait until we go to Q&A and post your questions then because then I'll just be trying to real time engage in chat. Uh, but right now I'm just focused on the game because I am really bad at, at doing two things at once, which is why we get in these moments where I'm talking and I can't even push buttons on, on my controller. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, for example, remote management, mass software updates, division of settlement labor, and the obvious So there's one, one thing a lot of with the comm hub um, now, to you, that, last thing may that not sound like much, uh, I think Sir Rick is disappointed in me about, or probably do, maybe he doesn't even want. know and he's going to hear it for so the first time now. Uh, a lot of the talk hub about running. the comm hub really was, to the you com know, how much of it is just story versus how much of it has an actual impact on gameplay. And we had a lot of things in mind of how it could actually impact gameplay, and it doesn't always match up with what Jake's saying. Like, for example, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard him talk about how there's a limited range to the comm hub and everything. Um, and a lot of that stuff's just not true, mostly because of gameplay reasons. Like, we didn't want to, like, force everybody to play with the same small group of settlements. Some people just want to play differently. Um, so a lot of it is flavor. It's uh, with zero, like, minimal to no gameplay impact whatsoever, other than unlocking plot types and whatnot. Uh, we've talked about some other stuff of, like, maybe as you upgrade the com hub, it increases upgrade speeds. And I don't think any of that. I think there's, like, hooks for that in our code, and none of it ever got implemented. Sorry, Sir Rick. Uh, but a lot. So if any of you guys are ever worried about Jake talking about you can only do it in limited range, it's just flavor. You can actually build anywhere. Uh, let's see here. Give, Give me, me the details. details. You gotta understand, things aren't like what they were in your time. In the Commonwealth these days, reliable intercommunication really doesn't exist. It's held a lot of things back, including settlements. The better the communication we can get within and between our settlements, the better it will be for everyone. I'm on board. When do we start? In order to get things going, first, we need to turn this thing on. And for that, we're gonna need some serious power. And I'm afraid my little generator just ain't gonna cut it. However, as luck would have it, just a couple of feet below us is all the power we could need. Really? Concord has a municipal plutonium well. Probably used to power every building in town. To get some real power flowing again, all you need to do is turn it on. That is, if you wouldn't mind helping out. <laughs> do it yourself. I'm on it. It's as good as done. <laughs> I knew you'd help. You'll have to discover a way into the old service tunnels running under Concord. Once you're down there, find something that looks like a big old generator. Do what you need to start it up, then head on back. Okay. All right. So I think at this point... That's the moment in the quest where you can actually talk to. So I've I've been talking to people on uh, in a couple of forum threads about the about Edmund, our the pastor that moves in here. So there's some people are saying the intro conversation is broken. So hopefully I run into that. So then I can just use this save to fix it. 
Um, but I think it's after that point, after Jake sends you the platinum, well, then you can go talk to him. But it might be after you restore the well. I don't know. I'm going to save here and then try it because I want to make sure that intro conversation works. Because uh, for those of you guys who, if you've seen screenshots or some of the videos, like I think in my last news video, I have a little video clip of what the church looks like when he rebuilds it or it rebuilds it, air quotes. We have limitations of how we can rebuild in um, exterior areas. So if you see that we've done some wonky building for like some of the CPD stuff and whatnot where we don't do a full re re repair, it's just because we're trying not to break the nav mesh or the pre-combined. There's, so there's heavy re uh, limitations about what we can actually do in exterior cells without adding gigabytes worth of, uh, of space and massive mod conflicts. Um, Anyway, the uh, the in order to trigger the church to upgrade, you have to have this introductory conversation with Edmund. So if it's broken, then it needs to get fixed. Otherwise, a lot of you guys are never going to see a lot of the content in Concord. So we're going to go LP, day two, pre-Edmund convo. So we're going to see if this works here. If it doesn't, I'll come back after I complete. Well, 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 whoa. So the Blessed Fathers. I think it's working, though. Because that the blessed is his... So the Blessed Fathers... Him working on his... Uh, said, one of his... Say? Uh, oh, God, I can't even hello. think of church words, my and I was church a lot in my I childhood. I seem to have lost track of where I was. We're kind of sermon. There we go. The two of us have formerly met. My name is Edmund Callum. Yeah. So this is the intro conversation. So this should happen to you as long as you go through Jake's initial bit about the com hub. Anytime after that, you should be able to talk to Edmund and get this conversation. If you don't, and you're on PC, please head to the forums and send me a save file with that issue because I would love to dig in and find out why it's broken for some folks. Uh, what did you say? Ah, apologies. You stumbled upon me while I was reciting one of my sermons. Tell me, are you a religious sort? It depends on the circumstances. Ah, I see. A few of your sort have come through before. People who consider faith a last resort. I'll tell you now so you won't need to learn it later. It requires a bit more effort than that. We can discuss this another time, perhaps. I must return to my duties. But before I let you go, Jake says you're the one to go to when things need doing, so to speak. I don't like running errands. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look no, at his weird hair like on that. the right side of his head. I guess, well, base. left side of the Since screen. The not on the screen, but his right side. Here. Anyway, the hair is like there's a like gap in it. And what's weird is I think that's a vanilla hat. So that And that's vanilla hair. So this is just like a weird Bethesda quirk uh, as opposed to something we did. Maybe we did it. Maybe we screwed up with the... Because I, I I lose track of who which parts of our character costumes are custom versus which parts are um, default. So we try and do a lot of mashup outfits. Like that's they don't take up a ton of file space and they they make it a character stand out. So we try to do a ton of outfit mashups and so most of our characters have them. Um, and I, I but I don't know which parts. So sometimes it's the hat. Sometimes it's like the, sometimes the hat's vanilla and the body's unique or or whatnot. So I don't know what's going on there. But his hair looks really weird. There's more to this, isn't there? Well, you see. I've been walking the wasteland for a long time now. I've done my best to spread the gospel of the Blessed Father. I listen to the problems of the people and I try to help as many as I can. It has earned me a number of grateful souls. I can So for those of you guys flock. who I have, have not more experienced uh, I can this tell yet, you, spoiler alert, whole lot of uh, about what I'm going to talk to. So you can find uh, Edmund talks a lot about uh, church stuff. And so for some people, I know that's a turn off. There's some people who are like super anti-religion, which is uh, that's fine for, for everybody, whatever you whatever you feel. Uh, but if you actually dig into his character, he's actually kind of a shady guy and is actually using the, the confessions to uh, make himself some money, um, which is... It's not outright said, but there's a lot of implied about that. Like if you look around his house after the church is built up or you or you ask all his dialogue options or you pay attention to what he's saying when he responds to you in quests, he's like, it's it's very clear he's taking confessions and uh, and using them to blackmail people or sell the information to the Ron, stuff like that. Um, so I love this character, even though he's uh, he, he can come off. like It seems it's hard to straddle that line of like making him seem like he's a legitimate pastor who's helping people um, and showing this like CD nature. And we also want you to hate him. We don't want you to be like, oh, this guy's a scumbag man, messing with people. So we had to make it real subtle. But I think a lot of people missed it, um, unless especially for those of you who don't have the church built. So you didn't get a chance to go poke around in his quarters. What's your story? Oh, my background is not important, my child. My story begins as it does for so many. When I found the word of the Blessed Father, the man I was before just wasn't cutting it. Finding the Bible, spreading his message, it changed my life and the lives of countless others. The Lord made me an offer I could not refuse. 
Once it becomes known amongst my flock that I have found a safe church here in which to hold my sermons, many of them will most likely make their way here as well. Any idea how many we're talking about? No more than a handful, I would imagine. It will be for the betterment of us all. Lord Wait, I will. think the original. So I, I mentioned thing. this earlier I in my stream, but for those guys didn't catch it, uh, a lot of the characters, in, or all the characters in Concord, I think oh, maybe there was one that's no. new, but like I think almost every one of them came from some around. character pitches when a bunch of writers did of back things. in 2017 when we were around. when I first started recruiting people, and the idea of the character was a pastor who was an information broker who got his information from confession, but we couldn't do another information broker because we have the run in the main quest so the, a lot of the, the, the character pitches that we worked that with happen to be lying um, about. didn't know the, car the writers were working independent of our main story team water, so they didn't know what was going on yet so we had to like good thing to think manipulate some like a lot of characters got their names saying. changed because of that where they overlapped with the names of some of our main characters but I remember that was that was kind of the pitch and then we toned it down and pushed him more toward the he's an actual pastor and actually helping people and has people because we didn't want him to be like a total scumbag it was just like uh, and I think it plays out if you play through all of the Concord quest lines you see that He's he's still trying to help people. Like even in the 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 little background stuff, you get out of him. We'll we'll do it. Later. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to do all the Concord quests. But there's a quest, quest with a character named Caleb that also involves Edmund, um, and you start to see some of how he's using that information for general good. Um, but you know, everybody's got to make their coin, however they do so. Um, Thanks. Thanks. I always appreciate good advice, and I always appreciate a chance to give it. You really should come by sometimes and catch a sermon or two. Even if you aren't a believer, I'm sure you will find something of use out of them. And if you don't mind me being a little selfish, it would be a so, great thing. So uh, I just see a show hide pop up. So on my chat, whenever I get this, this little pop up, whenever it says show hide, it means somebody posted a message well. that triggered one of YouTube's I will filters. You know Apparently the word Go kill my triggers Thanks, it. Um, so Mythor, your message, uh, YouTube does not like it. Just Blessed an FYI. Father, assure us. All right, let's head to the community board here. Uh, let's see. Is that on a miscellaneous? And we've got attend one of his sermons, which we can't do that until after he builds up the church. I think it takes 48 hours. So after the end of that conversation, 48 hours later, this church will be all built up, and then we'll attend the sermons. Uh, it's getting right around 9 p.m. Okay, we'll take that. Um, now, some people have mentioned that the sa there's another... So, like, that doesn't... That didn't clear... The community board there's supposed to be another note that appears right away and okay good i got this bug so i'm gonna put this here um so the, another character is actually supposed to appear almost immediately with edmund but maybe it's after well 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 but uh, there's a character named brannigan who shows up right away too and he his there should be a note about him looking for help up there um so i'm gonna see save lp day two no brannigan note and we'll test again after we complete um, Jake's quest here and see if maybe it appears after that or maybe after we fast travel the area and come back because the that community board will check to see if there's anything it should be adding to it every time the area loads up um, all right let's head down in here and do well 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 This feels so natural here. Like, man, props to Business Vulture, our level designer. Like, I, this feels like it's always been here. So when I play without the mod and this door is not here, it's weird. <laughs> it's just, I mean, obviously, like, it, it would be, this is awkward to have, like, a step into this. But, like, it just looks like it, it could belong there. Um, all right, heading on in here. For some reason, that door doesn't make sound. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure that's a vanilla door. It doesn't make any sound. Like a vanilla door model. So it should have the sound baked into the record. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I picked up a double barrel shotgun. Although now, I should probably. This is a good spot for pipe pistol because if you take the right path through here, I think you only have, you only have to fight um, uh, red roaches. I think there's there are a couple, there's actually some um, what do you call them? Uh, there's mole rats and mire lurks in here, but uh, I found depending on where you walk, you don't actually ever trigger their their uh, them to pop up. So I think. And do we need any of this stuff? Nope. I'm not going to bother with your musket because I'm terrible with that weapon. Uh, 
else here? Oh yeah, there's there's yeah. more brushes. Yeah. And we go through here, but I think yeah, there's a couple of actually one of the things that I keep bugging uh, uh, one of the level designers about. I brought it up a couple times, and I think he's got too much stuff going on to have time to to go back and edit old work he's done. But I always thought it would be really cool at the end of this quest when you restore the power, um, if the sound of the generator cause like a uh, an ambush of Meyer lurks to come attack the player and just scare the piss out of them. Um, now, well, now I've spoiled that, so any of you guys, if that ever happens, you guys will expect it. But uh, I always thought that would have been a cool thing. And I think I saw somebody. This, I think, and I, I will give the credit to where it's due. The per, the idea, the time I had that idea was after watching a streamer where they're like, "Uh oh, something bad's about to happen." Something bad's about to happen, and I was like, "Yes, that was. That's like, why didn't we do that? A total missed opportunity. We should have had." Uh, we should have had a big attack happen from the the sound uh, of the of this thing starting back up. And I, maybe we'll do it one day. Maybe that'll be a, a 3.0 patch. We'll sneak that in and see if anybody remembers this stream. And that's the kind of stuff I love with backfilling content of like it's throwing surprises at people. You know, they're so used to it playing out one way, and it's like, oh, that what did that happen last time I played this? That's it. See, I'm addicted to loot. You see this? I can't I can't help myself. All right, so I well I don't so normally if you do this and you click this it says find out and then you can read the terminal and it kind of gives you hints. I think I can just skip all that and just do this directly. Oh good, I finally got rid of the animation. So there was this uh, really there's a kick animation, uh, but it turned out it didn't work with the player. <laughs> and so, like we had it in there for the longest time and it would just bug out the camera. Um, all right, and then we can push the button. There we go. Well on. See, and like right there, as the well's coming up, you hear that sound. If like all of a sudden you just started hearing <laughs> with the Meyer Lurks coming out, I thought that would be really funny um, to just catch people off guard. All right, let's see if we fix this bug over here with the door. I know for a little while, yep, cool. For a little while there was a double door there. Um, from, uh, cause we come back down here in one of the chapter two quests, spoiler alert. I guess I did that backwards. Oops, I'm still, so I just saw somebody say, you're still in God mode. Ha, oopsie, I do that all the time. I love being, I, I actually should uh, just turn on Workshop Plus free build mode. Oh, there's a Myler, oh, that's in, oh God. You're so armored for my garbage weapon. Yeah, we're just gonna run away from you. I'll let dog meat take that fight on. Up we go. Okay, so I think this is a, so this right here, right here where we're getting, this load screen should not take this long. Um, so I think there's an auto save happening in the background. Um, like, but that load screen should have taken away last time. So I think that, and that's where I was able to trick, I was able to uh, get that to happen. The auto saves happening really long, you know, save that had no plots in it before where it was like, okay, that changed my perspective on what the problem is likely with the long saves. I don't think it has, anything to do with the scripting or the plots of the settlements. I think it's something right in the plugin or some something related or maybe with the BA2 file, something like where it's trying to write data that it can't. It's struggling to write some data. I also learned about save files a bit with a long save. Sorry if, I'm, if any of you guys are bored by this technical stuff. I find this stuff fascinating. Um, the the way file, save files are written, it only has to write stuff that changed in the game world or that's added new. So like if a new mod gets installed, it writes a bunch of stuff and it's all stored in the save file in the order you installed the mods. So like I was able to take some saves and look at that had, you know, three mods installed and then I and then all their stuff was in there and then I installed another mod and it puts that stuff right after it. Um, and so depending on the order you install mods, stuff gets saved to your save file in that order. It's not by any type of ID or by n alphabetical. That's all in order of when you installed it. And so, like that, started opening some some doors. It's uh, it's really, it's a really weird technical problem with this save file issue, which is why we haven't had a fix. Because it's it's like having to, you have to like puzzle out how all this low level technical stuff works with no manual. We have no we just have to like just look for examples and try and reverse engineer what the hell's going on. You should have all the power you need now. Yeah, I noticed. When the power came back, it blew out half the bulbs in here. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to replace those. But the important thing is, we now have power. Will it be enough? I don't know. 
Let's go find out. All right then. Let's try powering this thing up. Now let's see here. This is a scene um, that you can jack up really easily if you've got multiple companion okay. mods on. I've seen people with like come in here with like six companions yeah. and they're just all blocking Jake right. from getting there. Let's bypass this. I think we're ready to give this a go. Uh, best if you stand back. Oh yeah, forgot about that. Jesus, that made me jump. <laughs> Okay. I should have had it damage the player or exactly. send them flying too if they're st still flying. too close. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <clears throat> to be honest, I was kind of worried this might happen. I've been sitting around the news for so long, and so many of its parts have degraded. Seems even with enough power, there's no getting around. Blown out capacitors and pair of semiconductors. <laughs> Still's worth a try. So what now? Give me a day or two. Maybe I could swap out some of the busted parts. So I, I okay. So one thing that tubes. just ha one thing just happened there. I noticed. Uh, and now I'm gonna put this on my list to fix. So at the end of well, 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 wherever you exit out of, because there's three entrances to the to the place. No matter where you exit, you're supposed to appear over at the door where the death claw is, and it's supposed to play this really cool camera animation. That was something we patched one one zero. Clearly, I found a way for that not to work, and I just forgot about it. But that was, there's this really awesome camera animation where you get to hear the lights coming on. It was like ding ding ding. It's, it was just like this really cool moment to show because we wanted to highlight the fact that you actually turn on the power. There's street lights all over Concord that get turned on when you do that well, and it didn't happen, and that's a bummer. So I'm gonna go back and check. Uh, well, 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 I'm putting this on my personal to short term to do list. Don't mind me. I actually, I love, I love paper still, despite being a programmer. I, I like, I have, I keep, I have like stacks of index cards all over my desk, which is little notes of things I want to do. And then I'll periodically put them up on a board and organize them in priority and, uh, turn some of them into bug reports, but I love pen and paper to this day. Uh, well, 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 let's see. Um, what do we call this? Uh, cam anim didn't fire in LP. And I'll put used hardware store exit. Okay, back to that. So anyway, hopefully you guys got a it chance to experience enough. that because it was really cool. Neher did it for I know us. It may not seem really like awesome. it, but. This was a step forward. And you're okay? Sure. <coughs> I'm fine. <coughs> oh, wait. Before you go. Here. Take this. Hey, there we go. So this is another thing that got added in. So that camera animation I was talking about got added in. This got added in. Um, and it's a way, so there, there was always this uh, talk during development of like, when do we introduce the plots in a way that feels n nice in the story, but also lets players build reasonable settlements up fairly quickly. Um, and this was something I always felt like the three plot types wasn't quite enough, but there wasn't a great spot to inject another one of the plot types. And then now we're at a point where with this awkward point where we have all this story content recorded and we don't want to keep bugging the voice actors to come back and re-record little lines here and there. We prefer to do it in chunks all at once um, so that they can forget the pain <laughs> of how long it takes to actually record this stuff for us. Um, so we needed a solution of like, how can we get, uh, how can we get this, um, this gap filled of like three plot types is just not enough to build a functioning settlement. Um, because you need a lot of defense with SS2 installed. Like there's a lot of extra defense requirements when you start building plots. So this was our solution. Water and power, I feel like you can still get a reasonable amount in the early game for those types of plots uh, from just the vanilla items, but defense was pretty difficult to get a, enough without spamming just insane amounts of turrets. So this was our solution. Uh, and fortunately we were doing a lot of recording for the uh, for the trailers where we needed to tap Tom, Jake's voice actor, to help us out. Um, so he did this stuff for us too, recorded some extra lines for that patch, which was really awesome of him. So that we were able to add in this little extra content in the 111 patch and uh, After all the trouble we've had with Raiders, allow I players the ability to get their defense solved. So now we'll go to defense all of our defense. Probably not until next not session. I'm probably going to switch gears here to uh, Q&A in just a couple of minutes. Um, but I want to go check on the board and see if uh, Brannigan's note appeared. 
Or it's Brent. I'll go check Brennan's house and see if he should appears. at least deter attacks from some of the small fry. How does it work? Technically, it's just a creative use of an ASAM program with an industrial plot. But by making the changes listed on that piece of paper, the ASAM should be able to guide someone to build something a little more defensive. After that, it's just a matter of basic maintenance by whomever was assigned to it. Sounds good. I'm going to be busy with the comm hub for a while, so I won't have time to demonstrate. But I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out yourself. <laughs> and there's us covering up the fact Thanks that we didn't want to have to make a whole new quest I'll put out of a radio message again demoing that. News. Take care out there. All right, so now we should get a completion of well, well, well in a second. Let's go check the board over. Oh, I think I see another note. Donations are there. Waiting. It is okay, so it did work. Thought. So I think Brannigan appears after well, well, well is completed. So had we done that, this is the way it's supposed to fire it out. I, I honestly have not tested all the different paths through this, um, but if presumably if you talk to Edmund after well, 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 then there'll be two notes up here immediately. So once we do this. This is what triggers the check out the community board. So really what I need to do is make the check out the community board complete. If you grab any note off of that, I just need to tinker with that. But small, small little issue, probably not going to get fixed for a long time because uh, I have a million other things you guys would probably rather me focus on. All right. So we're going to do, I'm not going to do this quest today. I'm just going to show you guys. This is how Concord plays out. So um, the way the Concord characters go, there's two paths for them. If you're playing chapter one again, the characters are all tied. So if you started a game with chapter two installed and you haven't completed chapter one yet, or you haven't gotten past picking up the pieces. So if you're before that, or actually, no, I can't remember what it is. There's a quest, there's one of the quests in chapter one where if you haven't installed chapter two by the time you get to that quest, uh, it does it the other way. So the, if you, it may be a, if you haven't done well, well, well yet, that's what I think it is. Sorry, guys, I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, so if you installed chapter two before you complete well, 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 or before you start well, 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 then the Concord characters are all tied to the main quest line. So as you complete each of the main quests, uh, another Concord character will appear until you get the whole collection at the end of chapter one. Um, if instead you have come on with a, a, a uh, save that's already past that, past well, well, well in chapter one, then the characters are tied to each other. So then what happens is, uh, Edmund appears and Brannigan appears and then after you complete Brannigan's quest then the next character appears and then after you complete their quest the next one appears so that there's two ways you the Concord stuff can appear depending on um, whether your save file had finished chapter gotten to a certain point in chapter one or not when you install chapter two so any were you curious a little little inside dev info so we'll talk to this guy get this quest started up and then we're gonna shift gears to Q&A mode here but this was a good play session. I think we the if I had a hammer is this just like it had to happen. Like of course after I and put in the patch notes that I fixed it, and then let's play proves me a liar. That's just uh, perfect. <laughs> excuse me, you there? Might I trouble you for a moment of your time? Of course. What's up? Now I hate to ask a stranger for this, but I need a bit of a hand tracking down a few of my workers. You see now, me and my caravan moseyed on into the area a few days back now. Come up from Virginia in the wreckage of the late Great Virginia Caravan Company. But the death of my hard work, hopes, and the very foundation of myself as a man is neither here nor there. Right now, there's other things to worry about. Unfortunate to say, but most of my people didn't make it down the road. Good, good camera angle, Bobby Bethesda. The <laughs> some of the, I love this. I think the, the dialogue system is really cool, commonly. and the dynamic camera no, angles and stuff, but some of them are real the local bad. Area, but we got separated before Concord. If you could find them for me, I'd be So this quest, bad. I tried to fix a ton of bugs, but I saw, I think we already talked about this earlier in the stream, uh, but I already saw more reports about, nope, the bu those bug fixes didn't take either. One of the things that, uh, to remember with uh, when we're in hot fix season is the, um, I what I do is I'll make changes that I know are safe that won't break anything further. And then if I have a save file handy, I will test the anything more involved fixes. But otherwise, it's a lot of these are just we're just going out blind because I don't have we don't have the full dev cycle. That's why we go normally to a two week dev cycle, because then every patch I basically work on it for a week, give it to our testing team for a week. And then you guys then other people so other people will have seen it before we put it out in the wild. So just know the hot fixes. They, they should all have an asterisk next to them of like this probably fixed it. Um, I made changes that I knew wouldn't make things worse, but that's the best I can do for now. And we're trying to wrap it. We're pushing out patches every two or three days. 
What's in it for me? Besides my sincerest gratitudes? Well, I suppose I'd be willing to part with a handful of caps for a job well done. How does 50 sound? Mm. Oh, what's Let's in it for me? Take advantage of our right. charisma. Right. <laughs> we just reused the line, what's in it for me? <laughs> what's in it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but the answer's no. Uh, 70 is the highest. Lazy writing. Some, sometime, so I, I will say this about the, uh, the player dialogue. Um... Not all of the writers on our team have the patience of uh, of Sir Rick, who our lead writer, who will dig in deep to the player dialogue to try and avoid ever reusing lines, uh, and uh, I can I can understand that. Don't worry, I can help. Tell me what happened. Well, I thank you kindly. Not a lot of folks willing to help others out in these times. I won't forget this. Look, there's two of them. The first one got grabbed by a group of raiders near some big stone fortress we passed by. You'll probably need to crack a few heads to get him back. The second one got lost up by Natick. Old world town. Place is overrun with undesirables. If you can find them alive, then just tell them to meet me here in Concord. If you find them dead, I'd like you to bring me something back. Something I might be able to send their family later down the road. What do you mean about undesirables? A whole range of things set up in that area. Raiders, ghouls. Assortment of beasties of all makes. Even a few super mutants in the area. So, uh, good luck. All right. I'll find them. I can't thank you enough, stranger. And I won't forget this. Okay, so now I'm curious about something real quick before we go to Anita Banks. Okay, I don't know. I don't remember that. Ah. Once my folks are safe and sound, we can talk. Hey, cool. Then got so uh, this time. is one of the things where uh, I have this weird... I found that I had this weird habit in Bethesda games. And I, and I noticed on Let's Plays, everybody does it, of we all just talk to NPCs again immediately. And then we'll wander around. Any NPC we saw, even if we have no reason to talk to them, we'll just be like, well, maybe they got more dialogue for us. And we all go poke them. Uh, and that's something like we try to ask all the writers to make sure they think of well, like make sure you know if they give you an objective you that when you talk to them again they say something about it like they send you off on it uh, but sometimes it just gets forgotten it just doesn't get done or it get, doesn't get set up correctly because doing those idle dialogue and having them conditioned correctly is actually a, uh, a challenge of setting up Bobby a proper set of conditions wrapped up in conversation I was just curious if they heard about where's Bobby because that's who I want to talk to I want to see if we ever did some for him I don't remember I remember we we had to ask the voice actor for Bobby to re-record to record lines a bunch of times I felt really bad because uh, we just kept running into things where we just hadn't thought about prior where the hell did he go oh well okay so let's uh, save here this was a great session we uh, got a couple of bugs we we uh, made some progress in the main quest uh, LP day two uh, end of session and I didn't run into too many long saves so that's good so I think my save file my save time is starting to stabilize um, okay so now we're gonna go uh, we're gonna just hang out in sanctuary so that we're next to a settlement for the sake of answering questions. We're gonna move into Q&A mode. I can show you guys stuff about some of the technicals of the mod. Uh, so we'll just talk, whatever. I'll try and keep up with chat. And then if there's ever like a big lull, I will scroll all the way back to the beginning of chat and start answering anything anything with a ping in my name. Uh, but for now, let's go let's go real time. So, uh, but I wanna put this into, we're gonna set game hour to nice, 11 o'clock, we're gonna do force weather to be 52A, and we're gonna set our time scale to 0 0.1. So now we have, now we're locked in with a beautiful, beautiful sky, we can see everything. All right, let's uh, let's read the last thing here. Uh, let's see, John Geddes, Natick Banks is down Sometimes past Somerville Place on the southwestern here. side of the map. Oh, uh, this is another really another fun false. thing for me with um, chapter two. Since I didn't do all the quest dev myself, um, there's a lot of it I've never ever seen. Like I've never seen more than two or three scenes from uh, the Nightingale's quest line. I've seen almost nothing from CPD other than what's on Let's Plays, uh, and this is why there's no hot fixes for CPD yet because I I don't I've never touched I have no nothing about the quest line. So whenever people post bugs, I'm like I don't even know what quest that's in. Uh, so I've been waiting for um, the guys who worked on that quest line to uh, come back from their vacation basically i gave everybody on the team uh, so we, we work hardcore like most of there's a core group of us on the team where like we meet up uh 
uh, for a long for a long time we were meeting up every weekend. We'll switch over to biweekly meetings so that people can have the weekends for other stuff. Uh, but we'll meet constantly. We're working on this stuff almost every day, and I can tell a lot of folks on the team were getting a burnout. So we basically just told everybody like, let's all take a break for the whole rest of December. Um, I can't take breaks from anything. Like I, I get, like whenever my family and I go on vacation, I'm I'm good for about five days of a vacation, like a regular like for, you know take off work and go somewhere vacation. I'm good for about five days, and then I'm just jonesing to work on a project. Um, but uh, I know not everybody's like that. So a lot of the team is on break right now, and uh, CPD will get some love after that because I don't know anything about the quest line, and I'm excited to play it for the first time. You guys are going to see like authentic reactions to some of the quests. Uh, Concord's another one. I have uh, I have very limited experience with the Concord quests, so that's probably why I wasn't able to fully fix Brannigan's because I just was like spitballing it. Fortunately, the, there's less quests to choose from, so it's easier for me to take your reports and be like, oh, I know what quest they're talking about. Whereas CPD, CPD and the and the creation. Hold on, my headphones just went out. There we go. I really got to get this cable replaced. Problem: I have all these cables like strung around. I really need to just get some cable organization. I got cables all over by my feet, and so if I'm kicking them just by accident, or if I roll my chair over them, I think I jack them up. Uh, anyway, so with CPD, there's actually like 20 quest records or something, so I just don't know which ones to open half the time when people are posting bugs. Um, all right, BFD Survivor. How many chapters are planned for this? So we originally had... Uh, originally we had zero chapters planned for it. It was going to be all one mod. And then when we realized the scope of the work we had planned, like when we did the whole outline for the thing, we're like, this is, this is insane. This is going to take us six or seven years to do. So then we started broke. So we broke up into the chapter idea. Um, and then we had, we started going down this path. We were working with, uh, another writer and, um, uh, we, we changed a lot of the story. We realized we were missing some direction in the early part of the mod. We didn't have a clear enemy. Uh, at all and so we reworked the gunners into it and then once we got the gunners in and then conqueror came to be later in development so we had written this whole quest line then conqueror came out as kind of a side project for me uh, but then realized that like no those gameplay mechanics are awesome and they actually work really well with the direction we we're taking that the ss2 story was going like let's find a way to incorporate them so we rewrote a lot of the uh, a lot of that story and so then when we got into the chapter mode before, so we went, to the, we went to this idea of chapters before Conqueror came out. Uh, but then after Conqueror came out, we started doing major rewrites. Uh, we went from four chapters in our original design now to we're on three chapters. Um, so the story's gonna be a little bit smaller than we wanted, but it's also attainable. Whereas like the fourth chapter we had was crazy ambitious. Also, it was gonna have this insane ending that might have felt like jumping the shark. Like in the, what's funny about Fallout's humor and stuff and the way they do things is you really can't, technically you can't really jump the shark in Fallout. Like there's such weird, bizarre stuff, but I feel like you can when it comes to mods because people are eyeing them with a little bit more, um, like with a magnifying glass of like looking for flaws of like, oh, mod, you know, mods can't possibly be as good as, you know, the, the base game stuff. And so like whenever you try and take liberties with things, it gets, I think people take issue with it a little more. Um, like when you're breaking canon, cause it's like, oh, this is super immersive, even though, you know, Bethesda does so totally weird out there stuff all the time. Um, so that was one thing where we, we were like, eh, you know, I'm still on the fence of whether we could get away with this idea we had planned. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about it cause maybe we will do it one day just because, um, and uh, the uh, the other side of it is that our story has taken a pretty grounded approach. Like we don't have a lot of we don't really have any wacky moments. Other than I think there's a few in some of our side quests, but in our main quest line, it's pretty grounded. Like we try and keep everything pretty pretty believable. Um, so our fourth chapter is not going to happen, and our chapter three takes it in such a uh, our chapter three is actually going to incorporate if we get to do everything we want. It's going to incorporate a lot of the ideas that we're going to lead into our chapter four. So it'll feel, but it's going to feel complete. I think chapter three is going to take us, it's going to nicely tie up the arc. It's going to tie in uh, the conqueror mechanics in a way that feels natural from this point you started at. Like this is the, the tough part about this whole project. And like, I have such, such, I have so much respect for uh, Sir Rick's writing on that and his tolerance of the changes that I keep throwing at him and then changing in directions. Um, but uh, of uh, taking... The, the third chapter and, and where we've gone for those of you guys who haven't completed chapter two i am going to drop a lot of spoilers so if you haven't played through chapter two you might want to tune out um and i'm not just talking about this moment i'm talking throughout the rest of this q a i'm not like at this point you guys had the mod for a few weeks you've had plenty of time to play through it and i, I know it's playable all the way through i've gotten lots of reports of people playing it all the way through so if you're if you're mad at me because there's a bug stopping you from going through i apologize but i know it's possible it just might be tricky anyway um back on target um so three chapters is the plan 
And we have a fourth chapter like in the pocket that I don't know if it's going to happen just because I, I, I'm, I'm 99% certain it's not going to happen because a lot of people who are key to the project are ready to move on. They're just like, they want to do other things and this takes up a lot of time. And then um, a lot of our voice actors are going pro or are already pro. So getting them pro bono like we do is not something we can maintain forever. Like at some point, they're just going to want to be able to not commit the hundreds of hours it takes to record all their lines, especially some of the main characters. Like obviously Jake's voice actor, he's pro, but I think he's going to go like full on. He's going to go. He's got to go big time at some point here. Uh, and then asking him to come back and do this mod, I'll just feel like an idiot. Uh, okay, that was a long answer, but ch three chapters is what we got planned. So the next one should wrap up the story tightly and get, get all, all the me the gameplay mechanics we're missing from Conqueror built in into the story in a way that feels natural and feels like you earned it. Uh, all right, uh, Josh Hafemeister. Edmund wasn't there for well, 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 but he he was there after Quest completed. Can't talk to him. Brannigan works fine. Should I be concerned? Um... I would I would love to look at that save file if you're if you're on PC and can head to the forums there's uh, you can you can DM me a, a link to your .fos save file just post it on a Google Drive and share it publicly um, I'd love to look at that and see how the hell that happens because you'll just miss out on a little bit of content if Edmund's not talking to him talking to you uh, let's see here uh, James May is just curious are you using agile sprints uh, or a Kanban style of dev I would say we're stupid headphones uh we're closest to agile sprints um but not really it's really loose because we don't we're not like nobody's getting paid for this like we're not nobody these aren't employees everybody i tell everybody to take their personal lives first um so it's really like this is like when we when we originally played out the production schedule for chapter two we were going to release this in april this is this is how crazy things can go off the rails now some of that um, that derailing comes from unrealistic expectations. Like that was some of it. Like we were just like, I, I, in my head, I thought we could pull that off, but I, um, you know, made some dumb assumptions and, uh, and then when, you know, like the main story wasn't completely done until even after that. So like, like as far as writing is concerned, like writing out all the dialogue, cause it takes a lot longer than w when you're writing where you have to, you have to work within what's available from vanilla dialogue like we want the voice protagonist to work naturally in this and also we don't want it to sound repetitive or we don't want it to feel like you were reusing voice files and and ham fisting them in so it takes a long time to write this stuff um so our our dev style the the clo like agile and our agile sprints are kind of like for major content for patches or for um, for the expansion releases are the, are what we're sprinting toward. But again, it's just the personal lives have to come first. It's not like we have full-time developers on this. Like I'm the closest to a full-time developer on this, um, it, with the amount of time I put in on it. And, uh, I do not put in, you know, 40 hour work week on this. Some, some weeks I'll put in more than that. Like I bet in the last, uh, at like in October, I was probably putting in like 60 hours a week on this, which is way too much. Um, but you know, we wanted to get, we wanted to make sure we we uh, delivered something cool for you guys. Uh, let's see, uh, Mister, any advice for finding coding modders to try and team up with and get on the modding from the writing end? That's hard, man, because like, so writing, writing unfortunately is something that everybody can do, and I know not, and a lot of us suck at it. Like, I'm not a great writer. Um, but everybody can do it, so everybody thinks like, oh, I don't need a writer. And there's also, you have to worry about the the fact of feeling like, people don't like idea men. So um, if you were to ever reach out to a modder, like if you send them like, hey, I got this great idea for a mod, they're gonna roll their eyes at you and be like, so does everyone else. Like ideas are a dime a dozen. Um, what's really valuable is actually implementation. So I would say, if you want to team up with people, you need to go build something yourself. It is very easy to make stuff in the creation kit. There are tons of tutorials on making quest mods. I've got a couple of them for doing real basic quests. Um, and like all of our writers now know how to do basics in the CK. It's, you know, it's just, there's a learning curve, but there's so many people to walk through. You need to like be able to produce too. Like writing uh, is time consuming. It's valuable. And like a good writer is, is, is worth their, worth their weight. But proving that you're a good writer is difficult. Um, and I think the best way to get your foot in the door to get a team and get help is to just go build something and prove it. So that's, that would be my advice is you need to go make a mod. Um, and it's, it's totally feasible to do. You don't need scripting knowledge like there, and there's so much help available. I mean, we have a forum, uh, available for help, but we also have a private discord. So our developer discord, where we dev some settlements to and can communicate, we let anybody come on there who's working on mods. 
Um, it was originally designed to let add-on pack authors come and pick our brains and get information, but now just anybody who's interested in learning to mod, you can get onto our, pri onto our development Discord. Uh, you just have to go to our, sign up on our forums, and if you, if you dig around there, and we, we intentionally don't make it easy to get on there, we want you to have to read. Like, if you're not the type of person willing to read a little bit on a forum, you're not going to make it as a mod author anyway. Um, so if you want to figure it out, go, go to our forums and dig around a little bit. You'll find it, you'll find it relatively quickly as long as you're willing to read the things that pop up. Um, and you basically have to find this spot to make a post and someone will send you an invite. So it's not hard. It just requires a little reading. Um, all right, let's see here. Jet, uh, when preparing for the gunner base assault, could you make it possible to recruit Sickle and his supermutants to join the fight since they're part of the clan? Um, the people that I know we've talked about had, there's a couple other people we want you to be able to recruit and we might backfill that content. I don't think Sickle has ever come up with that conversation, but if Sir Rick is watching, um, Sir Rick, there's a request for Sickle and company to be recruited for the battle. So like, that's one of those things where we can go infinitely deep with that. Like we can keep adding more cause it's does, it doesn't take a lot of time to add that into the dev. And I'm pretty sure Sag who does it who did all the quest implementation for that for that battle. I think he's got it hooked up in a way where it's pretty easy to tag in more factions and stuff, which would be pretty cool. Cause like the, the more people you can bring, the just more epic it feels and the more tied together it feels. Like that's one of the big payoff tie-ins in chapter two for the main quest line. Um, we're gonna hope, we, we plan on having a lot more tie-ins for chapter three to feel more payoff for how far you've made it into the main quest and whatnot. But um, we also wanted to start tying in some of our own, which is why like, so, you can bring, you can get assistance from the CPD and Nightingales as well during that battle if you haven't, if you've done their quest lines first. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bruno, hello. Uh, let's see here, Valerie, talking about this cable organization. This man lives dangerously. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm breaking a lot of stuff. Ursa Polaris, how are you? Haven't seen you in ages. Um, Ursa was one of our uh, settlement designers back in uh, Rise of the Commonwealth. Um, Ursa, I got that uh, that teddy bear that you sent for my kid. Uh, he has now passed it on to his brother, and they love it. Thank you. Um, let's see. Whatever happened to that guy who bugged the forums for a week about insisting us who should turn Call of Duty but with aliens? <laughs> I have no idea. I think I missed that one. Uh, Z Games is the final faction, the Zaytans. I just took the plaza while watching you play, and I need answers. I don't engage in games much anymore, but you're a moderate leader, man. That's awesome. Um, I cannot tell you who the, the, the final faction is. That will I don't even know if we actually reveal that in the story, or if it's one of those things that's like just always insinuated on until chapter three. I really don't know. Um, that's the type of thing where like. I know who the I know who the final the faction you're referring to is like I know who the gunners are talking about but I don't know where Sirik is taking it or how much of the information he's going to deliver to you guys because we also we got to walk the line of um, if this is another like of those things I talked about earlier about jumping the shark and like people put off put mods under more scrutiny if like we we make too many assumptions or break too much of vanilla lore then people get angry so like I think there's we're, we're walking a line there. Um, but I don't. I'm, I'm so not sure if that gets how that gets revealed to you, or how much of it gets revealed in the in chapter three. We'll find out, and when we start doing story meetings, which will be starting probably next month. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and if if you guys don't know, uh, I am trying to read all of this chat, but my eyes are quickly drawn to anything that uh, pings me with that King Gath. So if you're if you want to make sure I answer a question, try and remember to put at King Gath. Uh, uh, El Trulo, do you think Jammer and Jake's paths ever crossed? So we did a lot of discussion about could we do a crossover with Conqueror? Um, and for the spoiler alert, for those of you guys who haven't played through that, Aiden is involved in both quest lines. For our quest line, he helps you. For Jammer's quest line, he's the main antagonist. Um, and so that created a massive problem for us. And that was, I injected that problems. Like I, start, we had a, when we were planning out chapter two, um, we knew we always needed a security character and that was going to be important for, um, important for HQ because of the, the department system and everything. And uh, we had originally written this character and the writer who wrote that character left the project. And so Sir Rick wasn't in love with him. And it was like, so I said like, what if we slot, what do we make Aiden work in that slot? Like his voice actor is phenomenal. Um, I, I love working with the guy and um, it could be cool to have, you know, see the other side of like, okay, this guy, cause like at, when you're playing Jammer's Quest line, you're the bad guy um, in the sense of like from the world, you're playing the Raider side. And so, 
really, you know, any whoever your antagonist is is technically a good guy. So like it would be it would, it would fit in well. Um, but we had to make sure his personality still matched that, um, even if they don't pass. So we started having a lot of conversations. We realized that um, you could get technically, if we wanted to do a conqueror and SS2 crossover, you, we could get to a certain point where we forced you to make a decision, um, because you don't actually run into Aiden in Conqueror's quest line for for quite a while. For for to like, I think you get through the first third of it before you find out Aiden is even involved. Uh, and then there was talk of like, well, technically we could still have him involved in both stories, but there's a moment where you meet Aiden in Conqueror's story, where you meet him face to face. And at that moment, it would be really awkward if he didn't say, you know, like, let's say you played through all the chapters to quest line and he knew you, and then you meet him in the Conqueror quest line because you're doing that and he doesn't say anything. Like, wait, what are you doing here? Uh, and we're like, okay, that's like writing that and re-implementing it and getting all the voice recorded would be a nightmare, just a nightmare. Uh, and like if we had unlimited budget and development cycle, that's what we'd love to do. So our plan, what we have planned, and I don't know how much of this is going to come to fruition because we don't even know if we can port Conqueror Story forward right now. Uh, for a lot of reasons, I talked about this a lot last stream. If you were interested in Conqueror Story, go watch my last stream. I talk about, at the Q and A session. I talk about it several times. Um, but uh, um, I will say this: we have, you know, that scene I played in the uh, quest earlier tonight with the raiders we have dialogue and in a whole alternate and it's already recorded from jammer's voice actor glenn um we have a whole scene where jammer is the raider you're negotiating with so like we've already started setting up some crossover stuff but it's gonna be like there's gonna be a forced moment where you're forced to choose if we do it um and so we we kind of like put a pin in all that because we have a lot of issues with bringing the Conqueror story forward. Um, so I would love to do it. I hope we can do it. There's a chance, um, but uh, there are a lot of problems with it, which I've discussed many times, and I don't want to bore everybody who's watching all the streams with talking about it again. So um, so Jammer and Jake's paths crossing. I hope it happens. It will not be a full in-depth, like you can do like this, you know, try and do both quest lines to completion because of Aiden, um, because it would just be too awkward and require this nightmare. But we've got a lot of ideas on the table, but we're focused on right now of we need to get, I want to get the Conqueror mechanics brought forward to SS2 um, because I know a lot of you guys miss them. And um, we want to complete the chapter three story because, you know, voice actor availability can change and we don't want to be left unable to use a main character because the voice actor is busy with real life stuff. Um, so that's our focus on. And then, you know, whatever we do with Conqueror is going to depend on where everybody else on the team Who's, uh, who would be involved in that, where they're at. And it also will depend how quickly we get Chapter 3 developed. If we get it developed more quickly, then doing bringing Conquer forward becomes a little more realistic. Um, so, And then funding can also help. So like, also it might be like, uh, uh, with the right funding, maybe we can... Um, uh, I don't want to talk about that because it, uh, funding money opens up a Pandora's box with certain things that I don't, I'm not even going to get into right now. So we'll just change topics. Uh, I hope they cross. I don't know if they will. Uh, Candy Skull, last time you mentioned that Conqueror had an outline but had the Raider story outline been integrated into the Curtis Island or pretty much... Okay, well, that's just what I answered. Um, let's see. Oh, and I've talked about this before. My This YouTube chat is just just the worst for uh, reading through. It Like jumps all around when you scroll with the mouse wheel. Du, 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 du. All right, here we go. Um, when will SS3 come out? If you mean Chapter 3, it'll be sometime next year. If you mean actual SS3, I don't know. If S SS3, if it, if it exists ever, will not be Fallout 4. It will end up being like a different game or its own game or something like that. Um, let's see. Kloss, what will you do after the SS2 seasons? Do you have any idea? I've got a couple ideas of what I might like to do, but I can tell you one thing I'm going to take a break and do before I move on to any other mods or big projects is uh, I'm going to go spend a serious amount of time studying uh, machine learning for uh, automated development because there are a lot of things I know we could pull off with a small team to add some dynamic content um, if I just expand my tool set a little bit. So I need, I need to do that. It's been way too long since I've like picked up a new skill set that was useful outside of the modding scene um and that's a shame like it's not that's just me failing as a as a developer like I should be picking up new skills monthly um and I have been failing at that and so I need to like take a step back with all my free time and, and make sure I incorporate some learning time into my into my I mean, learning time for my career uh, into my uh into my schedule 
Uh, let's see, BFDs are right. There's a mod called Depravity. It's main areas in Concord. Do you know if it conflicts with this mod? It does conflict. Um, this is something I, uh, that I would like to resolve. Um, because I know not a lot of people are going to know about what I'm going to show you here. But if you go into the hollow tape, you can resolve this now. Like, we have a solution available for people to report it. But I am going to look into a better solution for people who have that mod installed where they don't have to do anything. Um, but for now, the option you have is under... It's not, it's not appearing yet. So once, if you're... Once the door, so we have a door that spawns, that goes into the Fallons in Concord. And that is the main location used by the mod Depravity. Um, and our door will conflict with that. And I think ours ends up the way it's, like, it's all, it's like luck on position. Like, I think with some of the other doors that we interfere with, like, sometimes you'll get the mod, the other mod door and sometimes you'll get ours. Uh, but anyway, with ours, I'm pretty sure ours ends up covering up theirs completely. And um, once that happens, in this section of the holotype I'm in, you'll see a new manual appear called Hijack. And you can turn off any SS2 door um, on the fly and turn it back on later. So basically, you can disable our cell, go do whatever mod quests or whatever, do their cell, and then come back to ours when you need to. Uh, this is not like an immersive solution, obviously, and it requires some kind of tribal knowledge, but it's available. So it was kind of like a people report. At least we have a, a tool for them to get to. What I would what I think we'll end up doing for depravity um, and gun for hire is because uh, those are the two I know offhand that we block like their main content. Uh, what I think we'll end up doing is detect if those mods are installed and then uh, shift our stuff and shift our door to an alternate location that will be. Um, so I think with with uh, gun for hire, it's blocked by the nightingales with the nightingales. It really doesn't matter where our door was. It was just like we just didn't find out that we blocked gun for hire until way late in development. And then it was like, all right, well, now that that might break a bunch of AI and stuff. Um, so we really don't care what building we're in for them. It just needed to be close to Diamond City so we could shift that over. In fact, there's already a patch out that does that somebody put out, which was cool. But we if we incorporate that as a uh, automated track we would need to make sure it doesn't break our ai and everything so that's just would require a little bit of extra work so that's why we haven't done it already um with depravity what i think we might do is have dylan and carnal which are the characters that occupy that we might just make th give them a little shop in an exterior cell somewhere where we just like you don't get all the fancy interior design and stuff because we need something that's not going to take up a bunch of our time because we want to keep moving on chapter three um so we might do something like pick one of the buildings we haven't used yet and just have them path to there and just spawn a few little items so it just their shop will look like garbage compared to what they have now um, but that'll do enough so that people can still do the quest line and that we're not taking over uh, a building that's used by uh, another mod now i will say with depravity um uh, i don't want to sp i'll spoiler alert for those of you who know the ending of that mod has you destroying a, a one of the most important locations in chapter two um, and so it doesn't make sense to play the two simultaneously. And so I've always felt like people are going to have to like figure out like, okay, we can't, I can't do this as two story and depravity story. So if you're not doing our story, then the conflict never comes up anyway. So that's why it was kind of like, oh, it's one of those ones where I'm like, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I know a lot of people are, are, uh, are bummed whenever story mods conflict. So um, that one is is one uh, I'm hoping to have a solution for because I think that those are the only two ones where we block the core of their mod. I think everywhere else it's just like little stuff. Like I think there's been uh, some of the interior mods that add stuff. I think some of our uh, doorways mess with those. But I think that none of that is like quest content. So as far as I know, and, and I think somebody, I think there's one where we conflict with uh, Tales from the Commonwealth. I think we, I think one of our Nightingale, Nightingale locations uses one of the same spots as them that's another one where it really like we could just pick a different building it's not that big a deal um again we just can't do it quickly because we have to go check the ai and make sure that all the characters actually can still walk in um, but we'll we'll figure we'll figure out as we go we always have to this is one of the things like when i like i mentioned we've been developing this mod since 2017 we develop all this story stuff uh, and then the writers are picking locations and like to go try and be compatible with every mod is is going to be a nightmare and eventually it becomes impossible if we want to have interesting locations. Um, but when there are locations that's not important to us, like I said, that Nightingale warehouse, it's not that important. It's just an arbitrary choice. And we just, I told the writers to don't bother trying to install every quest mod and do it. Like we'll just, we'll figure it out later. We'll patch it later. 
Um, and then this hijack system is kind of a catch all to make sure that people who come to our forums or to our, or to wherever and say like, Hey, I can't get to this for this quest line. We can at least tell them there's a solution available to you right now. Uh, and we'll get something cleaner in later. That's kind of the, the approach I've been taking with this. Uh -huh. C3 excellent chapter two, two came out of super home to play updated the mod tried to and couldn't get it to start. Then a few days I realized there's an actual chapter two mod. Yeah, that happened. That's happened to a ton of people. Um, they were that now I did have a weird one. Somebody on our team, one of our 3d modelers, Hoxie can't even, even he checked and confirmed he has chapter two installed and still it's not starting for him. So I assume that there's another way that you can have this happen. Like maybe mod manager fails to copy over a BA2 file or something, but, um, yeah, that is a common story. I've heard Z3X. Let's see. When did stream start? I'm sure someone already answered that. Uh, is Beantown Interiors compatible with Chapter 2? I assume it is. Um, uh, there's probably some stuff that's overlapping in Concord, uh, but it wouldn't be hard to make a patch for that. Like, that's the other thing. Is like, it's, you know, it's we're, we're in this for the long haul. Like, we're going to be working on, uh, we'll be doing post-launch content for Chapter 2 for six months, and then um, there'll be a, a period where we disappear uh, to finish up Chapter 3. Uh, and then I, I don't know how much of the team will stick around after chapter three with me but i will be on board for doing uh, uh bug fixes and cleaning up stuff for probably a year after chapter three comes out so you know we're in no hurry we have plenty of time to do patches between now and then uh let's see uh have you thought about split up the chapter i'm gonna express can't play chapter because it's too big no there's no way we can like it's such a pain to split that stuff off it's like uh it would be I mean, hundreds of hours of work, just not, not gonna happen. Uh, we're already, I mean, the plan right now is, like once we get all three chapters, basically, if you wanted to play it on Xbox, it would be your entire load order, you'd have a few hundred kilobytes to work with for other small mods. Like that's what's gonna end up happening, just because it's so much space to do, the you know, to get it down the road. Now, um, for people who just want to do the systems of SS2, like I, I, you know, I did the story already once, I don't wanna do it again, but I would like to have, you know, city plans and easy, easy or plots and stuff to make my settlements look good. The, the plan long term, it's not going to be until after chapter 3, is for me to do a framework edition of SS2 for, uh, I, I mean, I would notice and I don't have to release this on PC as well, it was going to be for Xbox, but I can release it on both, a framework edition of SS2 where it guts all the story content, and it's just the systems, so it's just like all the, the code in the back end, uh, and then like the building plan or the building models for the plots, and that's pretty much it, so that'll cut the size of the mod down significantly. But that's like after we get everything else done before I can focus on that. Um, so yeah, if you want to play Chapter 2 on Xbox, you pretty much have to do a dedicated playthrough for it. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see here. Oh no, my thing jumped. Oh man, we just got spammed by a bunch of stripper stuff. What's going on there? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, my, my chat jumped again. Apologies, guys. My Whenever I scroll down on YouTube, and I'm going to complain about this constantly, occasionally the chat decides to jump and I lose my spot. I need to start highlighting stuff where I was just answering. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Any plans to expand the Concord Trade Caravan into something more? Pay for a convoy with higher investment, being a safer convoy for a few days. Um, Z Games, we have... T we've talked... Like, there's... There's infinite depth we could add to any particular thing um, in the mod, and I, th I th like after like dev chapter two took way longer than we anticipated. Uh, some of it was because just um, over like I was my expectations were were too high for what we could pull off in a in a certain amount of time, uh, based on the people we had available. Uh, but I, we've had many conversations about it already that we over we over scoped chapter two, and we need to focus our efforts for chapter three to focus more on. Um, the main quest characters, especially because if you make it to the end of chapter, you'll see we have kind of, we've got a nice cast of like core characters now. Um, is that we gotta focus on their stuff. So like, I don't think we're gonna dive in deeper on a lot of the side stuff anymore. Um, there will be some stuff we add some some more some more levels to because there's a couple people on the team who want who have some ideas of stuff to to enhance. But I I don't know that there's gonna be a lot more added to Concord. I think that that is kind of like that is what it is. Um, if somebody wanted to turn that, you know, on expanded on that, I could definitely connect them with the voice actor and he's, uh, he's a pretty awesome guy. I'm sure he'd be, he'd be up for doing more if the person uh, knew what they were doing with it. If somebody wanted to make a little add on pack expansion to it. Um, but that is not something we would be approaching in our, on our team. 
Uh, uh, uh. Let's see here. Let's see. Golden SW. If all the Fallout games were on the same engine and had the same modding cables, would you still just chosen to make SS for Fallout 4? Um, probably. I love Fallout 4. I'm not one of those people that uh, thinks that uh, the older games were superior. Uh, I think that there are some really great features in New Vegas um, and like a really interesting setting, but I think there's so many improvements in, in across the board in Fallout 4, not just in the engine, but just in the gameplay. Like the shooting gameplay is amazing. Um, I think the, I really like the new power armor. I don't like that it's everywhere. I like, I, I think that that's a common complaint for hardcore players is like, it was, it was cooler. Oh, excuse me. It was cooler in older games when, when uh, power armor was kind of unique and, and hard to find instead of just being everywhere. Um, but I, I like a lot of the, and I love like the fact that you get to actually fly in a vertebrae. There's just so many cool things they added to the game that even if the end, the older engines were capable of it, they, that those features wouldn't be there, um, without people adding them in. So like, I love Fallout 4. I think, um, uh, the, the biggest complaint, I think pe biggest complaints people have, I don't have about it. Like, I don't mind that, uh, there's a voice. I, I love that there's actual voice recognition. I shouldn't say I don't mind. I love it. I love the voice pro tag. I actually, I like when we, they clearly have moved back now with what they did with Fallout 76 dialogue system. And I think, um, I'm uh, like, whenever I play that, I miss this. I can see why it's not necessary for an RPG, but I really enjoyed it. Um, so like, yes, I would have still done it for Fallout 4. Uh, uh, uh. John Geddes. I think I pronounced it Geddes. I think I said that right. Um, what about just using artillery after completing Unger's quest? Just lay waste to the outside of Gunner Plaza before the big assault. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways we could have done it. And like, in retrospect, we started thinking like, oh, what if, what if we had, you teamed up with the Institute and they just teleport you right inside? Or what if the, you were at the BIS and you, uh, you know, you did like a vertebrate job on the roof. Like there's a lot of different ways we could do it, but it's some, it, it's just like development time it gets out of hand really quick when we start doing all these alternate paths through it. So we had to pick a path. We picked something that we thought was somewhat interesting and it explained away the, uh, the fact that we had to have like a nuclear death field around GNN to keep people out of there before the quest line. Um, uh, we had to do the boomers trick effectively from, uh, uh, which one was it? Was boomers in New Vegas or Fallout 3? Well, you guys know. Um, but anyway, so there's like a million different routes we could have gone with the, the GNN thing. Um, but we just had to pick one that we could inject to relatively easily because we, we I mean, uh, it's time. Like we just, we only have so much time to do all this stuff. Uh, uh, uh. Jammer is not a bad guy, Garbach. Uh, he actually, that is actually a, a thing we switched gears on, um, going back to Conqueror Dev. Uh, so when we first launched Conqueror, and I've told the story a million times, but I have to say it in order to tell the rest of this. When we first launched Conqueror, it was just supposed to be, Jammer was just supposed to be a fill-in for Shank, so that people could play the Nuka World rating right at the start of a game. We're like, uh, Nuka World rating combined with pre-build is so awesome. It feels so cool. And like, we don't we don't want people to have to go finish Nuka World to do that. So like, all right, we need our own shank. So we made up a shank. He's a scumbag character. And then we hit on a few things. And then like the, the writer of that Super Weevil asked if he could plant a few ideas to expand on the story maybe in the future. So like, there's the thing with the the briefcase you go have him that he has you get and uh, like we had some like we and I don't think we ever even resolved that in our outline, um, but it was like we had little plants and like he mentions uh, some character in a uh, a brown jacket and like basically just planting these little seeds of like oh if we want to expand the story we can and then when we started expanding the story we realized that like the scumbag raider is not relatable and would be too hard to tell an interesting story on so then we kind of turned it into. Uh, an anti-hero story. So you were going to have some character arc and he was going to become a, a likable character. So I, I think it actually starts out like scumbag raidery and I think that turned off a lot of players but in, in reality it, then it's it's more of like a, an anti-hero story and it he he will have a redemption arc of sorts and like not to full, he's not like not, not be a raider at the end of that story when we finish it or something but like it's a, a relatable character and yeah, I don't think he's a full-on bad guy. I think it's just, but he comes off that way when you first meet him. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm catch catching up with chat here. Let's see. Can we play chapter two without chapter one? You cannot. 
you can skip chapter one um, if you go in the hollow tape here. Like if you just want to jump right to the the gunner focused content, go to quest skipping, skip ahead. Um, and if you go, I guess I can. I'm not gonna actually commit to it, but I'll just show you the menu. Um, when you have chapter two installed, if you go all the way to the bottom, there's chapter two, and you can jump right to runners and gunners, which is the actual start. Disappearance of Jake Evans is on here because there's technically two copies of this quest, but I think if you select this from the menu, it still it it feels like it doesn't jump to chapter two, even though it technically does, because um, we actually had like a placeholder quest for Disappearance of Jake Evans in chapter one, just because we wanted uh, to post. Oh, I can't show it to you now because it's not on there. Oh, actually, yeah, I can because it's. No, no, I'm not that far. What am I talking about? I'm, this is my save where I'm on just past well, well, well. Uh, we wanted a, the ability to have the quest icon pop up and the objective saying, like, uh, stay tuned for chapter two or whatever. So, like, we just put in a temporary, and because we needed Aiden to talk to you. Uh, but we have, like, this little temporary placeholder quest that was most almost entirely put there so that we could show the uh, little uh, Vault Boy animation in the corner. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. Oscar Fry, since you have a Discord for modders, is it fine if I have an advertiser for, for fans of the mod? Um, uh, you can. I I can't be. I can't advertise it all. I don't want it to be seeming official because there are, especially uh, in today's climate, like and all the expectations of Discord of how much you have to like maintain it and keep it clean. There can never be a public SS server. I just do not have the bandwidth to deal with that. Um, there will never ever be one because I, it's just like it, the like Discord requires you to like keep all horrible stuff off, or you can get all your servers banned. It's like oh, that's just too much. I don't have time for that. And there's because there's so many there's so many horrible people who are just out there to like watch the world burn. <laughs> like, and so that's again that's why I mentioned earlier we have a a dev server that we let anybody on, but they have to be willing to be reasonable human beings they have to first read and figure out how to get there and ask nicely to get on there uh, because it's just again i don't there's there are like and i was that way too like like when i was a teenager i loved 4chan um and like that those people are out they just want to see what happens when they just throw throw shit at the world uh and they come on every server and there's no there's no avoiding it. they come onto our forums occasionally we gotta knock them down um, but I don't want that responsibility with Discord. So you can post it, you can manage it, but it can't be official or tied, or we can't advertise it for you. you we can't link it on the forums or anything, but you can. Uh, 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 let's see here. Uh, Archparn, have you ever thought about making a standalone game with gameplay of SS Conqueror SS2? Yeah, I've thought about it. I just know that the amount of work it will take will be astronomical. Um, and like, Getting, like not only would it take a lot of work to build the thing and build all the assets and all that, um, but also building an audience. So like I don't know how much um, like uh, the the number of people who have successfully made it from modder to successful game developer is very small, very small. Like the the one I, that comes to mind uh, who like, actually made it is Player Unknown, who did the um, I can't even remember the name of the original game, but tur turned his gameplay into. Uh, and to play around those battlegrounds up to uh, uh, PUBG, as we most most of us know it as. Like, uh, I don't know that my name has the same pull to like start up a new franchise and whatnot, because uh, you know Fallout 4 is a is a very popular game, but you know the modding community is is a is a tiny is a tiny amount of people. So I don't I don't know, um, and I also don't know nice if SS2's know gameplay loop is there, that great outside of Fallout. I don't know. Um, we would have to experiment with that and find out. So I've thought about it, but there's just so much work that would be involved and so much that has to go into it that, and because I'm at a point, I'm like. Um, you know, I've got a, I'm full into my life. Like, uh, I'm creeping up on 40 here, guys. Uh, I can't, like, make dramatic turns in my life, so I can't, like, quit my job and do that without, uh, having some hungry children. So it's, like, it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing for me to, to make a decision to do something like that. Um, did someone, did someone ban the bot? Because <laughs> that, that, I see a lot of love face X, XYVs. Uh, let's see here. Ryan Old Gaming. Uh, regarding HQ, is there a reason the main area inside GNN where they meet Mansfield... Is the reason why you can't clean that area up. You can after you get a little further in the quest line. So we needed to make sure. Oh man, the hammering, the hammering. Stop. Um, you can. You have to get a little further in the quest line, and then it happens um, that you get to, to clean that up. But we needed to make sure you didn't mess with that area until after a certain quest was completed. Oh no, I just lost my thing. Just jumped again. There, here we go. Okay, good thing I highlighted that time. 
Uh, John Smith will SS2 have a feature like Conqueror ever. Yep, I'm gonna, almost every Conqueror feature will be ported forward. The story probably won't right away, if at all, because of voice actor availability. And I do not want to, um, I don't want to port that forward without completing the story. For those of you who've played Conqueror, the story is un unfinished and just leaves at this awkward note. Like, there's, there's like not, it's not completed. Um, it like, ask, leaves you with more questions. Uh, Hold on a second. I just got a super chat pop up on my screen, and I don't see a message. Um, but uh, Z Orheimer, thank you for the very generous donation. Really appreciate it. Um, that is going to go right into the mod. We take all donations and try and make the mod better in whatever way we can, whether it's paying for uh, the costs that come up or adding new ideas of costs of like buying buying new cool equipment or software and stuff to help the dev team. So appreciate that. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as, uh, the Conqueror stuff, we're going to try and get all of those features you guys love in, although we're, some of them we're going to try and improve on. So there's a lot of, uh, one of them, I've, I've mentioned this before in these stream, these types of streams, so I'm okay revealing this, Ian. and it may not happen, I don't know, but one of the ideas that I've always loved with our new resource system, so we've now got this resource panel, right? It's like now that, now that there's this virtual resource system, it opens up the door to not just having necessarily a vassal system, but being able to do a raid, on a settlement where it's like you're like as another option for for those of you who like to play the bad guy of like let's just go beat up the settlers and take a bunch of their resources so then like rather than going to conquer a place to make it a vassal you go there beat them up and then you get to take a bunch of the resources back to your own settlement like stuff like that where we can add new gameplay elements that weren't possible in ss1 um so i we want to take a, a chance to add some of that stuff into so you so not only is most of the conqueror stuff going to get ported forward but hopefully a lot of it gets enhanced to do to new stuff that's in SS2 that wasn't in SS1. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see here. Uh, Jet, do you know if NPCs travel or follow up commander conflict with SS2? I don't see why they would. Um, I've used both of those mods in uh, an SS1 playthrough, and I can't think of anything they did that would mess with SS2. One thing with SS2, like, outside of you know, now are doors that are blocking some people. Like, everything in SS2, we have really strict rules on the team about how we develop. There's zero vanilla edits allowed. There are no one is allowed to, like, we can add stuff to the world, but nobody on the team is allowed to make an edit to to anything. The one, the one exception are some of the automatic edits. Like, you'll, if you go dig in, you'll see that there's a lot of vanilla records that we've touched, but none of them can break pre-combines, none of them change quests, none of them change the name of things. Like, we do use partial records as much as possible. Um, so SS2 and the SS1, I had the same dev like this almost should be compatible with almost everything just because like we, if we can't find a way to do it without editing vanilla stuff, we just don't do it. Um, and so that makes it just more naturally compatible with pretty much everything. Um, and again, there are exceptions to that and there are some things that'll be weird, but for the most part, you should be able to safely use most mods with, uh, with, with the ones that I'm in charge of. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, John Gettys, do you know when what location Tales from the Commonwealth conflicts with? So there's a uh, there's a location in the Nightingale's quest, and I can't remember what it is in Tales from the Commonwealth. I just remember reading a report about this, but there's uh, a quest in the either this is that the second Nightingale's quest or the fourth one. I think it's one of the even numbered ones. Uh, it has you go meet with a trading company in a warehouse, and that warehouse we chose is also a Tales from the Commonwealth location. I think it had something to do with robots, but I, I apologies, I don't remember what it was. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. Now I feel like I'm either either Oscar. Did you repost that same thing about Discord, or am I? Did I lose my spot in chat again? Oh, Valerie got got you, John. Robot clinic near Eagle Hill. Uh, let's see. Oh, you guys had a whole conversation about it. I'm late. I'm late to the party. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kyu Dong seems HQ is designed to be add-on friendly. Auto Maker's Toolkit gonna involve how to make. Uh, okay, so custom settler. Every settler can work with HQ automatically. The only thing that you might need to, they might want to do is uh, custom sellers having different dialogue related to HQ stuff. But we haven't even fully figured out the dialogue conditions because a lot of the stuff for, for HQ got put a pin put in it to be added post launch because we um, HQ got out of, got like feature creep to hell because man I realized how perfect a, when it was originally po proposed for 
the quest line. All HQ was going to be, it was going to be a pre-built place where maybe like some of this stuff appeared over time. Um, and it was going to be a way for us to have a place where we could do interesting dynamic conversation or interesting, not dynamic, scripted conversations between characters without having to worrying about players break them. So any of you guys who played Conqueror know what a mess that can be. If you build your settlement out too much, then a lot of our quest scenes can play horribly. The camera going all crazy, NPCs talking to each other from across the settlement because players can build whatever they want there. And it's like, all right, we need a location. We need, we're going to need a standardized location to do most of our quest scenes in the late game once we have our characters established and for chapter three because doing them in settlements is a nightmare. Uh, and then we started adding all this features onto HQ and then at the end it was like, okay, well now we're back into the similar territory of like this is effectively like a settlement. Players can do all sorts of stuff in here that can mess with it. Um, uh, so that's why we have a couple of rooms blocked off where you, where you have no building options because we needed those to make sure we have spots to have this, the, the scenes later on. Um, but yes, the HQ is going to be heavily add-on friendly. People can do new room designs. They can add new missions for the different departments. It's uh, it's going to be it's very add-on friendly. A lot of the de a lot of dev work went in to make sure that people can do a lot of stuff with HQ. Um, I'm really really excited to get the full HQ feature. Like I, to me, HQ could be its own game, um, and like that would be somewhere like you guys talking about. You know, would SS2 be cool as its own game? Like to me, HQ would be cool as its own game. Um, and that would actually be somewhere I focus. Now, it's probably hard to see that right now because it's it's very light on content, as, other than the building. Um, but, like, the, the stuff we have on paper for what we're going to do with it long term, I'm, I'm super hyped about. And, and add-on friendliness was a key, was key to that. Uh, we did some pretty major code redesigns to make it even more add-on friendly because that's really important to me. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. The letter W. What would it take to make automated vaults in SS2? Uh, if you mean like city plans for vaults, um, those some a lot of people have done those already for Vault 88. If you mean something else, I uh, you'll have to clarify your question and I can answer it again. So just tag me again if you got a better or another way to ask that or more details you want. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. New Vegas had the boomers. Thank you. Yeah, so I couldn't. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Uh, uh, man, I'm way behind on chat. Boomer, <laughs> that was that was ages ago. We talked about that. Uh, uh, Claws. Uh, will there be enclave mentions like enclave remnants? I don't think we do anything with enclave, but um, uh, uh, Sir Rick would be the would would be the one determining which old school factions we tie into we have a lot of rules now with writers about what they're allowed to reference because there were a lot of like so i have a why is this love face person back again how do we just let's see is there a hide user yeah hide user boom there's you guys at least won't see that person ever again um there's a, we have a lot of rules for the writers now on references and stuff because uh, a pet peeve of mine is people putting in in their mods too much fan servicey throwbacks to stuff that characters should not know about in this world or like that they wouldn't just mention offhanded to to somebody they barely know um it feels very very fake and uh, i'm not a fan of it so um it's anything we do with uh older factions is um it's there's a lot of rules on the writing team about it uh, the other thing is what the problem with the enclave or adding in a faction like that is the number of assets it would require we would have to like get permission for a bunch of assets and then that would bloat our file size even more so like enclave would be a real tough one so i don't think that that's happening um let's see warpig happy new year and thank you for the donation how happy new year to you too I really appreciate it um i'm actually really excited for for new year's eve this year we get we're doing my i got two little kids so we're doing like a 6 p.m uh new year's eve thing and uh we're going to some restaurant and stuff i'm really excited about it uh, but uh, that is neither here nor there. All right, Candied Skull, love the mod. Can't wait to see more of it. Thank you for the donation. Really appreciate it. Um, I uh, I'm excited to show you guys more of it. We actually I have like a on my I have a big whiteboard in my office and uh, I've got a list of post-launch things and there's like eight major things coming. I'm really excited to get them out to you guys. So it should be a fun a fun uh, patch cycle when we get back in the regular patches. Uh, let's see. John Smith, will the story branch out of the Commonwealth like Nuke World for Arbor? It will not. Um, we found out there are massive technical problems with including, when you're doing quest mods and you include Nuke World or Far Harbor, it creates this aw this awful set of problems that we are not interested in dealing with. Um, and any of the, the big mod teams that are doing um, 
full inclusion of all the DLC, uh, we'll have learned about those and, and have come up with some crazy solutions that I'm just not interested in dealing with. Uh, and, like, there's enough to deal with the combo. Like, we can tell enough of a story already uh, that we don't need to do, go mess with Nuka World or Far Harbor. And I think Far Harbor, like, Far Harbor doesn't need any, doesn't need anything added to it. Far Harbor is beautiful. Um, Nuka World has a lot of potential for it still, but um, I would say if we were going to tie in with that at all, we'd be more interested in doing that with Conqueror, which, like I've mentioned many times with Conqueror, Conqueror is in a weird state right now. Uh, let's see, J Silva, what will be the total size in gigabyte for three chapters? On Xbox, it's going to be probably like 1.9 gigabytes. On PC, oh god, I don't know how big it'll end up being. It's going to be massive. Because like we, we feel like we just kind of go unlimited with space. We put in whatever we want in uh, on PC because we just want to deliver something cool. So I don't really give anybody file size limitations with PC stuff. It, um, although there are, there is the, we always have to have this conversation. We have a mod called SS2 Extended. If you guys haven't found it, it's an optional mod on the Nexus page and it adds a bunch of additional content. It adds a lot of higher def, higher res textures and stuff. Um, some content we end up not putting in because we can't think of a way to put it in SS2 Extended. Um, and like the SS2 Extended is a way for us to add new content only for PC players. We figure we, that's not that mod's not available on Xbox. Um, it's an optional for those of you people who who just you know maybe are on potatoes and, or don't have a lot of you know got to pay money for your bandwidth. I know some of you guys are in places where unlimited bandwidth isn't a thing and you can't afford to be downloading, uh, or you just or it takes too long. Um, you can't afford to be downloading constant gigantic updates. Um, so a lot of stuff we want to push into this SS2 Extended mod, and uh, that that kind of lets us go crazy with file size and uh, it's not it's not like we're looking to bloat into this giant file size or like that's some some uh, badge of honor it's just a matter of uh, we're not limiting ourselves on file size if it's going to enhance our our story or anything uh, let's see oh uh, i lost my spot again all right here we go uh carvac anything that gives the raiders more content my want has always been to see them be more than just something you can kill they're humans too. You should be conflicted at killing them. And I think Bethesda wanted that too, because if you play the stealth route um, and you come on raiders, a lot of them are like, they have some like interesting idle dialogue where they're talking about like, oh, just one more score for my family and stuff like that. Like they're all talking about, it's like, oh, you know, you can see how like that's, uh, you know, it's not black and white for, for anything. But um, it's uh not everybody's interested in that content we found out with conquer that uh you know going full-on raider was a was a big turnoff for a lot of folks um so uh you know we got we we have i've mentioned this many times when i'm streaming and just just spitting my mind out there uh that there is a there's a minimum threshold where if we don't get a if we don't hit a minimum number of downloads for the amount of work this takes it's very upsetting um which is why there will never be a frank town versus ron town sequel uh or port because it's uh it's too depressing to see that few people downloading versus the number of hours it takes um but i i think conqueror uh i i love that story and i think there is enough of an audience and i think one of the cool things with incorporating aiden into chapter two is like if we told if we used him a lot in the marketing material for conqueror chap in ss2 it would make a lot of people try it it would be like oh aiden's in this too i like him like let me give that a go or they know uh you know like our you know like what we're capable of doing storytelling wise um but again conqueror in a weird state don't know if it's gonna get finished hope it does and uh and then you know you'll have a little bit of story showing some of the human humanity of some of the people who find themselves on the the raider side of things um, let's see. <laughs> Still flipping back through here. I'm almost caught up. I think we can scroll back to the beginning there and see what we can find. Although I bet a lot of people who posted back earlier in the in the stream are long gone. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Klaus. Okay, I get what you mean. But yeah, it's um, uh, I like I don't think Enclave was off limits to the side character writers. I just don't think any of the and I know I remember reading. Um, Enclave and a few of the pitches because we had them um, pitch a bunch of characters to us. I just don't think any of them made it past the idea phase. Um, like I think there were a lot of uh, um, a lot of characters that kind of got like 
halfway through development, like the writers started giving them the treatment and then they just bailed because, you know, it's a, it's a hobby. Some people have other stuff going on and they just can't commit the time required. Uh, does SS2 play, uh, LD, does SS2 play well with Nuka World rating? I don't know. I've never tried it, but, um, uh, we did a lot of, I, and it wasn't in my mind when we were building out SS2, but it will become a focus when we start on the, a lot of the chapter three mechanics. Cause the idea of a lot of chapter three mechanics were like, all right, let's take, uh, the Nuka World rating and let's dial it to 11. Let's like, let's really make it crazy. Uh, and so at some point, and presumably if we can, if it works well with, you know, the crazy amped up version of Nick World, it should work great with the basic Nick World. But I have not tried SS2 with Nick World. You have to ask others and see if they, what they feel about it. Um... <laughs> Mr. Sneak should have solved main quests already. I agree. Sneak is awesome. Sneak is so awesome. I already, uh, re he was so... Uh, with HQ, there's a lot of dialogue. So, like, if you have set, like, the goal there is to let you take all, you know, put all your set, all your favorite settlers there and all your favorite companions there. Like, we want that place to be able to support a ton of people. Like, I figured out, I cracked the code on multi-cell uh, settlements with HQ, and that's that's knowledge I'm happy to share out there. By the way, if anybody out there is a settlement maker, you like making customs, you want to make a custom interior settlement with multiple cells, I can tell you how to do it. It's pretty easy. Um, but uh, uh, the a lot of the NPCs, their idle dialogue and their hellos are all related to settlement stuff. And it's kind of awkward when they're talking about that stuff in HQ. So we have plans, and I don't know if they're going to come to fruition because it's just going to take a lot of work, um, is to reach out to all the old voice actors of the settlers that we'd have, which we've got like a lot. We've got like 50, 50 or 60 settlers, um, and ask them to record new lines for HQ. And some of them I know we're going to do it. Um, so others we won't, and uh, we'll see if we get to do all of them or not. Uh, well, obviously, I just said some of them we won't. So we won't get to all of them, but I'm hoping we can do a lot of them in Sneak. I already had the, vo I, the voice actor already recorded uh, Sneak's HQ lines because I love Sneak so much. He's so funny. Um, so he, he's 100% uh, going to be making a, a bigger... He'll, he'll be a cooler character in your HQ. Probably in... The, it'll either be... A lot of that stuff is like it's kind of unnecessary for the mod too, so it might be something we like try and stick an extended or something, because there's a lot of dialogue files that would just bloat for Xbox, um, and like, but I don't know how we're gonna do it yet, but I have the voice files already, just gotta figure out how we're gonna incorporate them. It's gonna be one of those projects um, that uh, somebody else on the team is gonna end up piloting, and uh, I haven't figured out the logistics of it, but I, like, the voice actor, uh, Ron Barkador, is, I, I love him, he's such a, I love his voice, uh, great voice actor, he's a real friendly guy, um, and actually, he actually uh, uh, is is geographically close to me, and uh, so we bonded over local local things we love. Um, so I I am in email communication with him, and I already already had him record Sneak's lines. So love Sneak as well. Let's see here. And let's see. Uh, Twenty twenty thirteen. Will the contest plans be put in group files like an SS one? Uh, yeah, there, we're gonna do something. Uh, with that eventually it, it's a real it's a real it was a real pain to do that for ss1 um and so we opted not to do it for ss2 because one of the people who was involved with that is uh a, a big is very important to the development cycle of the chapters so he doesn't have the bandwidth to do it um and the other person's got all their own big life stuff going on that um so i just don't want i wouldn't even ask them to do it so it's basically like a matter of uh of people having the available time to do it but we will do it in the long term i just don't know when it's going to happen so for now um we have everybody submitting their plans directly to nexus that was due to it wasn't necessarily because we wanted to make it easier on ourselves to get the plans out but we also wanted people who like to take the plan serious or take the contest seriously to be able to look at the plan themselves when they vote but for now we're just relying on that as the way to get those out and eventually we'll we'll, we'll get packs out of those we got to figure out the logistics of it though too because um, there's the script data limit issue in Fallout 4, which causes a lot of problems for folks, uh, especially who don't have access to F4SE. So we got to be careful about how we handle those. We haven't discussed it yet. Uh, Valerie Millward, whose idea was it to have an idle settler dialogue, uh, dialogue be sings wanderer badly? Because <laughs> that's that's me, relatable F. Um, I, I don't know... Uh, I could not tell you what that is. You would have to send me a video of what you're talking about because I don't know. Uh, if it's like some of the background dialogue, like you're hearing like all of the people talk in the background and they're not actual settlers as part of the soundscape, 
Um, that would be Dell, our, our sound engineer, uh, who creates a lot of the dynamic systems. Like he did, he's the designer of the, uh, he didn't write all the dialogue. For, he doesn't write the dialogue for any of that stuff. He gets uh, writers to do it, but that was, it was his brainchild. If that's what you're talking about, if it was an, if there's an actual settler that says, sings the wanderer badly somewhere, uh, you have to tell me which character. Uh, let's see. Uh, Marvelicious, so you're already working on chapter three, like letting your planning. We have the outline all done for it. We know what's happening in the story. Um, and it's just a matter, and then development, like actual, like post-production development will start probably end of January. Um, I gave the team, and this, it always sounds so weird to say, I gave the team the month off. It's like, it's not, you're not employees. Uh, but I told everybody on the team, like, go do, go find another hobby for the rest of December and I'll stop, I'll stop poking you for help all the time. Um, and then as the, uh, in January, I'm going to start chatting with everybody and get things rolling again. And we'll basically come up, we'll figure out who on the team wants to stick around where we need more help. Um, come up with an outline of what we want to do and then try and come up with like a rough production schedule, but which I've learned from chapter two is, uh, uh, it's very hard to come up with a reliable production schedule with everybody doing it as a hobby, uh, but we'll do the best we can. And, um, and then we'll start getting into development and it'll, it kind of like at the beginning of development, it's really slow. It's usually just cause there's not a lot of firm things of what we need done. Um, and then we're time we're simultaneously writing all the dialogue, developing all the quest systems. And then like, as we go and we start testing and things, we're like, oh, we should incorporate this back here. And then we got to roll back over. So there's a lot of like, it's a slow moving, you know, it's like building up a big snowball. Um, and then like toward the end, then all of a sudden everybody's busy and everybody's cramming and we got all this stuff going on. So it's a, it's a weird dev, dev cycle. And, um, I think it's the same dev cycle any uh, any game goes through. It's just ours is an accelerated version because we try and do some things simultaneously you wouldn't normally do uh, because we're we're trying to like, we want to get this stuff all out before Fallout 4 becomes irrelevant. Uh, let's see here. Jet, I want to thank you and everybody involved in this mod. I've been having a blast playing. Your hard work's appreciated. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, Carbach, I know what you're talking about. People want to see my more raider settlements, the more scrappy, messy stuff. With uh, do they get the downloads? They say my more minimum settlements get. Nope. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think people just want to look at pictures of raider stuff as opposed to actually do. It. There are there is a there is a good raider audience. I I do not uh, go a week without seeing a lot of. Uh, in fact, pretty much every one of my patch note videos, the, like one of the top comments is always conqueror for SS2 when. <laughs> so I know there, there is a there is a raider audience out there. Excuse me. Uh, Kloss, will there be encounters in the world from the settlements, like random encounters or patrols? I didn't play part two fully. Um, I don't th I don't think we have any random encounters. No, I think it's all. I think the the settlers, um, the unique settlers. If you have multiple settlements built up, you can find um, some of our unique settlers before you've recruited them patrolling or not patrolling. They'll be like wandering between them. Like they'll, you know, maybe they'll walk from Sanctuary to Starlight and then they'll hang out at Starlight for a couple days and then maybe they'll walk over to Ten Pines or whatever. Um, that's about the plus. And I think some of their conversations you can have with them out in the world. And there's a lot of quests. Like a lot of our settlers send you out on quests, but there's not like you're not going to stumble upon, you know, random encounters like, uh, you know, the guy wants to sell you a dog or anything. All right, Mr. Actual crew as opposed to, uh, let's see, what's the best way to give kudos to SS2 Settler side quest makers? Uh, some of them, uh, Sneak Odette, were in some combination hilarious or just good writing. Um, give kudos to those quest makers. So actually what's cool, all the side quests, um, after you complete them, they we actually pop up and tell you the voice actor and the quest writer in the... Um, uh, right in the uh, quest objectives. That was something that we ended up not doing in the main quest because um, Sirik asked us not to because he just felt like it was super unimmersive. But for all the side quests, we had so many different people involved, so many different writers. I wanted to give them props in the same way that we have the, um, you know, where you can go into the the building, the ASAM sensors and see who the building plan designer is. Like these things, this is one of those things that's like kind of a pain in the entertainment industry, you know, whether it be film or, or uh, uh, music or, games is that there's so many people involved but only you know one person gets only a small number of people really get the credit for the work um and uh and it's kind of a bummer and so like i've been trying to find ways to incorporate 
more people's names into stuff and like we came up you know i came up with this for ss1 even we had the plaque instead of this making sure the person's name who designed it is in there and then for the quests i want to do something similar so at the end of the objectives and then once you know that you can probably deduct what their forum name is and go post on the forums and tag them and and tell them that you loved their work um, and i'm sure they'll really appreciate it because uh, even if they aren't on the forum, or even better, and direct message them. Send them a because that'll email them. So like, I think pretty much all of our writers have forum accounts, whether or not they're active anymore. Like, they might not actively be on the forums anymore because most of our original writing team for SS2, outside of um, Sirik, uh, have moved on. But they still had forum accounts, and those are linked to their email addresses. So you could send them an email telling telling them how good their uh, quest was. Okay. Okay, uh, Valerie, singing Wanderer Badly is part of the soundscape. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was, um, so, uh, Dell is our sound designer who created it, and he worked with, who would have wrote the soundscape lines? I think it was, uh, someone named Alas, goes by Alas Insane online, but I, he would be able to confirm that. I don't know if Dell's around right now. He's in, uh, and he, he was here at the end of the last stream, so he might be around. I don't know, but he's probably got better stuff to do than want to listen to me ramble. Um, so, he, so he might not be around to tell you who it was. Uh, let's see here. Adrian, how do you feel about survival mode? I played Tepchu in survival mode. The Gunner's Plaza raid was insane. Good, good. That raid is supposed to be insane. Like, it's the, you know, it's the big climax of all the buildup to then. So uh, it's supposed to be really, really hard, and it's supposed to be rewarding for people who went through and did a lot of the, the recruitment to make sure you got help. Um, but, uh, as far as survival mode, I like the idea of it on paper, but whenever I actually play survival mode, I get really upset with a lot of the restrictions. Um, one is saving. I think the saving in beds is a cool idea, but if it, and if it were any other, if it was a stable game engine, I'd say it's an awesome idea. In fact, like games that have that as a limitation, I think they're great. In fact, like I used to love like the Resident Evil save system where you had to like find the, uh, the typewriter, uh, whatever it was called, the ink or whatever, to the ribbons to save. Like, that's a cool idea for a gameplay limitation. In Creation Engine, that's insane. You can't limit people's ability to save. You need to save constantly to avoid crashes or bugs. Um, so, like, that part I hate. Um, and I get really, and I think the reason, the one of the reasons I hate, or I, I get irritated with survival mode, like, I also love the no fast travel. I think that that's great. That's, like, one of the coolest additions to it is, like, Hey there, there's a long autosave. Um, like that lets you revisit a lot of the old locations, which is huge for SS2. Like that's just like awesome. Like we want you to come back and see your old settlements. Um, we even have changes outside of the world. Like we have Concord changing and then we're gonna have the world, like the world repop system, uh, I, I'm pretty sure is broken right now. I've seen some logs from our testers and like something I did along the line broke it between, I think it might've been broken since release, but I know we had it working at several points in testing. And I don't remember making any major changes to it, but it might have been like I made some change to some uh, to some adjacent system yes. that broke it. But anyway, so like having to walk back through all the old areas will make it more likely you're going to stumble upon, upon the world repop when I get that fixed. So um, there's a lot of parts I love about survival, but I think the thing I hate the most about survival is the um, the inventory system. I hate I've, I've talked about this a lot in the last uh, stream about how much I hate Bethesda's uh, inventory system. And you have to go in there all the time to like eat and use medicine. So it's like, don't make me do more of what I hate. I don't like the like I my my favorite in improvement to Fallout 4 over Fallout 3 in New Vegas is this. The, the fact that you don't have to open the inventory, you don't have to open the full, you don't have to get to this screen to mess with the inventory. You can just take stuff real quick. I loved that so much uh, because I hate, I've always hated uh, all the Fallout game inventory systems. Well, Fallout 3, Fallout in New Vegas, right. I and mean, the old games had their own system. But uh, yeah, I hate I hate the inventory system, and Survival Wood makes me do more inventory crap. Um, let's see. Uh, non personal one, what would you like to see in a Fallout 4 remaster? Um... I would like to see some of the um, the uh, the improvements they made. Like, I would basically like to see them take the uh, Fallout 76 engine and port Fallout 4 to it. That's what I'd like to see. Not because I want a bunch of people in my game. Like, it would be fun for co-op, but um, I like the draw distance stuff they've done to improve is really, really cool. Or, like, the distant weather systems are really cool. It would be fun to, like, look off in the distance and see the clouds, like, a sea of rad storm over there. Like, some of those would be really cool. Um... But yeah, I don't I don't know what I would want in a remaster really. Uh, I guess the cool a cool thing about a remaster would be they could renegotiate the amount of mod space they allow Xbox players. Like 
it's Fallout 4, they should have like a 10 gig reserve space or something. Because they gave, I think, 4 or 5 to Skyrim. And uh, Fallout 4 mods are so much bigger. We should have a huge... That would be the coolest thing for a remaster is they would be able to... It would be technically a new game. Um, and from what I understand is Bethesda has to negotiate with Microsoft how much reserve space do you want to put on your game. And I, and I don't know how that negotiation works or if it's even a negotiation. It might just be like, just tell them a number. I don't know how that works, but it, a new game would give them a new opportunity to pick a different number than two gigs, which isn't enough. Uh, uh, uh. John get as long as some settlements is thankful for will never become relevant. I don't think you appreciate that. Um, it, I, I, I think if we're, even without some settlements, I think you're right that all, like all these games, like people are still playing fallout, the old fallouts, like fall, people still play fallout two or I don't know how many people play fallout one anymore. That game was a little clunky and that time limit on there was, was a little painful. Um, but yeah, people play these games for a long, long time, but it's a, there's this, there's this, um, the, there's this weird thing with the internet points, like the number of downloads. You would think as an artist it shouldn't matter, but then I, and whenever I propose the question to any artist of who puts out a mod or puts out a creation out there, it's like if if only if you put in you know a thousand hours into this and only one person liked it, would you be happy about that? And everybody says no. So there's always there is some minimum number of uh, appreciation you have to get before you're will, in order to continue wanting to create. Um, and so like at some point the audience count will be small enough where it will it will be hard to justify the amount of time we put in from an inspiration standpoint like you know i'm sure like for, there are some people on the team who are just totally motivated by the creativity don't pay attention a lot to that but i think it's fewer it's very few um if if i'm even right there if there's even any i think most of us there's a little bit of draw of you know we got to get a certain amount of uh recognition and, and that can come in the form of you know nice comments and nice messages but uh, sometimes it's just nice to see those big download numbers and know that like, oh, I created something that 200,000 people saw or a million people saw or whatever. Like there's something, there's something to that. Uh, and that diminishes over time. And we saw, we can see that in our download numbers. Like we can see how many people download each patch and like how it just like goes down, 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 down. Uh, and I'm sure the same thing could be, will happen. Like SS2 obviously has substantially less downloads than SS1 because it has less time on the shelf, but I guarantee you in the long term. Um, SS1 is always going to have more downloads than SS2 just because of the timing of when it came out versus how many people were actually actively playing Fallout 4. The audience number has declined dramatically. Uh, and that's just going to continue to happen, especially after Starfield comes out and then eventually Tez 6 and then one day the Fallout 5 um, is that every time one of those games comes out, a little more of the audience chips away. Uh, Beowulf, will the Raider be part of the Sim Settlements 2? Um, if you mean the rate, if you mean the raider quest line from Conqueror, no. If you mean the raiding functionality, uh, well, I should I, I should uh, go back on that. It it won't be a part of SS2 proper. If we do the story stuff, it'll be its own mod that'll just become a story mod. But the raiding mechanics will be part of Chapter 3's or the 3.0 release. It'll be baked right into SS2 proper. So technically, you will be able to do. Um, I, I should I should put a, a asterisk on this. Unless something goes wrong, there could be technical limitations that prevent this. But the plan is all of the Conqueror raiding mechanics and the you know the thing that lets people do add-on packs to add factions or whatever, which we're going to do that a lot differently. I know there was a lot of problems with the faction packs um, in uh, in Conqueror, and we can discuss that at length if you guys want to. Um, but uh, the raiding part code will be in the 3.0 patch of SS2, so people will be able to do that with just SS2 core installed. We'll be able to actually do the raiding stuff. Oscar Fry, how much cash would I have to give in order to you to make Sirik an NPC companion for us as two? <laughs> um, well, he's kind of already is because he is actually he started on the team as a voice actor. Um, I'm trying to think of who. So my favorite character he voices is Mr. Hansy. If you've had the pleasure of doing the ventilator quest line. Um, but he's he actually does a lot of voices in uh, SS2 already. So you can if you go look on the um, on our credits page on if you go to wiki.simsettlements2.com and scroll down toward the bottom on the left, there's a link to credits. And if you search for Sirik, you'll see him as a all the characters he's voiced in the mod. He's been voicing characters since SS1, so he's voiced stuff in SS1, Conqueror, Chapter One, and Chapter Two. Uh, uh, uh. All right, Anthony, uh, hello, was thinking of starting a new playthrough and I'm on Xbox Series X and was wondering, what would you recommend I get, SS1 3-in-1 or SS2? Um, 
So right now, performance-wise, because of the save file issue, SS1 would be more performant. If that save file issue went away, SS2 is far more performant. The, the, the reason that SS2 actually exists um, wasn't because of all the story content and stuff, but it was because uh, I needed to rewrite all the code from scratch because SS1's code is kind of held together with duct tape. Um, but if you're looking for all the story content, SS1 has almost none of it. It has a couple of quests that are you can dig in and find if you do build, if you get real deep into the Industrial Revolution um, system. But otherwise, there's virtually no story content. But if that's all you're looking for, um, that's available. But SS2 also has a lot more gameplay mechanics. So, you know, it's SS1 is still working good. Um, I haven't seen a major bug report for it in, in quite a while. Like, there are some issues with it still, and there's some rough edges that'll probably never get fixed because I've mo largely moved on. I'm happy if anybody still plays SS1 and has some major bug that, you know, they know for a fact, like they can confirm happens with just SS1 installed and it's not a mod conflict. I'm happy to go fix it and release a patch. Um, it just hasn't, it hasn't met, it hasn't landed on my desk yet. Like, it might be out there, just, but like, I do not have time to keep up with all the forums. I, I do spurts of it, like I, uh, for like the week, the two weeks after release, I was keeping up with the help section, but I've fallen behind already. Uh, but I definitely don't have time to go back and keep an eye on the SS1 forum. So I kind of wait for people to bring it to my attention or close to me. There's a handful of uh, handful of people in the community who have proven they know how to do proper um, isolation checks to make sure the problem is with with our mod and not. A conflict um, or a save file issue and so like those people I kind of rely on to direct major problems to me because I just don't have time to chase every um, potential issue that you know might turn out to be a conflict or a save file issue uh -uh. can you please add a pet dog meat option to SS2 <laughs> I mean there's the uh, there's a mod that adds that um, I think we have a pet option for our custom dogs that we have from the pet store, from the small dogs, but it's unreliable as hell because there are serious limitations to what you can do with the animation system in Fallout 4. That's what I want in a Fallout 4 remaster. Somebody asked that earlier. I can't remember who. Um, but uh, I would like to see them open up the uh, open up the animation system a little more and allow us to do more custom things because there's a lot of limitations about what we can do behavior-wise where we have like really cool ideas and then when we implement them, they're super jank because of these limitations. Neher can talk all about that, about how many brick walls he's run into because we don't have the ability to fully edit everything that we want. And so like just weird stuff happens. Like the amount of time that was required to do that cutscene in Runners and Gunners um, thank you, Nihir, for putting in those hours because uh, what a pain in the butt to get all that to work. Uh, oh, I broke the ability to pet Cola. That's a Oh, you know what? I wonder if it has to do with um, me fixing the, the barking. So, like, it was always meant that the dogs would bark when you talked to them, and that was never working, and I fixed that with 2.0, and I, maybe that broke the pet. That's going on the list of the things to fix. Let's see. Pet Cola broken I'll, I'll, I'll get that fixed got a pet little cola especially for those of you guys who have made it far enough into chapter two to know what happens gotta be able to pet poor poor little cola uh let's see uh, let's see john getty six years and seven thousand one hundred and seventy one point eight hours later and it's still one of my favorite games uh, no, Dustus won so much one time I almost joined your team, 3D artists. Oh, um, the uh, uh, that's a lot of hours. I probably have you beat, but it's fake. Like I have a lot of hours where I just left the game running to test something, so like my hours are probably higher. But that's insane. If that's all active playtime, man, that's your hardcore. Um, we actually do. I think we have an opening right now for 3D artists because we we have a few that we work with, um, but. Uh, Two of them are college students, and so they have much bigger fish to fry than making 3D models for us. And then um, the uh, the others, it's something like they uh, they have other stuff. Like uh, Niher can do 3D modeling, but usually we overload him with animation work, so doesn't have a lot of time for that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think we have an opening for 3D model right now. Just uh, just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, Let's see, clause. Will there be new laws in the options? Yeah, laws is one of those sections where like I have like inklings of ideas and I want to expand on it, but we get caught up with all the other stuff and then it creates so many balance issues that it's never like I even had it in the SS1 holotape, and it's one of those things where I've just uh 
I've never pulled the trigger on expanding that section because there's just so much other stuff going on. So it's one of those things where I like, I hope to add one day, uncertain if it'll ever happen. Um, so it's just kind of sitting there for a spot to mess with taxes right now. Uh, choo choo. Yes. Thank you for the reminder. Nukes when, um, uncertain, it's uncertain uh, when that's going to happen. Like that will feel great with a, um, with chapter three. Uh, but, um, it has not, it's not been put on the board yet. It's, uh, it's, it's living in your memory <laughs> as a, to remind me periodically. Um, but yeah, we have like, I, I think my, my primary focus on, on everything we're doing right now is to make sure that we don't have a repeat of the conquer situation. I don't want to leave you guys with a story that just ends with a blah or that doesn't end at all. Rather, that's what happened to conquer. It's just like, Oh, that was an interesting content patch waiting for the next one. Next one never comes. Um, I don't want to end up in that situation. So like all, all my focus, um, or, or one of my, one of the most important things to me, I didn't say all my focus cause obviously I got other stuff that's not related to this, but one of the most important things to me is, is finishing Jake's story. So like that's, uh, everything else is secondary to that. Um, we'll fill in what we can where it makes sense, but that's the number one priority. Uh, nukes, the nuke, and if you guys don't know what Choo Choo's talking about, there was a stream a long time ago where I talked about uh, how I wanted to do, I, I thought I could do the 76 style nuking from a plot and have like an ICBM fly out of a plot and, and go hit a target. And I, I know I can do it from a technical standpoint. It'd just be complicated and to make it look good would be hard, would be difficult. Um, and so, like, just finding the time to put the hours. And, excuse me, has is, is not happened yet. Um, but I also, like, when you see what we have planned for Chapter 3, there's a point in there that will fit so well in where, like, that will be the time I'd approach it if I'm going to do it. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, Colton Watchin. Howdy, King. On Xbox One, I want to start a new playthrough. This is due in Chapter 2. Every time I try to download, it says, Operation cannot be completed. Should wait for a new update. Okay. So, here's something for Xbox players. So... There's this weird period when I push an update where the you cannot update the mod and some of you can't even download it. Um, it's really a pain in the butt. I've talked to those about it many times. They don't have a great solution for me. Their solution right now is I can email them and ask them to force an update on it. And that just feels like, especially when I post these, you know, I post the updates at midnight most days. Um, it's just too much to do. I don't want to bug them about it. Um, but basically, once I submit it to Bethesda, it can take many hours before you can actually download the mod again, which is a real pain. So what we found as a solution, if you click on the mod to update or download it, there'll be a version number right at the top. And I always post on our forum post when I do the patches. If you look at the bottom of the, the patch notes post I make um, for, each, uh, for each new patch, it'll have an Xbox version number. And as long as that's the number you see, you'll be able to download it. If that's not the number you see, if it's on the number before that. So like right now it's version 13. If you see 12 up there, it means Bethesda hasn't updated, you can't download it. Now, at this point, you should be able to see 13 and download it. If you don't see, I mean, if you don't, that's really weird. If you do and can't download it still, you probably are in a situation where you have to reset your reserve space, which somebody else can tell you how to do or send you a link to do. Um, and then you, but when you reset your reserve space, you have to re-download all your mods. So it's it's a commitment to do that. You need to jot them all down. Unless you are, unless you don't even have a load order, then it's not a big deal. But you might have to reset your reserve space. That might be the other issue. Oscar Fry, I just got an idea for an SS1 SS2 mod where you can work with both of them when finishing using S1 build system. Jake show up and teach you how to use ASAM. Well, that, I mean that was what SS2 was originally going to be. It was going to be uh, a tutorial quest line added in. Uh, patched in with a with a expansion and then SS2 came out instead. Um, let's see. Shady 2. Any chance of FO4 getting recompiled a new version of Visual Studio like with Skyrim? I have no idea. Um, the, fortunately though, other than some of our F4, we have a couple of little enhancements with F4SE but it's not required for the mod. Like that's why we can work on Xbox. I don't think that would impact us at all. So I think like if they like a, uh, I think a port forward to a, to that would be super easy for some settlements. Uh, let's see. Uh, so who I would building a city plan auto complete some requirements for the main quest. It should. Um, I know we, we made sure that it worked with um, what's his name? Sturgis's quest. Although I did that with SS1, I don't know if it works with SS2. I haven't tried. I assume it does, but no one's ever told me otherwise. <laughs> uh, Rex, so no gun shop for Paul. Um, so 
Uh, I can't answer that definitively. I will say um, there will be there will be something with Old Paul in Chapter Three. That's I'm just gonna say that. Uh, let's see here. Beowulf. Will the pre-build city come to some settlements too, where you can make city build them before you enter the Commonwealth? It will, but it's probably gonna be like an ESL patch because having the pre-built cities it would totally ruin Jake's whole shtick with his story. It wouldn't make any sense anymore. So it needs to be like a thing the player like actively is like, I'm looking to do this and I'm in, I'm acknowledging the fact that it makes our story stupid. Uh, it can't be, I don't think it can ever be built into the core mod because it just like would be such a jarring experience. Because you got to remember like, you know, you guys are awesome. You follow the mod a lot, obviously, or you wouldn't be here listening to me ramble. Um, and you guys know a lot and you're, you know, you guys will collect all the tribal knowledge. For people having a fresh experience who have none of this background information, it would just be so jarring if they walk, they start up a game, they get the pop-up, set up the pre-build, they've never played this before, then they talk to Jake and he's talking about how, you know, the world can't rebuild, and then they're looking around, wait, there's like 30 settlements all fully built up. Like, it would just be such a bad experience for them, like, and that's, you know, we gotta target, like, the, this is the same reason that when I talked about earlier with the, the doors were screwing up in some of the mods is why I want to add in an automated patch system. For people who don't follow this stuff or don't spend the time on forums or don't look and read all this stuff i just want them to have a good experience that's kind of where i start with um you guys who are willing to do all this reading and stuff you guys are kind of usually those of you who are doing this are also the type of people who are installing crazy mod load orders you're no stranger to you know doing a little extra work to make the experience that you want happen you know you're kind of playing one of the things i think those of us who like build big load orders i think we're actually all even though you even you guys who don't have any dev experience you're really, what you're doing is game dev. You're taking a bunch of little pieces and trying to piece them together into a way that creates an experience you want. Um, and so, like, I think you guys are willing to go through a few extra steps and don't mind that stuff, but for average gamer, who are a lot of our users for some settlements too, um, they they are going to want just a smooth experience. So, like, the pre-build's coming. It's just, it's going to require, I think, an extra file just because otherwise it just makes our story weird as hell. Uh, let's see... Uh, CJ Drizzle, would you be willing to pass some choice for the person who made the decision? Uh, well, that's me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm the one who pushed that. Uh, because uh, we needed... So one of the problems we had uh, at some point in our story dev um, is we didn't really have a villain. And then when we started... Once we landed on the Gunners, we were already so far into Chapter 1 development um, that it, we couldn't really like backfill anything. So we're like, all right, well, who do we have... Uh, in chapter one and we we had Berman and it was like even then we played through some of the questions it was like there's just not enough um, in there to justify him and like he's not even like a main villain those of you guys who played through it all he's just like an you know he's an antagonistic dickhead character um, but there wasn't enough moments where you were made to really despise him and so like that was like the we needed a, a catalyst of like oh that that mofo right like so like we needed a moment and so Old, so I will say old Paul was added to chapter one just to set up that moment. So um, because we needed so I don't know if that ruins a character for some of you or anything. I think that makes me love him more um, that he was set up to be that way. And a lot of people I know hate, from losing the forums, a lot of people hate him just like they think they hate his old timiness and some of his, his statements. But um, old Paul was always destined for that to happen. And that was that was my doing. I don't know. Um, I don't know how. Um, I don't know how Sir Rick feels about about it in hindsight, but uh, I'm happy with the decision. That's a, you know, rest in peace, but uh, yeah, that was me. You can blame me. Uh, yeah, John, feel free to uh, message me on, I think we're, I think you're on the forums. I think I've seen your, you post in plenty of times on the forums, if I'm wrong. Um, uh, how can I have, you? hopefully you're still on the forums, you can get in touch with me. I don't like giving out my email address <laughs> on stream. Um, Let's see. Uh, Chichu one, did luck ever get assigned to anything for settlers? Nope, still hasn't been. One day we'll do something with luck. We have some really funny stuff with luck planned for HQ that I think got axed. I think it was going to be, I think it's like, once we had a discussion recently to be like, we got to tighten ourselves up. We can't go this wide with chapter three like we did with chapter two. Um, that I think the cool, the really funny thing we did with luck in HQ might end up getting cut, which is a bummer. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. But yeah, luck is one of those ones where, uh, for those of you who invest heavily in settler training, luck currently doesn't do anything. It's one of those, like, it's been on my list forever of, like, i got to come up with some gameplay elements for that. Um, one day, hopefully, we'll end up getting there. Oops. 
Uh, Keldane, when using Workshop Framework, is it better to enable new settlement mods before starting a new game or after at some point? Uh, it shouldn't matter. Um, adding new settlement mods, but I will say that um, starting a fresh playthrough and adding Workshop Framework is worse than starting a new game with Workshop Framework installed. Um, Workshop Framework is runs its at best when it is installed the before you ever even start your new character like you should be hitting new game and you'll have the best experience uh, and that is because workshop framework replaces a lot of the workshop vanilla scripts and and adds various enhancements and stuff to them uh and a lot of that gets doesn't work well on an existing save um, i mean it works fine it still will still will function it's just that a lot of those enhancements can't be made on an, an existing save so that's the only thing i can say regarding workshop framework as far as other settlement mods i don't know um, they're, they're, I know the way settlement mods are designed and they all involve a quest that inject themselves into the game after the fact. So it shouldn't matter if you do it uh, after or immediately. Um, but, uh, it will, uh, Raybo, if I'm still around, will, uh, likes to talk a lot about baking saves, which is where you basically take a save with a minimum load order. You set up, you know, your basics. Maybe you want to start out with just workshop framework and unofficial patch load up the save let it do let those do their installs make a save like that you know name it something and then install the next batch of mods and then save those because every mod um well every mod with scripts involved will have some amount of startup stuff that it's got to do and if you have too many and you'll you some of you will have run into this already with various mods where um if if you have too many mods with startup stuff going on some of them will just like eat up all the scripting time and it will a lot of startup will fail this is why SS2, some of you guys get that warning where it says like, uh, warning SS2 failed to start up some of its quests. That's a good sign that you need to save bake, which is basically uh, load up with all your other mods and without SS2, let them do their thing, wait 15 minutes, save, make a save, then install SS2 and then let it do its thing. Um, because the, there's a lot of, there's a limited amount of scripting that can be done at any given moment in Fallout 4. Um, this is one of the, it's one of the things that actually like whenever I think about making my own game it's because I get in the moments like that that drive me insane where it's like ah if this if this engine had just exposed more resources to papyrus we could do so much more uh, let's see here oh no I scrolled down again Uh, Oscar, you want to give the Soul Survivor ICBMs? I 100% do. Not as part of, uh, uh, necessarily part of a story moment, but just like as a fun thing to be able to build. And one of the things um, that, uh, that we're starting to set up with HQ is a, a research system so that everything can feel earned and believable. And like one of the things that's uh, that happens with plots in the fact that, you know, building plan designers can do whatever they want is some of them are outrageous, right? Like you guys have all seen some of the add-on packs and something a lot of them are intentional and some of them are unintentional, but we're just like the building that you get is just insane. And it's like, no one's building, you know, building that. Um, and like, we want to open up the door for some of that stuff to feel realistic. So like with uh, the appropriate scientific research or, you know, research into, uh, you know, teleportation technology or excavation practices or whatever, where you could like believe, you know, immersify yourself and RP your way into doing insane things in your settlements. That's one of the points of HQ. And there's going to be, you'll start to see more of that. Some of it'll start showing up in, uh, in patches when we start to do content patches, uh, because like HQ is right now is mostly like, a, a um, it's all in your head kind of like there's the building system is fully there and like you can assign sellers to the departments but the departments don't have a lot of functionality right now and like they're kind of a it's like we're trying to get the foundation working we got to get past this you know sell reset issue some of these long save file issues and then we can start investing time into making you feel comfortable and wanting to uh commit a lot of resources and a lot of people to to hq um, and we got to give functionality to that so um and one of those is going to be research systems to make like cool believable stuff like being able to build uh nuclear missile silos in your settlements uh let's see here godzilla i am having the brown face bug problem all i have have all the brown face bug mod fixes any ideas for me when i usually get it if i tab out of the game um and then tab back in but i don't know what else would cause that that the fixes can't do Uh, Kloss, can you add that settlers that are in a defensive plot can use power armor as protection? I try to get them in, but... Uh, so power armor is a prop. So the reason that that never works is power armor is technically furniture. 
and so are all the animation markers in plots. So if you assign them to one, like they can't use an animation marker unless they get out of their power armor. Um, that's just like a weird limitation. There's, it's probably possible to make power armor people use plots, but uh, it's it's one of those things where I'm not sure the juice is worth the squeeze. Like it would probably take a, it's it's a rabbit hole problem. Um, I could just like dig into this issue and then find another issue and just keep going, and it could take God knows how many hours to accomplish it. And in that same amount of hours, I could do some really cool stuff that I know I can accomplish. Uh, choo choo, sorry for all the questions. Uh, choo, uh, choo choo, if you've been asking a lot of questions, I missed them. I'm sorry. You might, you might need to send them again because this is only the second post of yours I saw. I, I have yet to go back to the beginning of chat, and now it's so late I don't think I will because you guys are keeping this really busy. La on the last stream, uh, there was a lot less questions, um, and so I ended up going all the way back to the beginning and just looking for King Gath pings. But, uh, any plans to expand the system from Fallon's to cover weapons or power armor? Uh, not currently, no. That was really, the it, the reason we did that system in Fallon's is because we have so many mashup outfits, we wanted you guys to be able to play with them. Um, but if somebody wanted the, the code for that to do it for a mod, I'd show it, I'd happily share it for how to, um, uh, take pictures and things and turn them into, uh, uh, an item, and record it on an item. It's pretty easy. It was, it was shockingly easy to do. I was actually, I, and it could get even better with F4SE. Let's see here. Uh, Beowulf, I wish there was a patch for depravity so the gunner option is overwritten, so SS2. I don't know how we're going to deal with uh, the depravity stuff. Like, the only thing I can that I can really realistically fix or see patched easily is going to be the doorway the doorway problem for Fallon's. I, I think the any other fix, like with the story the story problems I think would is too much work and there's just no neither side of neither side is going to do it like I'm not going to do it Dougie's team's not going to do it just too much work because it would require like rewriting quests and getting voice actors back involved with it I just don't see it happening um let's see uh Josh F. Musher yeah 103 Jamada requires a bit of homework on my part but it's worth it for the play style I like yeah I think I think that's uh, the case for a lot of us it's and and I think like for me I haven't done it in a long while, but usually when I, and, and be mostly because I'm like actively modding a game, like I think uh, if I wasn't doing this and I had more free, t and I was spending more free time on gaming, I remember for years, like ever since, um, God, how long has it been? At least in Skyrim. I don't know if I had done it mu as much for the older games, um, but uh, I would get, every year I would play through like the Fallout games in Skyrim, and I remember just getting so excited about just building up a mod load order and I'd spend days or weeks doing that just like digging into Nexus trying to find cool mods and dreaming up this awesome playthrough and I'd probably spend more time doing that than I actually did on the playthrough it's just fun it's fun dreaming up what you might be able to do <laughs> so King Gath is like old Paul has to die uh <laughs> Valley calling me a game dev for having a large order is not something I expected to happen today, but now I cry. Uh, I, I think, it, I mean, I think that's kind of what you're doing. You're, you're maybe you're not doing the, uh, you know, you're doing the coding aspect, but there's a certain amount of you are developing your own little game. It's you're, you're, um, you're, pe you're piecing together little puzzle pieces. You know, you could think of yourself as like the, the, uh, uh, the, the gameplay project manager you're like the supervisor you're deciding what happens and what doesn't and then you end up having to do a little bit of the dirty work because there's you know having to deal with like uh, vortex's garbage system for organizing a load order <laughs> you got to put up with that um, uh, Adam Smith doesn't yes luck is used with the um, caravans like caravaneers use luck if you're using the mark one beacons you're right uh, but I think uh, what Choo Choo was, or was it Choo Choo that asked it? Whoever asked the thing about luck, sorry, apologies, I can't remember. Um, the, uh, the luck was, all of the stats were supposed to have an impact on one of the plot types, and then the plan was for luck to have a, a, a minor impact on all plot types, and it just never happened. I just never got around to it. Another scroll bug. Here we go. Okay, go back up. Uh, and uh, holy cow, it's twelve forty. All right, I got about uh, ten, fifteen minutes left in me. Uh, 
<laughs> car my, my flying ship lighthouse build is 100% lore friendly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Derplomat, you and the team are the GOAT. Thank you. Uh, do you need any voice actors for Chapter 3? We will start recruiting voice actors probably in the early beginning of summer. Like, we do we do all the... Um, we get all the writing done and get mo a, a good... And then we start getting the quest implementation done before we deal with voice acting. Mostly because uh, we want to give everybody a single script one time. We don't want to have to constantly poke people for retakes. Um, so we try to wait until we have all the all the uh, that dialogue written before we get uh, voice actors as well. Uh, Oscar Fry, will we ever be able to give Jake power armor? We, we need to protect Jake. Uh, I don't think that's planned. Um, I, I will say that he has got such a deep dialogue pool now, and we'll probably have an even deeper one with Chatter. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, uh, if somebody makes a mod, or even somebody, or maybe Sirik suggests we just allow you to make him a companion at the end of Chapter Three. I don't know. And then you'd be able to put him in power armor. But I'm, that's no promises. That's just like I could see it going that way because his dialogue pool is massive. Um, let's see. John Gettys, what if there was a way to make settlers assigned to defensive positions? Check for power armor with code. Yeah, I mean, it could be, like I said, it could be done. It's just a matter of uh, the amount of hours it might require to do it. I just am not inspired to deal with that. Like, I don't, I, I only have, so I only allow myself so much time to experiment because I know so much about this stuff already so that about the the game engine so like uh, if I allowed myself to constantly experiment you guys would never get patches from me <laughs> because it's there's like so many things that I, I like to tinker with so I just like it's a self-discipline thing to make sure that we can actually get the job done of releasing all this content uh, Chuchu one is there a place that requests suggestions for reviews can be sent to the best place to put that like, I'm not actively developing Workshop Framework right now. It's kind of like, uh, if I need something for SS2 that I think would be useful in WSFW, or it's, like, universally useful, I stick it in there. Um, but I guess the best place would be probably on the GitHub page, just because it's organized there, whereas the, uh, the SS2 forums are so busy that I can't keep up with them, whereas, like, uh, Git is not used by a lot of people. So if you put stuff there, that's probably the best spot for it, where I, I will it will likely catch my eyes. I do try and read all the suggestion threads across the board. I just don't always come back to them. It's like, oh, that's a good idea, and I might jot it down. Um, whereas, like, uh, if you post it up on the, the Git for Workshop Framework, it'll live there forever until I <laughs> acknowledge it or deal with it. Because it's a proper ticket system, so I'll actually have to choose how to deal with it. Uh, to get the most out of SS2 Storm, is there a best faction to side with? Um, I don't think so. Um, we try to uh, let the player make the decisions however they want. There, I don't know if this ever made it into release, but I know we have hooks for it. But there was talk, uh, uh, SAG, who designed the, the quest line, or did the, the implementation of the quest line and designed the, the HQ, or uh, the GNN raid, um, I know he wanted to make it, and I, I told him we should do it, but I don't know if he did because of time and, like, um, uh, he's not a coder, so he has to hit me up a lot for code stuff, and then I'm usually I I, I don't have nearly as much time as uh, uh, as either of us would like for working on quest stuff. But um, there was gonna he wanted to put in, and I really like this idea of the further you were in with a faction. So for example, like um, if you were if you went to the main quest with Brotherhood all the way through and destroyed Railroad and Institute, that then if you then after the fact did our raid on GNN and you recruited the Brotherhood to help, that they would send a much bigger force because you were further invested with them. Almost like a, um, what would that be called? Um, like a affinity system for the factions. And I thought that was a really great idea, and I hope we do it one day if we didn't already. Um, and then it would just be, you know, depending on which faction you go deep on, that you might see a bigger force and maybe some coolers that like maybe... You know, you go maybe if, and I know this is not in there, but I would love to add it at some point. It would be like if you go all in on BOS, then maybe they bring a gunner to, or a vertebrate to the fight or something. But um, I, I know that's not in there right now because vertebrate programming is a pain in the butt. Uh, Mod Hunter 42, branching city plans yet? I mean, branching city plans are currently possible, um, but no, I, I don't think anybody has the, has anybody has gotten into developing that. Like, it's not something we're putting in the mod. The city plans, unfortunately, are, 
they're problematic for us to put right in the base mod. Um, just because of the script data limit we found out about last year or the year before. Uh, and that so uh, we can't go too crazy with putting them a lot of them in the core mod. And that's the branching city plans is something that requires a lot of effort, I think. Um, and so no, as far as I know, nobody's touched on it. We had ideas for it at one point. We had this really cool idea for, uh, what's it called? Spectacle Island. We were going to do a quest line in Spectacle Island where there were three groups vying for control of, of Spectacle Island. Um, and depending on how you did the quest line, different the different areas would build differently. Um, it was just really ambitious idea and... Um, it was something we like kept having conversations about and we never really fleshed out the story and it was because it was just like me and a bunch of designers talking about like what could be done cool with the city plan technology when we came up with it and we didn't really have any writers involved and I don't think anybody was like ready to run with that so uh, it never happened but it, it's like technically it's all possible there like the code's all there to support it it's just nobody's taking advantage of it. Uh, John Gaze, the only reason I ask is because if you leave a core in a power armor, settlers use them during a settlement attack and forget and forget getting them out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's why you see weird stuff like uh, people putting all their power armor up on an area that you can only access, access by uh, building a stairway and then they destroy the stairway or they put it up high where you got to use a jetpack to get there because just to keep settlers away from them. Or you have to like store your power armor without a core. It's a real pain in the butt. Um, yeah, I think the real solution would be just a mod adding like a kick you out of power armor button to settlers. But the that's an that, there's another thing that irritates the hell out of me with this game engine is the way the user interface works with alternate activations. Like it turns out the disease cure, if that comes up and you have Workshop Plus installed because of the track settlers thing, it breaks both. So then your alternate activations don't work on settlers anymore, unless you disable the the alternate activation in Workshop Plus. I hate those things. And uh, there's no great solution to that. I would love if it was just like a system that just popped up like a drop down menu you could scroll through or something. Uh, Yogi, will the world repop system once it's working anyway be able to use the unlock system for its triggers? And yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, the uh, yeah, all of that, all that. I try and tie all those systems together. Like even uh, when people start being able to inject HQ code, they'll be able to use the unlock system to trigger HQ content unlock. Yeah, we try and make the unlock system work with everything because I I love that system. Yeah, the the hammer, the hammer sounds all around. All right, guys, I got uh, three or four minutes. If you got any anything else you want to ask about or talk about, just ping me with that King Gath in your line, and then uh, uh, I'm gonna go crash out for the night. This has been a good stream. We got we got a nice chunk into the quest lines. We ran into a couple of bugs, nothing major other than the stupid hammer. If we if I and speaking of hammers, if I had a hammer bug still being there in my in my uh, thing, but uh, choo choo any ETA on the build kit update? Uh, not yet. So uh, I I so my when we released, I knew December was going to be all hot fixing for me. There's no way around it. There's you can't have a launch this big without a bunch of fixes need to be done. Um, I would imagine come January, I'll shift back to biweekly schedule, and then I start laying myself out a schedule of like X hours a week on um, you know uh, team stuff like meetings, X hours a week on bug fix patches, X hours a week on the next chapter. Um, like I break up my schedule like that, and then somewhere in the, and then I'll, I always have time for like. Uh, what I call like uh, uh, extra community extracurricular stuff, like where it's I don't even I don't even have a name for it. It's just where it's usually like I have a list of ideas of things I want to do um, that will enhance the community in some way, and I put a certain amount of hours a week to that. And add-on kit is going to be first one on that list once I get to that phase. So I would say eat if I had to get if I was going to give an ETA, and this is like just just shooting out my butt here. No, this don't take. Or take this with a huge grain of salt. I would say February you'll see build, t build kit update because I gotta do a ton of writing for it, ton, a ton, a ton of writing, just hours and hours, especially for HQ. Like I could write up a document for in, for World Repop stuff, 
I could write that in a couple hours. Um, for in fact, I probably already have half of it written because I gave it to uh, No Fuss No Muss, who designed most or all of the current World Repop interiors. Uh, but to do the HQ stuff, oh man, there's, there's just so much stuff. And I bet I'm gonna have to redo it multiple times. I bet it's gonna be one of those things where I write it all up, hand it off to somebody to try, and they're gonna be like, "Nope, didn't work at all," because uh, a lot of it is just like. I mean, that HQ took us years to do. Literally years to do. Um, it was so much work. It's just, there's, I, I bet HQ, I bet, I would not be exaggerating if I said HQ has 10,000 man hours in it between all the people who worked on it. It's so much, it was so much to get that thing up and running. Um, and so then doc, going back and documenting it all, some of it's going to be like, oh, what did I do a year and a half ago to make this work? Like, it's just going to be, it's just going to take me a while. Um, Colossus, are plots for factories and planning like to craft ammo or armor? So there already are some that do it in the sense of like they will spawn that they will spawn that stuff. Um, but if you're talking about factories like the um, the mod that has the conveyor belt stuff, I, I haven't done anything like that. I don't think I ever will, but they're probably I know a couple of uh, add-on pack authors have tried to tackle some of that stuff. I don't know how far they've gotten or if that stuff's been ported. Like, I don't know, I don't think Industrial City got ported to SS2 because Mitigio, who made it, um, ha, you know, he's been out of the Fallout scene for quite a while. Uh, Oscar, if I could add one more thing to SS2 with more faction tie-in. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like we didn't do enough faction tie-in in Chapter 2, especially with how much we hyped it in the, in the trailer. Um, but that was because we've, we've had the, we've had the story planned out for a long time. So it was kind of like, um, you know, foreshadowing things to come too. So it's, uh, so there'll be more of it in chapter three. Um, we, we, we love tying into the vanilla game cause it just makes this all feel more legit. And it also for when you're playing the character, it makes it feel more immersive when it's, everything's reacting to everything else. Um, which is why I like my, one of my dream mods before, I don't think it's going to happen, but I would love to see a. Uh, a full-blown radio station that comments on our stuff and the the vanilla stuff that would be amazing just because I, I love the radio station like I like the what's his name three dog and follow three just blew my mind of like oh my god the radio just talked about something I did you know you used to like before that it was you know the most experience I had with um, radio or uh, in-game DJs was like stuff like GTA where they you know they just have their little talk going on and they don't ever care about what you're doing uh, let's see, Valerie, no more questions. There's lots of love for you and the team. Thanks for getting me back into Fallout 4 and can't wait to see where you take the story in SS2 system. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, let's see, Samurai Tex, I'm glad to see you getting back into the swing of things from back when I heard you were sick. Ah, uh, yeah, I took, I got real bad COVID. Not, not so bad I was, like, in the hospital with a uh, ventilator or anything, but, like, um, you know, I was, I was non-functional for about uh two weeks between from thanksgiving on like literally thanksgiving day i got diagnosed with covid um and uh i was out it was it was not fun uh let's see choo choo one will beth mod school return maybe one day um i had big plans for that but like i was burning myself out with my youtube schedule i was doing not only was i doing the mod dev i was doing four vids a week back then and it just got to be too much and i had to start cutting some stuff out of my life um so it's something I would love to, I love teaching people stuff. I like, uh, I, I, I don't love, I don't like tribal knowledge. I prefer all to be in an organized location somewhere. And that's what Beth Muslim on school started out as a goal of, um, I, I think I got a good chunk of useful information out there. A good way to get people started on most things. I think the one thing I didn't get deep enough on that I'm bummed about is scripting. I wish I'd have done a deeper pool on that because I feel like that's one of those, like the you know the most intimidating thing when learning anything new is trying to pick a point to start because there's always so much information like this is one of the things like I've tried to teach myself machine learning three times in the last five years and like I just keep getting like it's like where the hell do you start with this stuff I mean everybody says Python is a place to start and it's like I, Python's easy um, but that doesn't help me <laughs> um, and I, like I think the most daunting thing about starting anything is uh, or of learning anything new is starting something and I think I did a good job of, of mods Bethesda mod school of giving people a starting point uh, and that's that's was the goal. So that that, uh, that was or that was one of the goals, and it was accomplished. I think. Uh, let's see, Tarmay, do multi-person resident plants have a cleanliness pollution impact? Yeah, they have a. Uh, uh, so uh, the way pollution cleanliness works is actually I went a little different. So with uh, SS1 and, and SS2, the impact people have on settlements, like with their food and water requirements, was built into the plot. With 
but now I've learned so much more with uh, SS2 and uh, chapter, or the 2.0 patch I, that's tied to the settlers now. So the settlers actually each bring 50 pollution, and that or is it 50? Yeah, I think it's 50 pollution. And if you get their home to level three, they add they it, their penalty drops down to 25. I think basically they have a cleaner house, but they always, you know, everybody poops and that's pollution. So that's, uh, that's, that's my explanation for why you can't get it down to zero for them. Uh, let's see. All right. John Gates sent me a message. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Oscar if I could add one thing that's two and more faction tie in. Yeah. We talked about that already. Um, okay. I think uh, I'm going to end it here. Guys, thanks for tuning in and listening to me ramble. Wow, four hours. Four hours I've been talking. My voice is going to be shot tomorrow. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, we will be back next Wednesday with, uh, with another few quests, and hopefully we make it through smoothly. I'm, I'm looking forward to Quest 7, which is... Uh, uh, what's it called? I don't remember the name of the quest, but it's uh, where you go to the Vault Tech HQ. It has probably been one of the most buggy quests in chapter one for the longest time like we still get people breaking it today even though it's been out for over a year so i'm, I'm hoping we run into some of those just so i can have a saved file that can easily uh, be investigated but uh, and then if those of you guys looking for patch stuff uh i just i've been traveling uh, a lot for the holidays and so yeah the patch that i put out yesterday i actually built almost entirely on vacation and i have not had a chance to even start anymore um, so, uh, might be a couple more days before we get a patch, but we're still working on it. Still in on hotfix mode. Uh, want to get all these quests in a position where you guys can complete them. Um, and, uh, I, I've, I've got a, a, um, forum post up right now telling you the issues that I'm, that I are on deck for being fixed. Hopefully in the next couple of fixes. So if you're curious, if your problem is going to be fixed soon, go head to the forums, look under the latest news and updates, and you'll see some information there. All right, guys, I'm taking off. Good night. Let's make sure you never forget.